Alrighty guys, welcome back once again. We are live, Leather Pocket, Calgary, Alberta, Canada. My name is Grant, I'm sitting beside the one and only Mr. Ben Franchise Francis. How are we, Ben? I'm doing great. I'm super pumped for today. Oh, me too. Me too. This is the, uh, this is the start, the world record attempt. We are sitting on the gold crown. Let's change the scoreboard quick. Oh, yes. This is one pocket ghost. <laughs> from his practice yesterday we are live so I do want to uh, do one little thing just after uh, after you're done there I want to give a huge shout out to these guys right here predator um, with the amount that they're doing for not only us here in uh, you know developing tables and cues and all the things that uh, that predator is known for um, just the amount that they're giving back to the billiard world, trying to help grow the game, grow the sport. Huge shout out to Predator. We appreciate it. We thank you. Uh, thanks to John for uh, you know putting on a display on the Predator table. Uh, tough, tough conditions to try to go after that world record um, on a four and a quarter inch pocket. So kudos to Predator, kudos to John. Let's get into it. We're locked, loaded, ready to rock and roll. I believe John is also ready to rock. He's Let's ready get to into go. it. This is going to be epic. Epic. It like will be amazing. Lincoln City, Oregon in the house. California in the house. Guys, do us a favor. Make sure you're sharing this stream all day long. Took the words right out of my mouth. I'm going to share it a bunch right now because <laughs> I can't it. be uh, telling people to do something I wouldn't do myself. This is very, very true, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go with the start. He's been warming up over here, and he's loving it. He said he's going to put up some big numbers. That I don't doubt. So the gold crown pockets, the corner pockets measure out just under five and a half inches just under and then the side pockets sorry the corner pockets just under five the side pockets are just a touch over five so it looks like he's got uh the nine, nine ball. ball. Yeah, nine for the breakout. It's going to be his break ball. So he's going to want to chip around those other balls. As he likes to say, clear some lanes. Clear some lanes. I just said the nine as a breakout. A breakout? Wow. <laughs> well, it's kind of a breakout. Yeah. It's the break shot that you break out the rest of the pack with. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That was acceptable terminology. Right, right. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to twist it to be acceptable. <laughs> uh, he forgot his microphone. We decided to, to not mic him up, uh, not today. Let him kind of concentrate on putting up some big numbers. Um, you know, this is the table that we're hoping uh, gives it up and uh, let him go on some higher runs. The, uh, the Predator table was, uh, you know, at four and a quarter inch pockets. Um, that was some tough action for him, but uh, we're hoping that this table here will give him the runs that he's looking for. All business today. It is all business. Looking good here. Oh, is he's he gonna, using the 12 ball? He's going to use the looks like 11. A little tough to tell from it this is. angle. Yeah, let's... Uh, Let's see what this other angle can show us on uh, what he's got there. Looking pretty good. As you'll notice, we got these two different angles. So with the window in the background. They come out different colored tables, but That's right. they are the same. So I guess I could put up his scores for the, uh, <laughs> for the first rack. We got <laughs> Kevin Beamer Beavis in the house doing the honors, racking the balls. John said, we're going to make Kevin famous. I said, he's already famous. Right. He, he's probably more famous around these parts than John is. Oh, like yeah. Like, as far as if you ask all the pool players in Calgary, 
everybody they would knows probably Kevin. know Beamer before yep. they knew John Schmidt. Yep. <laughs> a local legend here in Calgary. He really is. And of course, we got to uh, we got to say thank you to uh, Leather Pocket, of course. Lou Sorrell. Lou helped us uh, with the table. That one kind of broke a little tough there. Not quite uh, what he was looking for, I assume. That's not terrible. I think it's okay. He can pick some things apart. I think with the angle he had, he didn't quite have enough angle, I should say. So I don't think he went for, like, the hero break there, you know? I think he was just trying to chip out a few. Has he got something wired in the stack here, or is he thinking about back cutting that 13? I don't know. Is he thinking <laughs> going to the four and into the pack? Yeah, now he's changing his mind. I like he's the four. He's drawing here, I like though, the four it looks better. Like. Drawing up and around. Chipping off a ball. That's okay. Uh, he's on the 13. And as much as I would expect him to come flying out of the gates, what we've seen through the last two days was it took him about half an hour to get warmed up. Yeah. Well, you got to get the, the old arm So as much as in tune. I'm sure everybody watching is expecting him to, you know, run a 200 right out of the gate. Which very well it, could happen. It right? could it happen. Could, but but we should the likelihood is yeah. uh, he needs to get himself kind of in stroke for the, for the day. Starting in the morning can be a little bit tough. That's right. Well, he's picking these apart really well. And you'll notice he goes to work real quick on this table compared oh, to yeah, the other does. table. And if you guys are just tuning in, we're at the Leather Pocket in Calgary, Alberta. Beautiful pool room here. Really clean conditions. John is in love with this pool room. Yeah, good, uh, good, oh, oh, nice break. Nice push out there. It's got good poutine. You, they <laughs> do have good poutine. <laughs> he <laughs> loves him some poutine. <laughs> yeah, he's found a new favorite food group. He's got his, his poutine, his Tim Hortons, and his hockey. And he's loving it. And he's loving it, yeah. Look at this, nudge the break ball. Yeah. Very nice. Very good control for brand new cloth. It's easy to over hit that one with the draw shot. Well, he's got such a nice little touchy stroke there. I was wondering why we sounded a little quiet here, Grant. Are we quiet? I feel like we're a little quiet. Oh, the left and right. The I left and right. Hopefully that's a little better. So I think he tries to get on that side yeah, the ball on the side rail and then use the ball to the side pocket to get on the break ball. Yep. Touchy little shot here. He kind of wants to almost land straight on that, uh, is it 14? Yeah, and he's getting the extension out, so reaching will make this a little bit tougher. But but he's got such a such control of that cue ball. Yeah, see, the only thing he probably didn't want to do was go too far, and he did. He could have accepted angle going up table. Yep. You just didn't want to draw to where he is. But that's the new cloth, you know. It's gonna, it's gonna bite that cue ball quick. <laughs> it's like th shooting a basketball through a hockey net. <laughs> yeah, it's no longer a cheerio. A cheerio. <laughs> yeah, he kind of got himself a little tricky here. So he's gonna try to cheat this pocket as much as he can. Maybe try to pinch this with a little bit of right hand spin, and still maintain. Oh. Yeah, he's just coming at, around. He needs it to slow down. Look at this what shot. What a shot. Look at this is. shot. That's unreal. Wow. Wow. And so it begins, they say. Right? And so it begins. Tommy Farrow says he's going to be at the two-day clinic with Mark Wilson yeah, and he's John been, Schmidt. He's been talking about that a little bit this week. He's looking forward to that as well. Absolutely. I have a friend that'll be at that as well, Tommy. Uh, Curtis Fedorwich, so you'll have to say hi to him for me. Indeed. What's going on, boss? Tuning in on YouTube. It has been a minute. Welcome back. Yeah, that Predator shirt sure is sweet. Oh, it's great. Such a good-looking shirt. Mm -hmm. I don't know whoever came up with that, but what a great-looking shirt. Good design. <laughs> yeah, real good design. I might know jam up I coming with know. it again 
and again. I'll tell you what. We have, with Jam Up, we have some things that are coming out that are just going to be amazing. Some new partnerships to announce once the ink is dried on those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right, Clark. He, he doesn't mind it now in Calgary, but come here in January, it might be a different story. <laughs> yeah, right. He said he does want to come to Calgary and experience what it's like to have that minus 40 plus. Well, he's going to have to if he ever wants to move north. <laughs> right. <laughs> you got moving north of the wall. <laughs> north of the wall, yeah. <laughs> First, we you got to uh, experience the winter. Right? We got him a little bit hooked on that Game of Thrones. He's He never watched it. Not one episode before he got to Calgary. He's now done. Mm -hmm. He watched all eight episodes. <laughs> That's a lot. They're like an hour each, yeah. each episode. <laughs> Eight seasons, ten episodes. Uh -huh. He watched 80 hours. 80 hours <laughs> of got. And then, um, are those Predator shirts available? They are. They are on the Jam Up website. Jamupapparel.com for anybody looking. It's 11 to the side with a little bit of a push through. I don't know if he'll hammer him. I think he just chips into this. Yeah, he's going to chip to make sure he stays on the three. It's all about the insurance ball. He's mentioned that a few times. Got to have that insurance ball. Well, now it looks like he's got to kind of... Nothing goes what from over there. Here? He's got to get on the eight. He's got to shoot the three and get on the eight in a way where he can send the cue ball into those four balls. Or he shoots the three and gets on the 15 to get on those balls. Hey. Or he may even lay up underneath the five and shoot it in the bottom right corner because now we're playing on a different surface here. Oh. So he, he might not try to hero move side. all here those we go. balls. Here yeah, we this go. was my first thought. I like yeah. this. Eight in the side and just crash into maybe the four ball, push that apart. Payne McBride on the link. Thank Indeed. you, sir. Thank you, Payne. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Yeah. that's just the start. That is. That's just warming up. If you guys are just tuning in, John's taking a shot at the world record. 714 balls he needs to beat. And he's going to be playing today through Saturday from noon till about 6 o'clock or whenever he runs out of gas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, what size of the pocket? So corner pockets measure out to be just uh, just under five inches, and the side pockets measure out to be just over five inches. Just a touch. So not exactly what Shaw had yeah, Shaw for had conditions. Even, even bigger. Shaw had five inch corners and five and five eighths inch side pockets. So John's playing a little tighter than what Shaw's record was on. But I still think he can he can do it on this table. Oh, I I'm think a firm so believer. Too. I've been yeah. watching him play straight pool on a tight table for two days. This should be like shooting fish in a barrel. So and mostly and I've had some talks with him about this too. It's it's more about like he can put together three hundred ball runs. Yeah. For sure we're gonna see one. But it needs, it needs to be like where he has three 300 ball runs without the scratch in the middle or something. Because yes. it's always like a weird scratch. It is. It's that not ends often. a big run. Yeah, it's it, not often a missed shot. No, like once he gets going, you won't see him miss that like cut no. shot in the side like he missed no, there. You no, you won't know? see him miss the shots that he's supposed to make. What you'll see him miss is the ones that really yeah. he's supposed to miss. Maybe gets an unlucky rub and gets yeah. stuck in the pack off yeah. the break shot, you know? It'll have to be something like that. So if the balls roll his way is kind of what I was getting at. Yep. You know, it. as much as you can play perfect in any game of pool, you do need a roll here and there. Yep. And you may see him maybe take a little shorter of a day today, maybe a break or two, mm -hmm. just to kind of keep himself uh, fresh. Yeah, sorry. I was watching that. Well, um, keep himself, uh, you know, 
don't push himself too much. He's got four mm -hmm. days of world record attempt, which is, you know, not only physically demanding, but mentally mm -hmm. a nightmare. And it should be noted, he's very, very adamant about how physically demanding this is. Oh, yeah. This is no stroll around oh, the park. Oh, this is no joke. <laughs> this is a lot of stretching, a oh. lot of walking. Got a little tree topped over that 15 ball. I think that's the 15. 12 ball. 12, yeah. Yeah. So as I mentioned before too, like this is the first 15 minutes <laughs> of possible long day of running balls. So yep. we'll expect to see some higher runs as the day goes on. And as we mentioned, guys, if you are just tuning in, you know what to do. Help us out. Hit that share button. Let's get an audience for John's attempts here. I think he's well deserving of that. If you do appreciate what John is attempting to do here, streaming for free, coming up to Calgary, uh, even doing the world attempt, he does have a GoFundMe page. I'll see if I can copy and post that link. Yeah, every little bit counts yeah, for sure. Yeah, every little bit. It's not cheap to make these runs. Yeah, I see the difference there from yesterday. <laughs> that ball was never in yesterday. Today, never a doubt. I think maybe they're having an issue with one of the stickers. So they do have the little ringlets, little clear donut stickers, like a permanent rack on the table. Oh. Maybe we can uh, hunt down Jeff to find that little donut that went missing. <laughs> I always call them donuts. Well, I wouldn't recommend eating those donuts. Nope. Kevin Beamer, Beavis in the house. He's volunteered to rack. He doesn't even think he can hit the pile, he says. Yeah, He's got it's pretty thin on that 15 yeah. there. Oh, yeah. There. He had to. <laughs> <laughs> He hit it with some draw. What do you know? <laughs> All right. So the run starts over. He's on the second rack here. Yeah. James, you got that right. He certainly won't mind shooting it up table today. Seems to be rolling dead straight, too. That it is. Uh, we made sure of that. That's for sure. Got them all re-leveled again uh, last night. and Will he do it or will he go golfing, they say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, balls are opening real nice today, Raymond. And we've got a couple of clean sets standing by. So when he feels he wants to change out the set for a fresh one, we'll keep the balls nice and polished for him. He's liking these conditions, and I'm loving his chances of putting up some really high numbers today and throughout the week. Well, and I think uh, I think what needs to be said is uh, exactly how difficult this game is. I know he makes it look easy, but let me tell you, this ain't easy. There's no doubt. No. This is like one of the hardest games in the entire world. I don't care what anyone says. There we go. So I just uh, posted the link to the GoFundMe pin that comment so if you uh, appreciate what john is attempting to do feel free head on over raymond says we're doing god's work <laughs> <laughs> well there's a compliment well, you guys tuning in are doing god's that's work it. as well because yeah without you guys we don't mean much that's just ben and i sitting here talking to each other that's right and if nobody cared about john running the record then there'd be nothing to shoot for you know so he's out there 
doing this for you guys too, putting on a show. And we're eating it up. We love this as much as anybody. Yep. Uh, Christopher's asking if we're using the Predator Arcos two balls. We are indeed. Mm -hmm. Predator cloth as well. Yep. I know, uh, can we see it on this angle? Well, maybe not now that, here, I'll give you the, give you the shot. You can just see it on the top rail there. You can see the Predator cloth. So a little bit of wash from the sunlight coming in on one of the cameras, but that's all right. Yeah, it was a lot brighter before we kind of shaded that door a little bit more. So, and John, he's so funny. He said, oh, I, thank you guys for doing that. I didn't want to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to sound like I was complaining. Oh, mud. Yeah, those came out a little slow. Muddy. Uh, but, but he was hitting pretty thin and only really hitting like a little corner of the rack. Well, this is fine. He's got a secondary. He's going to have to pound into this. Secondary break ball, they call that. And he's going to get a shot up table. No yep. problem. He'll have the one ball. And the thing with running, like, if you're going to run 300 balls, you're going to have some racks that look like this. If you think you're going to run 300 and it's going to be just a walk in the park, everything will open up perfect every time. And, mm -hmm. you know, you'll just be sh shooting balls real easy. Yeah, it's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, are we using the same template that Shaw used? Yeah, they're just those little uh, page savers or donuts, as they're affectionately known, I guess. Mm -hmm. Somebody mentioned they're maybe called Perma Rack. That would be a good name for them, mm -hmm. if that is indeed. Yeah, he, he certainly makes this game look a lot easier than what it is. Brad White says, fire extinguisher in case things get too hot. <laughs> we have one on standby, as you can see beside the door. I saw Brad's name in the draw for VNEA. Oh, yes. Yeah, haven't seen Draws him for a while. Ready. And uh, we will be there. So if you haven't done so already, make sure you go onto the Q Sports Live Facebook page, hit that like button. Also hit the bell or the notifications, turn your notifications on, and that way you get notified every time that we go live. We will be in Vegas. We'll be bringing you all the action. We've got uh, the pit covered. We'll have a roaming stream covered. We're going to show you around all the booths, give you a tour around the facility. Uh, we're going to stream the Suds and Chips party. So put the kids to bed early when that happens <laughs> and then we'll stream the uh the banquet as well we're streaming the suds and chips until the alcoholic beverages come out and that's then right <laughs> that'll be the end of that yeah once the adult <laughs> beverages uh, come out to play that's uh, probably when we'll it's, shut her down. it's probably got to be as soon as the music starts anyway right because they're they play some pretty loud music they there's do. like cover yeah, bands would, and stuff uh, right yeah we would probably get shut down on that but yeah we'll do as much as what we can yeah, it's going to be a good time, Brad. Gold crown, still the best looking table out there. It is a real nice looking table for it sure. It is. I, I, to be honest, and I, God, I'm going to sound so one-sided here, but the second I saw that Predator table, I fell in love. Mm -hmm. That it's thing is super just clean. a sexy looking table. Mm -hmm. Super, super clean. Russ says he's shared to 14,000. Love it. Had a boy, Russ. Get her done. Thanks, buddy. I think everybody tuning in should have that share badge attached to them. Yeah, Jonathan, nobody was actively trying to break Moscone's record, and it's not 56 years. It's actually 65 years that record held for. Uh-oh. I think we misquoted it a couple of times the other day when we were talking about how long that record stood for 65 years not 56 but i i don't think it's a huge issue that nobody was really trying to break it well, i think they, I, I won't john say that, john was trying to break it for yeah, a, long, a time, long time and, and I, don't I think, think john, quietly yeah right? i don't think john was the only one who attempted to break his record and it's really a testament to i think he just missed there 
Yeah, he did. Um, I think it's a testament to exactly how rare it is for any human being on the face of the planet to run those type of numbers. This is why Jason's run was was just unbelievable. 714. Now, does that overshadow John's accomplishment in breaking a 65-year record? I don't think so, because had John not done it, would Jason have even tried it? I don't think it would have been even on his radar. Well, and like Jonathan is saying, you know, like because nobody tried to beat it for 65 years, I don't even agree with that. I think players were obviously trying to beat it every day. Every day they picked up a cue and played straight pool. Mm -hmm. For sure they were thinking that. Anybody who's ran 300 balls, which there's a handful of guys who had, they were definitely thinking about it any time they played straight pool. Well, even even in a tournament, let's say they're playing the American 14-1, and one, and Darren Appleton runs 200 and out mm-hmm. in a match. It's only a race of 200. He kept shooting after. Of course. You know why he kept shooting? Going after the record, <laughs> of, of course. course. So people were actively trying to do it. It's not well, like it's, nobody it's, was trying to do it when John insanely did it. It's insanely inhuman to run that number of balls, right? When you look at... You know, top-level pro players, their average runs, high runs, Mm -hmm. are somewhere around the 300. There's maybe six players on the planet that can run over that. That can run over 400. Yeah, Yeah. there's not many. John's, as as great as John is, he's ran over 408 times. And he's the greatest straight pool player of all time. It's just insane to be able to do that. Uh, do you, we think that, uh, sorry, the comments just bumped. Are you going to leave it on YouTube when he runs 800? Or are you going to take it off and sell it? That's not how we work. Oh, it will always be. Well, that, I don't know if that's guaranteed. That'll be up to John. I think it, in, in my opinion, and I'll talk to John about it. I think there's, there's more value in having it out there. Um, I think there's other things we could do to that video um, where you could have John come in, overlay on top of that with his commentary to make selling it a unique thing. Yeah, well, and we could advise for sure. Yeah, but it'll be up to John. Yeah, ultimately, like we, as much as it's it's our content, it does come down to the player. They're the one out there putting on the performance. We're just on a microphone and mm-hmm. we set up the cameras, you know. So so it'll have to be on John. Yep. And we would totally understand whatever he decided, right? Yep. I know he was doing some shows before and they were very successful. I would have loved to catch one. Um... John Schmidt record is amazing because he's not a not as good of a shot maker as Jason, uh, so it took loads more effort and truly an accomplishment oh, of yeah. lifetime. Jason's a beast, unbelievable. I won't say he's. I won't say that Jason is perhaps a better shot maker. There were some things that happened in Jason's run that hadn't been seen before. Um, I I think. But again, right, it's, um, I don't know. I'm, I'm just going to leave that one right away. I think John would be the first one to tell you that Jason is one of the most talented shot makers oh, of all time. Oh, 100%. And he is a beast. And, 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 and I but think I, he'd be the first one to tell you I that don't for know sure that he's. He, I, would, I don't know if that I would class it as a, a better shot maker. There's a lot of things that have to go right, even for, for John to get over the 400, 500, 600 mark there was a gobsmacking amount that had to go right Mm -hmm. for Jason to hit that 714. And you can't take a thing away from Jason. The skill was unbelievable, and you could see physically what it took to do it, right? Blisters on the fingers, the whole works. That's right. Um, So, I mean, you can't take away his athletic ability. They call him Eagle Eye for a reason. He is a phenomenal player. Um, But to class him as a better shot maker, I don't know. That would be down to opinion for sure. Right, and again, I'm I'm not trying to be argumentative. I just want to play devil's advocate a little oh, bit. Oh, of course, right? of course, we got to have two sides to it, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he 
Yep, we we do have uh, two angles, Ed. We tend to like to stay on this angle. It's a, a bit of a better view, I would say, since we don't have the top-down angle. So we'll leave it on on this for most of it, but we may switch to the other angle to kind of show the the break shot line on, on certain break balls, just to give you guys an idea how much angle he has, and whatnot, how much spin he needs to use. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a good compliment. I love this channel. You guys are so cool, LOL. Well, thank you. We'll take that compliment. We, uh, we always try to put our best foot forward. That's for sure. And if you've been uh, a fan of Q Sports Live for any amount of time, you know this is, this is just how we roll. This is who we are. And really, if you go back onto the Facebook page of Q Sports Live, you'll see uh, there's got to be 10,000 different streams that are available to view. Everything we do, uh, we don't charge for. I don't, and when I say I, I mean Q Sports Live and everybody involved. Um, we just don't believe in, in the pay-per-view model. Everything that we do is free of charge, free to view. He's playing pretty quick. Did he already run one rack, or is this the first rack? I think this is still the first rack. Okay. Because they had a little discussion about the ring saver, so I think this is actually the second rack, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, is it? I th I think so. It yeah, is he's, he just he's moving the coin. Yeah. I'm glad yeah. he's moving the coin. Yeah, no doubt. Well, he knows, right? He, he wants to keep track for himself, too. Of course. Right? But I'm glad he's doing that because yeah. we can easily get lost, you know, talking about stuff. And Yeah, Charles, he, he had blisters. And John said the same thing. Like, when you play for that long, you get blisters on your hands for sure. Uh, Pat, uh, the selling of Shaw video is a little ridiculous. A com uh, commentary that would be of more value. I bought the live stream. It did not say live the whole time when he made the 714. Is there any controversy over that? I'm not sure, Pat. Ed's, Ed's got a good question. BCA would want to review it to verify the run from more than one angle. Yep. Our camera isn't recording the other angle. No, but I mean, I'll give you an example here as soon as he breaks. So when we switch over camera angles, right, you can kind of see every time we switch over the camera angle, everything is the same. And we're going to make sure every shot is, is legitimate enough witnesses in here too so don't worry about that ed yep uh good question from adam do you have to register these attempts for john no they have to just be on video uh, wayne wayne misses you on the stream ben we tend to to not try to play on the stream when we go live we We've played plenty on the stream, and we like it to uh, to kind of be where those that haven't played on the stream and get to experience what that's like. We'd rather those players get to play. Well, Wayne, you're in luck too, sir. Yeah, <laughs> it might happen today. <laughs> well, next week for sure, I want to say. The oh, week yeah, no and, doubt. And the week after, because we're going to be 10 days at VNEA, and Barry's team is, is playing one more time. One <laughs> kick at the can for the four-peat. For the four, Pete. Yeah. Well, I think we'll split up a little bit after that. Some guys are going pro and whatnot. But I'm sure guys like Vino and, and Johnny Pay Pompey will carry on the team and just oh, pick up I'm some sure. new players. Maybe some Larry Walpers of the world. Yep. You know? You got it. Yep. I would agree with you. Brian, you're right. John busting the 714 might not be possible. But, but anything. But it, it could be possible. Anything is possible. This guy plays the best straight pool in the entire world, so. Yeah, that's that's Kevin Beamer Beavis racking for John. That's right. <laughs> Christopher, you might you might talk him into it. Especially if he beats the world record. <laughs> And then you can have well, the shirt he beat it in for uh, the right price. <laughs> you would be second in line to me, sir. Yeah, you might have to outbid Grant. <laughs> Will Beamer get the world record for most consecutive racks racked <laughs> if the world record's set? 
<laughs> Most consecutive racks racked. <laughs> Someone will have to be my cameraman at VNEA this year. We'll have lots of camera stuff. We'll have to take over for Steph. That's what she's saying. Somebody's got to do Steph's job because she's right. bailing on us this year. Right. She's too cool to come to VNEA this year. Well, and that's <laughs> it's probably our fault, to be, to be fair, because uh, I've told her that uh, when it comes time to doing the uh, the CSL Invitational and the Canada Open. I'm going to uh, ask her to be here f for all of that. She's very and much needed yeah, for that. Yeah. yeah. And no Vino at VNEA this year either. But Tanner Pruis will be there. Tanner stepping on up, playing the... Are you playing in the Masters this year, Tanner? You got to be playing in the Masters. I think he won the intermediate singles. So John threw three racks here playing pretty steady today. I'm mm -hmm. expecting some big stuff. Maybe this is one of the big runs. Yeah, and comp force it is rack three. You can see the uh, the indicator that John moves is on the third position. So this would be indeed rack, rack four, this one is. He's through three. That's correct. So John will be keeping track too, but we can always go back and verify this video as well. So Yep. Every rack, every shot will be on video. That is the best part of what we are doing. Absolutely. And of course, like we mentioned before, some of the other things that make the run official would be um, not touching any balls. So mm -hmm. it would be all ball foul. If the shirt touches ball, it runs over. He knows that. Yeah. And the CSL Invitational runs August 11th through to the 14th. That will be here at the Leather Pocket in Calgary. Jesse Novak. Thanks, buddy. Jesse says, Hey, Ben and Grant, you and CSL have come a long way. He's proud of us. Oh, thanks, buddy. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, CSL is, uh, it's taken some work and effort. Let me tell you, Ben and I have put in the hours. That's right. I think the most that we put in was the last time we were in Vegas for uh, for ACS and then VNEA back-to-back. -back. Um, and that we handled all by ourselves and tried to play. It's like 20 <laughs> days of yeah. playing and streaming. And those were 16, 18 hours every day. And finding time to celebrate wins in between. Right. Because <laughs> there were some, oh, well, we got some second places <laughs> at ACS. <laughs> Is Tanner bringing his cat? <laughs> Comment on YouTube for you, Tanner. <laughs> Uh, we appreciate you guys too. Obviously, we're nothing without you guys watching. Yeah, Ed, we'll uh, we'll be able to uh, supply that. <laughs> I don't want to alarm you, but I'm a C singles champion in Nanaimo. <laughs> that a boy, Jess. He sure is. That's on video too, I that think. That is on video. <laughs> that is on camera. Aren't you a C team champion too? <laughs> I would think so. Tanner Pruis played ten Masters ten last six. year too. Uh, I think the 10 looks a little better. I do too. It's sitting a little bit higher up the table. But I thought he would leave this ball over the side to play shape onto it, to be honest. coming up well short here if he was going to use the 10 so now he has to use the 6 as a break ball I think well this yeah, is a couple of rails. bad to go two rails no, two yeah. rails around he'll be alright yeah I don't think he has any interest in making Moscone team but you never know stranger yeah. things have happened stranger things have happened lots of clean 4 racks that's a very clean four racks. I think he's got some big stuff in him today. Make sure you guys stay tuned all day and keep sharing that stream for us. I would definitely agree with that uh, statement, Ed. 
Yeah, he nailed it, right? Yeah, I mean, if if, uh, if John can run and break Shaw's record, it's just going to motivate not only Shaw, but really everybody else I to kind of get involved. I want to see, like, Josh Filler take a shot, yeah, you know, like, and some course. other big players, yeah. right? And then it gets no names like me interested in the game. Well, and maybe we can revive it. Like, I'm sure Ed thinks the same. I know Ed loves the game a lot too, right? Uh, maybe we can revive straight pool a little well, and, like, and start having big tournaments again. And, it's kind of tickling me a little know. bit because you brought it up one time, and I think it's it's about time we maybe put it out there that in the CSL IPL, mm -hmm. the Q Sports Live League, that's mm -hmm. Ghost. I like where you're going with this. We may <laughs> uh, put a straight pool game yeah. within the CSL IP. And I think I've got at least 12 players that are already wanting to play. So Right? Yeah, we can totally well, like, do it. I'm telling you, I would play. It's a, it's a matter of how do you determine the levels of play. Yeah, yeah, of course. Right? So that's that's one thing that we'll have to kind of put our minds to to yeah. figure that out. Well, and I think maybe we got the right guy here Yes. to, to show us how to handicap it or, or or determine divisions, right? Mm -hmm. And the format, what's a good format? Do we do a number of innings? Do you do just the total points or, or what do you do, right? Well, so I think, I think I th John would have the format and the divisions for us, right? Well, and here's the really cool thing is I've talked to John about the Q Sports Live League and the fact that it's Ghost, the fact that it's online. Um, he 100% agrees and mirrors our sentiment that it wow. is it adds purpose to your practice. You're going to get better playing the ghost. There's no doubt about it. And if he was not going and doing those clinics that I can't remember who, uh, Tommy, I think Tommy Farrow mentioned uh, that he's going to one of the clinics John's putting on. That's right. If John didn't have those clinics, he would be playing in the league. Yeah, he would have played the league, yeah. So, so I think you'll probably see him in the next session. I think we will see him. That's exactly what I was just thinking, yeah. Did we add or did we answer adam's question about the csl invitational yep the 11th to the uh 11th to the 15th. 14th 14th yeah right then the players have one day off which is the 15th on Correct. monday we'll transport everybody all of the pros that are here up to red deer mm -hmm. and then we start um in the canada open on uh on the 15th Andrew says Niels has a 400 plus run yeah he sure does there's a handful of them that have a 400 plus run I think maybe only three. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess four. Oh, now for four on Sean. YouTube, he'd be interested in that as well. Well, guys, I think, uh, you know, just from what I'm hearing, um, for those that are on viewing, listening at this point, do me one favor. If the 14-1 game in the Q Sports Live Pool League would be of interest, send us a message so I can start a list of players, see how much interest there is. And once we have kind of the format put together with the different divisions and so on and so forth, uh, we can send a message. That would be extremely helpful. Now, is he going to take the cut shot here? Right, use the 10 ball, but leave it flat on that angle? Nope. I thought he was going to go cut that uh, into that top left corner, but go off and use the rail. He's got a beautiful angle here. Vino says annual LP straight pool tourney. I like it. <laughs> uh, ben Young says he wants a uh, 14-1 league. Ben's a, a CSL he is, IPL yep. player currently. Yep. Yeah, listening to John yesterday was something fantastic jason glad you enjoyed it too terry says am i missing something day three and only four racks shot he's he shot more than four racks this oh, yeah. is just his <laughs> current this run is current run yeah his high run count is 126 that was done on the predator table so the predator table was more a showcase we had him mic'd up and uh just kind of showing everybody how difficult 14-1 really is uh what it takes to run the number of balls so he mm -hmm. was showcasing all of that on the predator table and uh, that was day one and two we're now in day three for the first day of the world record run which is now on a gold crown 
And so his high runs through the first two days were 126, 118. He had a couple of 98s, an 89, a couple of 85s. So 126 was the high run on the four and a quarter inch predator table. It was playing real tough. Pocket size here is five inch corners, just under five inch. So they're about four and seven eighths. And the side pockets are about five and a quarter. And James Brinson on YouTube, straight bull on a seven foot. So currently as the CSL IPL sits, there's two different table sizes that you can play on, which is a seven foot or eight plus. Mm -hmm. It includes the eight foot and nine foot. So within all the different divisions that we have, um, you can either play on a seven foot or eight plus. Um, if you want that you know, information, so on and so forth, um, you can check it out on the website, www.cslipl.com. All kinds of information on there. And I've played a little straight pull on a seven footer and it's not so bad. It's definitely a little bit easier, but it has its challenges because things are a little more congested. Yeah, that one, two, six was super fantastic, Ben. So look at that. We already got some players that are in the league that want the 14-1. Adam Seedlitz, Ben Young. Yeah. They're in. And I'll ask you guys again. I know that, you know, you're commenting here to put you on the list. If you can just send us a message, either via email or just make a comment on the page, um, that would be extremely helpful. Really tough for us to kind of start a list and keep track of that while we're live and commentating and keeping track of what John's doing as well as all the comments. That's right. Royce wants to know where's the gold crown? You're looking at it. That's the gold crown that you're staring at. And if you guys are just tuning in, we're at the Leather Pocket in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. This gold crown is tucked in the back corner. So if you guys are in the area, definitely come check it out live as well. We got lots of seating for everyone. <laughs> it doesn't seem easier on my table, says Andrew. Good food, cold drinks fun people the hockey games on tonight yeah it's gonna be a good day and i actually have some energy today so it That's feels right. uh feels good to have some energy back i was sure tired and the high run today so far joshua we're looking at it mm -hmm. 84 um felicity right is that blue simonis nope that is still the uh predator cloth and monk wants to know what my high run is it's actually 106 on the diamond nine foot and 149 on Grant's table on the seven foot valley. <laughs> Somebody was talking about seven foot straight pool. I've played it 149 and I scratched in the side on the dumbest ball. I got lazy. I probably, well, also, I probably could have I ran a lot more. You also have the high run in uh, in the Ghost League. Um, yeah, in nine ball. Runs. Nine ball and eight ball. Yeah. But yeah, the most consecutive straight. racks run and the highest score. Yeah. Oh, and no. Up. No, I don't have the highest score. I think Tyler had one higher score than me. Yeah, Tyler, uh, Steyer. Tyler Steyer. But I'll tell you, you. But he doesn't count. You had <laughs> such, yeah, you had such a chance to hit all twenty. Yeah, I almost ran all twenty racks nine ball. I was talking to somebody about this the other day. Meanwhile, John's got this break ball figured out beautifully, and the balls are opening up nice. Yep. This is exactly what you want to see. He doesn't want to open up all 15 balls at once. If you guys are new to watching straight pool. Then you'll notice he, he, he doesn't slam into them. He just kind of picks, picks at them. And he's always on the ball. You know what I mean? Yep. He always knows he's got insurance. Like even that shot. He knew, worst case, he's shooting the 13 on the end rail. And he just said it too. But he, but he was like, if I, if I get on the 14, great. If I don't. I'm on the 13 on the yep. end rail. Yeah. And this way, now he has two break balls already for options. Yeah. He has the 11 and the 12. And Felicity, he has not gone to see that yet. And yeah, we, we do know local ones. Grant actually knows a, a really great oh, yeah. one. So I'm sure if it continues to be an issue, Grant will make mm -hmm. sure he gets fixed up. We won't hurt him, Felicity. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> we well, want him to come back. And Yorick, his 126 run was not on this table. And uh, the table he ran the 126 on was not this table. This is day one of the gold crown table. 
um, somewhat recreated the conditions that Jason Shaw had. Jason's got even bigger pockets than what this is. But the 126 run was on a Predator four and a quarter inch pockets. So that was on day one and two. And uh, he was just putting on a more or less a clinic. Kind of we had him mic'd up and he was talking through the racks and showing everybody what it takes to play good straight pool. He was like telling gambling stories. Oh, yeah, it was yeah. great. It wasn't like super high focus no. trying to run a lot of balls no. straight. So, pool. I mean, uh, you know, the 126 that you see was his highest run thus far on a four and a quarter. Mm -hmm. Now we're on to day three, and this is the gold crown for world attempt day one. And John holds the record on four and a quarter at 309 balls, which he actually ran only a couple of months ago. Mm -hmm. So if anybody's oh. doubting if he's still got it, he's still got it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Believe me. Right. Grant and I have had the pleasure of watching him over the last couple of weeks, and especially the last two days. He's still got it. Yeah, Big he time. He's still nice got it. Nice little pinch draw here. He wants to land oh, on. Oh, he hit that differently than I thought he was going to. Yeah. Took away the side pocket scratch. Well, and I thought he was going to use the seven as the break ball. Yeah, I did too. Now he's using the other one. But this is just fine, and this is a really oh, yeah, nice this is no problem 98 here. ball run. So if he gets any kind of shot off this break ball, he's got a century. Within the first hour of play today, I think that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. So does he really think he's going to beat 714? Even Shaw will never beat it. I think he can. And so he's put together, you know, back to back, a 300 run, a 400 run. And it wasn't a missed shot that ended the run. Mm -hmm. It was a scratch ball. So if he can string those two together without that scratched ball, He's got every bit of capability to do it. That's exactly correct. Exactly correct. And he's, I mean, he's been pretty adamant that Jason kind of lit a fire, you know, and like yeah, renewed his energy. He yeah. said he was getting a little bored and, yep. and he kind of just wanted to go fishing and and maybe play some golf, right? And mm -hmm. now, now he's thinking, man, I want to play some straight pool again. And so it renewed his love of the game, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, nice break what ball. is the pocket nice standard shot. size for diamond table non pro rails? Standard pocket size on a diamond is four and a half. Four and a quarter. Four and a half on a standard diamond. On these diamonds? These are not standard diamonds. Oh, okay. So. Yeah. Standard diamonds, four and a half. The oh. pro cut rail makes it a four and a quarter. Oh. See, I learn something new every day. <laughs> I just thought they all came four and a quarter. I don't know if I've ever seen a four and a half diamond. <laughs> yeah, and even, even on that four and a quarter inch um, uh, predator table, he wasn't missing the shots that he's supposed to make. Mm -hmm. it, he's missing the shots he's supposed to miss. Yeah, there was only like a couple of testers. You know, where he's like rolling the ball long and and they're tough on four and a quarter. But mostly it was like he was getting stuck. Mm -hmm. He'd get stuck in the side of the rack or something because it was way harder to to pot the ball and get heavy amounts of cue ball movement on a tight pocket. See, someone on YouTube thinks he'll see the record over a thousand eventually and and i i, sa tend to I said that too well and, and it, it goes to the mindset right where and take it right at a pool take it the first um mile that was ever run in under what one minute where mm -hmm. everybody thought it was impossible that's right right everything is impossible until it's broken and becomes possible mm -hmm. right that's right yeah and, and you know mike you're you're 100 714 is no joke that's a tough, tough number to beat. And yeah. you can't take anything away from Jason Shaw, what he did, his ability. You know, I, uh, I had the pleasure of talking with Jason while I was at the, uh, the Super Billiards Expo. And uh, I made him fully aware that we were doing this. We're going to bring John, John up and, you know, have him have a run and, and go with the record. And, you know, there's no issues there. None. Right, I think it just lights a fire. It brings 14-1 back to, to the forefront of the game. Yeah, he was telling me about that felicity. If you didn't scratch in between, yes. he did run over a thousand over a balls thousand without balls. missing. Yep. 
He didn't miss a ball. Yep. He, he made the ball and scratched. <laughs> he didn't miss a ball for a thousand balls. Like, I don't know if... I don't know if the average player can really wrap their head around that. No. I mean, a thousand like balls without missing, It's that's really hard for me to wrap my head around yeah. that. I mean, you... you just, it's, to go it's 20 inhuman. balls... <laughs> Like, 20 balls is a lot without yeah. missing, you know? Think about it. Like, how many times do, we, do balls. we run an eight-ball rack or a ten-ball rack? And just, like, dog an easy ball. ball. Yeah. You know? Right? And, and it's the mental yips. And right? he that does not the have the he mental have yip. <laughs> it's, Which it's is just incredible. Yes. Yeah. It's really incredible. And no worries, Yorick. Yeah, all good, buddy. Right? Yeah, sometimes, it, and and John's pretty adamant about that, too. You know, it's like you got to give him the right info because a lot of players, they're just out there, and they just see this, and it looks so easy, right? Mm -hmm. But once you give well, them the right listen, info, then, then definitely they start to understand yeah. how hard this is, right? Yeah. And so I will, Steph. Um, it's the same as what happened in, in Vegas with the Predator tables. There were so many behind-the-scenes issues that nobody knew about That's and right. people are blaming the table and this that and the other and that is so not the case as we showed yesterday mm -hmm. that predator table is built like a german tank and hits phenomenally well oh, what a shot that is what right? a shot that and is. he hits those good 112 first century of the day i think we're gonna see a few more Yeah, <laughs> to know he ran a thousand of those missing, right? Unbelievable. But I mean, it's it's one of those things that I I really enjoy about what it is that we do. You can always go back, uh, go onto the Q Sports Live Facebook page, hit the like button. You can always go back into the archives. There's well over ten thousand different streams that you can watch. Um, but all of the you know the the commentary that John had, the stories that he had. That's there for a lifetime now on Q Sports Live. So you can always go back, listen, reference that uh, material. Same as this run, right? This run, whatever it ends up being over the course of the next four days, that'll that'll always be in our library. Big shout out to Kevin Beamer Beavis there for doing the racking honors for a couple hours. I think we got John Morelados coming in a little later on today. He's going to take over. So mm -hmm. big shout out to those guys. He's trying to break Shaw's record. Oh, he is indeed, Raymond. He drew it, but not enough. He drew it all the way to the end rail. Well, the good thing is he's got the one ball sitting over there. Yeah, it's a, it's a big hole, but this is The nine away. ball, I believe, also goes. You timed it perfect, Joshi, right? As I was giving respect to the person racking, Joshi says, I want to give respect to the person racking. <laughs> it's a thankless job sometimes, it you know? It really is. Now... Does that ball on the rack go, whatever that is? 15 ball? Does that go past? Or is he going to use the five ball to break back into that pack? I think he can go, I think he can use the five and go into them because he still has the nine, right? He's still on the nine, so it's okay. Yeah, just like this. Nice shot. And now yeah, he's chipped nice the seven out for a break ball. Yep, nice and open. Although, he's still going to disturb those three balls, I think. He will. Unless the six goes, in which case he'd rather not move them. He may use the six just to kind of push into that 10-8. Yeah, maybe. Or whatever that top ball is. Yeah, maybe just nudge it a oh, little. Oh, nice shot you know? there. Kind of get one off the rail. He'd rather have that in the middle of the table, even though it's a little higher up. So I think he's going to shoot the 14 because he doesn't want to cue near the two. Oh, he's looking at, the, looking at that ball lefty. No, I don't like that. I think he shoots... Well, the ball on the side works, too. I thought he might shoot the stripe at the bottom of the stack, but I guess the cue ball doesn't really go anywhere good. So now he's going to shoot the 13 near the top left corner because he needs to clear the lane for the 2 and the 3 and the 12. So he needs to remove that ball out of the way. Great shot. Yeah, there was some juicy juice on that there ball. There certainly was. Does he have the angle on the 7 to push into that three, three twelve? Does he have that angle on the 7? 
I do believe the six passes as a safety ball. Would also have the four. Yeah, I had some talks, Andrew, with John about um, kind of the draw on the break, and he said he does not like it at all. He said he's, he's a big fan of playing top, which for me, when I play straight pool, I love playing that draw shot. Mm -hmm. When I come off the side of the pack and I zing it all the way up table <laughs> and back out to middle, and it, and it feels good, and the ball's open like crazy. But I'm starting to think that's why I can only run 100 balls and not 200. So I'm going to start trying to play it more like John, where I'm just playing top and I'm chipping a few balls and I'm just like, I'm not trying to play these hero shots and do everything gotta in go, one gotta shot. Gotta go, gotta right? go, gotta go. Oh, nice shot there. I think he's just he on the three. I don't know if he shoots the two from there. Yeah, he might be over top of the ball, but if he shoots the two, he can nudge that three out of the way. Yeah, but he's then, a little deep on that. But then he's not, he's not guaranteed to be on a ball when he does that, you know? So he, I don't think he likes doing that. I think he likes, at least this way, if he makes the three, he's guaranteed to be on the two, like regardless of what happens. Yeah, he doesn't like either of them. Yeah, he, he landed in a funny spot there. And, and that's partially due to the slide on the rail, I think. So it's still because the cloth is so new when he hit that shot and he hit it with a little top and a little inside yeah, it slid a little and took yeah. away that forward momentum that's exactly right exactly man you've watched this game before right <laughs> <laughs> peter says he hasn't missed a minute in three days yeah, um, we appreciate that for sure that's awesome peter oh it doesn't want to be on that end rail i would have never thought that ball would go that far so the thing with this shot is, like, sure, he can make the two, but he's got to put some zip on this cue ball to get shape as well. You don't want to just roll this in. Oh, he was taking the roll and the long shot next, and I don't hate that. He is such a strong potter, you know? Mm -hmm. And the pockets are playing favorable, but so there's a big difference between today and yesterday. Yesterday, he couldn't afford to be shooting this shot. I agree. It was just too hard. Today, it's super <laughs> today makeable, it's, so he can leave it today longer. Today, it's butter. And it just changes the entire patterns, you know? I'm not sure what the record is on a 4x8. That's what, that's what Willie ran it on, mm -hmm. they say. That's what Willie's 526 was on. Uh, did they place the donuts by hand or did they use a donut template like the Permarac? It is the Permarac template. Yeah, it was the template. Raymond yeah. says he's not liking it either, but... So one That's nine racks? Yeah, one, two, six. Well, we're tied up on his high run thus far. Right. And he's got a little distance here, so this, he does. Is, this is certainly this is missable, but I think he'll be okay. Well, and really, all he's got to do is make the 14. Mm -hmm. Right. Natural angle takes him into the pack. He does have to get a little fortunate in the fact that he'll have something to land on after that because he is shooting from a pretty decent distance. Vino says he ran a 1-2-4 on a 4 by 8 like 20 years ago. Maybe that's the high run. Yeah, no, I'm right. just kidding. It's, uh, it is Willie's. Willie's record it was on a 4 by 8 from what I've heard. Uh, Russ says 200 viewers, let's get to 2,000. I think that'll happen, you know, as he starts climbing into the hundreds. 200s, 300s, 400s. Oh, yeah. If he gets up then, over 200, uh, viewers are going to double. If he gets over 300, viewers are going to triple. It's just going to snowball like that, you know? Good, oh, good break that shot. that 10 will slip by that 4. He's got a big pocket. Yeah, and you'll see the balls. They didn't open wide open there because his cue ball was far away from his break ball. Yeah. So it was much harder to go into that pack with speed, and he wasn't going to risk it. Yeah. Now, I do believe the, uh, is it the 11-12 is wired up to that corner once he removes the four ball out of the way? Yeah, it looks like 13-12, the, the, the two stripes near the bottom of the, of yeah. the rack there. Yeah, yeah I think they are. That's a wired up combo, I believe. So he's going to remove the four. He might even go lightly into the pack here. He could. How are you, Andreas, tuning in from Germany? 
So good question, Tim. What brand of Q is using? He's playing with the Predator Q. Oh, he needs a shot here. Might have one to the side. Yeah, he's got the one. So he's playing with the Predator Q. It's the John Schmidt 626 edition Q. It is. With the Revo 12.4 and a Victory Soft tip. He's also playing with the Taum Pyro Chalk. And I also have a question. We got uh, you know just over 200 viewers, including uh, including YouTube. Um, we do have one of those 626 cues, and uh, we could do a viewer advantage, which is a sweepstakes. Understand, this is not a raffle. There is a big difference between a raffle and a sweepstakes legally, so we are legally allowed to do the sweepstakes. Um, but we could put that Mr. 626 Q up on that sweepstakes, $20 per ticket would get you in to win. Got to be enough, uh, enough people interested though. Can we get an alert on every 100, 200, 300 yeah, plus so absolutely. we can tune in when it gets yeah, up you there? Bet. We could, I can put out a post. You just have to make sure that you've liked the Q Sports Live Facebook page and turn on the notifications, otherwise you won't know it. I love that idea, you guys. Mason Mackey and Woody Wood coming with the good ideas. Right? Because <laughs> that 626 Q that I was talking about, there's only 300 of them made. So let's do that too. When, when he gets over 200 balls here, you can uh, zip out your phone and post on Q Sports Live. John's yep. over 200 balls. Tune in. Yep. Let's go. You got it. Right? Gord says he'll buy five. Good start. Good start. I think he might use the eight ball as the break here. As the break ball. Christopher would buy some for a chance at another one. He's already got one. That's how good that cue is, you guys. Also, so listen, okay. I also play with a Predator. I play with a... Um, the black cat. You can play with the Revo, yeah. Yeah, and the Revo. Now, the hit, I don't know what they did to that Mr. 626Q. Maybe it's the combination of rosewood and, uh, and the carbon fiber. Mm -hmm. The hit on that Q is unbelievable. It does hit so sweet. It does hit so sweet. Matt Wolf, Mason Mackey, Joe Shee, they're in. All right. I will get it done. I'm telling you. I'll put it up. I'm going to start working on that. So I'm actually going to go take care of that right now. You jump. If you don't mind, Benny. You jump. You take a break. It's going to be a long day. We're going to have to split up the, the breaks, you know. Because we're not machines like John. We actually need like a, <laughs> to use the washroom sometimes. <laughs> oh, look at that. Woody Wood says he'll get two tickets as well. So. Definitely a demand for it. We'll get Grant on All that. Right, I'm on it. I'll be tuned out here for a minute. I'm going to go get that taken care of for you guys. Got you. Yeah, I think maybe, yeah, it couldn't hurt to, couldn't hurt to verify everything's frozen when John takes a break. Just kind of like to make sure that the, the stickers stayed where they need to be, right? Did he just nudge that two into a perfect spot? Or is he still thinking of using the one as the break ball? It looks like he's going to use the two. He nudged that ball to a real nice spot. Yeah, Chris Demir. So we'll let you guys know. Make sure you stay tuned in. We'll let you know as soon as that, that sweepstakes is live. And we'll let you know how to send in. To get in on that. Meanwhile, John is on 140 balls here. It's 10 racks, folks. He's playing real good. Gord likes Nick's shaft too. Yeah. People seem to like the uh, the custom Nick's work. I know I do too. <laughs> what do you like? He'll buy more than two once it gets closer. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Russ Zorn's in, Vino's in. So once again, guys, I'll make sure 
to post something about that and we'll talk about it on here for the rest of the day as well. Grant's just going to get on setting that up and making up a little poster and whatnot. I'll give you guys a great chance to win something super cool. Same cue John's playing with. And I hit some balls with it, and it hits fantastic. It's super nice. So here we go with this break shot. It's a big one. Rack number 11. Doesn't hammer it. Doesn't hammer it, and he's got a shot. Real good break shot there. And that's all you want to see from the rack. You don't, you don't need to see it blasting open but uh, Raymond <laughs> says he'll, he'll buy the racker a beer if he places the balls by hand Raymond it's more that's how John wants it done John showed him that's how he wants it done he wants it quick he knows and he knows the things that it takes in order to run 400 Whoa. plus balls and it's and it's a combination of many different things running that many balls so one of them is kind of just get those balls racked real quick so he can keep going to work you know so that's kind of it if you're wondering there Raymond What was his energy drink that he uses? Do you guys remember? It's kind of like that uh, green... Uh, oh, jeez. I can't remember what it's called. It's kind of like a veggie smoothie almost. Oh, is he stuck here? Does he not have the 8? He doesn't have the 8. Does he have the 11? Cheat in the hole? No, he doesn't. So it might be like a small swerve on the 8. Yeah, just a, it's a tiny little swerve. I don't think this is an issue at all. It's just not what he wanted to be shooting, you know. Doesn't want to be shooting that, trying to hold up the cue ball and then end up in a weird spot later on, so. Uh, the cue combo and ticket price, we'll, we'll post that up right away, Jason. It's going to be uh, $20 per ticket, and it's going to be the John Schmidt edition P3 from Predator, the Mr. 626 Edition Q with the Revo 12.4 shaft. Uh, Jason, if you're having choppy video, it might just need to reset. So sometimes if you just close down your app and, and reopen it, that can do the trick. So... He's got a break ball in the open there. Looks like the three ball lays pretty nice. It's a little bit low, but it's not too bad. I don't think he's going to mind that. And the first glance here, I would have to think he probably leaves the 11 as his out ball to get on that ball. So what John's mind is thinking when he's going through these runs is he wants to find uh, a break ball as soon as he can, as early in the rack as he can. And he also wants to find a ball that leads him to that ball. So he's going to choose something other than the 11. I thought possibly the 11 because it's on the same side. But he likes shooting it up table. So now it tells me that it's going to be the 7 in the side pocket. He's going to just slow roll this ball in. Stop shot the 5. He's going to come over make sure he gets nice and straight on the 7. Little stop shot here. Maybe stun follow a bit. Looks like he only stunned it. So he's going to play this cue ball to the side rail a little bit and back out. A couple ball widths. Leave a heavy angle because he likes to play the break shot with, with lots of top. And that's a 1-5-4. We are now currently up to. And he's playing real good. Real good, looks to be dialed. Uh, wrap or no wrap for the P3? I'm not sure, so we'll have to 
we'll have to check on that. But as soon as we we announce it for everyone, I'll make sure all the details are set, such as the the wrap and whatnot. Because I know John's Q over there, he has a wrap, but I know some of the the P3s are wrapless, so we'll have to see which one this is. Yeah, good solid score already, right, Blomley? My guy's playing real good right now. As long as he can keep this up, we're going to see some real big numbers today. Perfect video and audio and boys. He says, Russ, thank you, thank you for letting us know. Good, it's running smooth. I uh, would like nice five inch gold crown with good cloth and controlled conditions. My table is set up for rotation four and a quarter all the way around. Raymond says, yeah, I know. Like I've been just banging my head against the wall playing straight pool for about three years on four and a quarter inch diamond tables. It's so hard. It is so hard. So I'm pretty excited to see this table in here for a little bit and I'm I'm hoping I'll get some time to hit on it before it goes bye-bye. <laughs> Which I think I will when we get back from Vegas, so it's not going to be for a while. If you guys are just tuning in. Grant and I were mentioning we are headed off to VNEA Vegas. Next week we leave uh, on Tuesday, so we'll be there on Wednesday. And the, the tournament starts next Thursday. So it'll be uh, a smorgasbord of, of pool throughout 10 days where we'll have scotch doubles, we'll have nine ball singles, eight ball singles, eight ball teams, uh, men's and ladies as well as seniors divisions. It's going to be awesome. We're also going to be covering the suds and chips party which is sort of the award ceremony for the singles divisions and the scotch doubles and we will also be covering the banquet which is the team awards at the end of the event so we'll give everyone a, a nice look at what vnea is all about you guys will get to see why we love it so much and why the alberta players go there and play it every year and they they seem to do quite well. Uh, yeah, the this predator felt supposed to last a really long time from what I've heard. Yeah, rack opened up a little better. Racker's getting in stroke, says Raymond. Yeah. Comfort says if we ever come to Atlanta, there's a spare room. Gold Crown 5 tournament edition. They replace the rails and facings. Nice. That sounds like a good room. Nice, nice, nice. Sounds like uh, that P3 is going to be wrapless. Looks like the one John is playing with right now has a wrap on it, but possibly the one we're doing the sweepstakes on will be wrapless. But I will confirm that, guys, so don't uh, don't jump the gun yet. Chad Sens will be at VNEA. Nice. See you there, Chad. Look forward to it. Come check us out at the stream booth. You'll know where to find us. We'll be in the finals dome. And we'll be roaming around as well. Three and seven eighths inch pockets. He ran a 78 first try. That's unbelievable. That is really crazy. Christopher, that's a good story. I will ask him about that. <laughs> John's in the zone where he needs to be for the day. That's right. He's landed perfect on this ball. He's on 11 racks. This is the 12th one. Uh, it's not a raffle, Eric. It is not a raffle. It is a sweepstakes. Oh, no. He came up way short. That could be end of break, and he is not thrilled about it either well short he could afford to go pretty far there and and he came up well short 
He's going to have to show us something now. Yeah, he's saying, yeah, he did get in a little bit of a funny spot there, so he couldn't really hit it with inside and go around. There's just not enough traction on the cloth. It's still too slippery, which he does want it slippery as well. So he just got in a little tough, but let's see what he can do. I mean, sometimes he can just find a shot, you know. Maybe he just zings this through and chips out a ball, and, and who knows, right? He's got the power Big stroke to get this ball through. Look at this. Chip the 11 out. Is he on the 6? No, he's not. He's not thrilled about that. I think it's going to be end of break here. Uh, the sweepstakes will be starting shortly. And Eric will give you all the info on, on how that works as soon as um, we have it up and ready to go. So let's see what he does with this shot here. This is a big shot. This could be end of break. This could be end of break. Oh, what a shot he's made. What a shot. What a shot. And now, now can he cut this ball in and get some movement? Last time he didn't think he could, but this time let's see if he can. Oh, he missed the pot, though. He missed the pot. He missed the pot. So he made the break ball and one more ball. So that's a run of 170. A run of 170 is not bad to start the day. Although I'm sure he is not thrilled at all about that. I'm sure he's going to put up a lot of big numbers today if that was any sign of what's going to happen. 170 is a fantastic run too. It should not be. Yeah, let's not, uh, let's not think that was no great thing. Yeah, that was, that was epic. That was epic. He All made, right. That's what Beamer's telling him right now, too, is he made some <laughs> real good shots during that, that For run. sure. Let's throw it up there, guys. We got it locked, loaded, ready to go. The viewer advantage sweepstakes. $20 gets you in it to win it. To buy a ticket, go on to the CSL IPL website, www.cslipl.com. Click on Shop. It will be the very first thing that you see there. You can buy as many tickets as you'd like. If you are in Canada, you also can e-transfer. Keep in mind it is USD. That would work out to about 26 Canadian. You can email that to qsportslive at gmail.com. We will get tickets caught up at the end of every day. And we will do that draw for the Mr. 626Q on Saturday. Nice. So a couple of questions about it. It comes with a shaft. It does. It comes with the butt. comes with the... Uh, Revo shaft as well as the extension. The 12.4? 12 12.9? Uh, 12 I believe it's the 11.8. The 11.8 it comes eight. with because that's a huge factor. Yes. Huge factor. People need to know what kind of shaft they're getting. Also, is it wrapless? It is wrapless. Okay. Cool. So a restart of the run here for John. Maybe we can reset the scoreboard too. Yes, just give me four and a half seconds here. I just got a couple of more uh, graphics that I need to put up. And amazing how, um, <laughs> how as soon as that run was over, the viewers dropped about by 50. <laughs> yeah. Actually about 100. <laughs> but yeah, incredible first run. Real that was incredible. Great. Let me reset this scoreboard here. Yeah, and Jason Day, you took the words right out of my mouth. Can you imagine run, a, run 170 balls and you're like, ah, darn it. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'd be out there like oh, doing a lap, a victory lap around right? the room. Like, right? Trying to high five everyone. And, <laughs> I ran 170, you guys. <laughs> I'd be yelling from the rooftops. Right? And this guy's over here like wants to throw his queue across the room <laughs> pretty funny <laughs> you know what the key, you know what the key all this is, 
Let's hear it. Mm -hmm. you get mad and you know how those emotions feel, then you have more trepidation on a tough shot knowing, I don't want to miss this so I can get all mad again. Yeah. Like you've got to just slough the misses off and start over. Good That's advice. What I did there is going to happen. I mean, yeah. I missed a bankable shot and you just got to get up and go again. Four days, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This table is going to let me shine a little bit. This one plays nice. Really good advice. I hope you guys heard some of that. I hope you guys heard some of that because that was really good advice. You know, he's like, you can't get upset because because then next time you're going to shoot a ball, you feel a little nervous. You're a little worried if you miss it, you're going to get upset again. Yeah. So it's, and he's like, it's, I'm going to shoot a lot of balls, right? So there's going to, that's going to happen, he says. That's, that's going to happen. What's going on, Mr. Tony Robles? Tony in the house. Well, I'll come how are you, my friend? Good to see you back on again. We appreciate you. Looking forward to seeing you down at the uh, at the Canada Open as well. Absolutely. We'll start uh, doing a little talking on the Canada Open as we get a little deeper into this. Yeah, we'd love to have you on the mic at Canada Open as well for a match or two. Absolutely. Completely enjoy your commentary. I'm sure we'll do a fairly good job at this, but we don't know straight pool like you, sir. And really, really nice guy. If you've never met Tony, salt of the earth. So he missed the ball again, but I think that's kind of predictable considering the situation. I kind of thought he might, you know, try to loosen up his arm a bit. Yeah. Well, let's see if we can give you a good shot at uh, the break shot here. Eric sent us a message. Yeah, we'll get back to you as soon as we can, Eric. website again is www.cslipl.com yeah i can put that up uh, one more time here it was up there rather quickly so once again you can go on to our website if you're not in canada you can go onto the website hit shop we're gonna make sure we get every ball on camera we gotta Sorry make sure we that. get every shot otherwise it doesn't count yep um so yeah onto the website cslipl.com uh, just click shop and you'll see it's the first thing available on shop sorry i didn't mean to inter no 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 <laughs> glad you did but even if he runs a bunch of balls right here it won't count it won't count straight pool is jason's best game <laughs> straight pool should be everybody's best game Right. Then we'd all be really good at other games too. Well, I'll tell you, he's he's kind of put uh, throughout the first two days, kind of got me intrigued on the whole straight pool. And then when he did that rotation game, where you run him in order, but you uh, you get ball in hand and then move one ball. Yeah, one move. Oh yeah, yeah I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna try me a little some of that. Does John have a high run on a bar box? I'm sure he's tried it, oh, but he does. I don't think yeah. it's, like, notable. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think anybody takes that seriously. It's not something you write home about. <laughs> well, let's see what he can do here. I think he's going to get motoring now, you know. It's kind of, like I mentioned it yesterday, anybody who's played straight pool, they know, too, if you... Say you run like three racks and then you miss a ball and you're like, man, I just want to get back to where it was. So you start speeding up because you're like, I was just at 42 balls. Like, why Why am I back to zero? I need yeah, to like right. well, and get I back think to 42 quick, right? I think it might be a motivating factor. You know what I mean? In He was just at 170. So now he's he's kind of okay. Now I can Now I can overachieve. Now I can go a little deeper than that. That's what he came over and said, too. He's like, this table's going to give up some big numbers. Yeah. He said it's going to give up some big numbers. So you, you can tell by the way he said it that he's he's feeling it. It's there. And, yeah, the way the way he's racking is, is exactly how John asked him to rack. So yep. Beamer's doing a great job out there. He really is, and it's a thankless job. So we appreciate it. Uh, Kevin for you stepping up to the plate 
All right, again, Kevin knows he's on camera. Any little mistake that the rack has, he knows he'll. 100%, that's a nerve-wracking job. Oh. I don't envy his position right? there. Me neither. That's, I'd be nervous if I was him up there trying to rack the balls for sure. You're, you're racking the balls for a player that could do something very great right now. Absolutely. Something super legendary. So we'll see what he's got in him here. You see a little pep in his step there. He was like motoring around to this ball. And that's a real good sign of things to come today. And I think we're going to see another big run here in, in this inning. You see how he nudged that break ball out? Just perfect. Look where he put that ball. It's flawless. So he may use the ball up table as the key ball, but I would tend to think he's going to use something like the 7-3 as the out. I would agree. So he'll shoot the ball up table, then he's going to shoot the 7, and then he's going to shoot the 3 in the side. And that just keeps it real simple. That way he's not moving the ball too much. Uh, this five inch pockets, that's correct. So day one and two, he was playing on the predator table on the four and a quarter inch pockets. And now we're over to day three, which is on the gold crown. The just under five inch corners. So they're about four and seven eighths. And the side pockets are about five and a quarter inch. So we're definitely gonna see lots of big numbers today. And we already saw a 170 just a few minutes ago. Island Man asking what John's high run today was. And it is indeed that 170 today. That's been the big one. And we got Kevin Beamer Beavis out there. Racking up the balls for him. He's volunteered to do some racking for a couple hours. I believe we got John Morelados coming in around 2 or 3 o'clock. Much appreciated those guys are because in order to run lots of balls, it's very necessary to have somebody racking so John can be having a sip of water, wiping down his cue, doing other things in between. And it also just helps. He doesn't have to walk around the table so much to gather all the balls. And that's just a little easier. Sorry, Ben. I got to fix one thing here. Yeah, you're good, buddy. Go, you go right ahead. So Grant's just fixing up that uh, link on the website there, guys. So just hold off for a second for purchasing into that sweepstakes. Has anyone ran a high number on a 5x10? I'm sure somebody has, Steven, but it's... I don't think it's a very common game to play on a 5x10 on the Bigfoot table. I would be interested to hear if anybody's done any crazy high numbers on that it's got to be real tough to do uh quentin that was yeah about his first go correct it was it was about his third inning i think if my memory serves me correctly he was kind of you know just warming up a little bit i think he missed a side shot nothing crazy looks like we got some youtube spammers again YouTube spammers. Yep. And they're out of there. Just like that. <laughs> That's how that gets done. Yep. Instantly gone. <laughs> I like this. Can you help me satisfy my wish of running 100? <laughs> <laughs> Raymond caught that one quick. He's quick, this Raymond. <laughs> Roy's got a three once on a seven foot. 
Three's a good run. You mean like racks of eight ball in a row, right, Royce? <laughs> <laughs> Comp force, my wish is to never see spam again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're pretty quick on the trigger to get rid of that. Yeah. Zero tolerance for nonsense, right? <laughs> John dialed in here. Four's a real juicy break ball. He could use the underneath break ball too, but I don't think we'll see him do that too many times today. Nope. It's just not necessary. <laughs> and with these big pockets, he can kind of develop a break ball to the side if he doesn't already have one. <laughs> don't put me on the clock. <laughs> oh, he hit it the exact same way. He's got to figure out that shot. Yeah. That's what pretty the much ended his run last time. Yeah. Almost a carbon copy of that shot. How can I give cash in person? You can come down to the, the hall, Priyash. Absolutely, That's sir. That's fine, too. Absolutely. Definitely for anybody who's in the area, come check it out live in person. We got lots of seating for everybody. They can gather around and watch these world record attempts. Mm -hmm. He's on 42. We can change the score there. Three oh, racks, yes, 42. Sorry. I fell asleep at the wheel there. You got the mouse in the hand, you can't fall asleep. <laughs> no, right here. <laughs> <laughs> I won't pry it out of your sleeping hands. Oh, did he chip the 10 out enough? Nah, he's banking it. Yep. Well, <laughs> the problem isn't making the 10. Obviously, the problem is... It's the is, shot after the 10. <laughs> what the heck are you doing after? So He's calling the 10. See, he's just going to cut it up table. That's the only way to get anything happening. Well, and if, if he gets lucky, he can still go three rails around into the backside of the nine here, I would I think. I think it's so thin he's going one rail yeah, or two zigzag. Yeah, that was super tough. Yeah, it's super tough <laughs> shot there. I didn't like his chances there. Didn't like and his And you know chances. what? That's uh, that straight pull, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. Like he said, he's, he's going to play for four days straight. Yeah. And approximately Run. six hours a day, there's going to be some balls missed and some Of course. Some sometimes rubs, the table so. can punish you, right? Sometimes mm -hmm. you're the janitor. Sometimes you're the president. Mm -hmm. He did long bank the corner ball uh, on day one, Vino. He did long bank the corner ball. He showed us a couple of other shots from, from the stack. Quite interesting. There's a few good ones there. Raymond, you should definitely come up for the Canada Predator Open. So once again, that was uh, something that we have partnered with Predator as well as CSI on. I'll have a few graphics up uh, available later, later on. Um, I don't want to interrupt John's run here, but um, I do have a couple of graphics I can put up. Um, but we did partner with, uh, with Predator on that. That's happening August uh, 16th to the 20th. That'll be in Red Deer, Alberta. We have 128 pro men, 64 pro ladies, $100,000 added. And then we have the Western Canadian Championships, which is the amateur event that runs right alongside it. So exciting things happening in Alberta. Pepin is step again. He he wants to get motor in through these first few racks at least. Oh, I, I would think he'd play pretty quick through like the first 10 racks and then start to slow down a little and be sure. But since he kind of opened with a 170, I think anything less than that now is no good. <laughs> Can I get a poutine sponsor? <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to talk to John about that. He might have beat you to the punch there. <laughs> Definitely let us know if you somehow get a Tim Morton sponsorship. Right? Those ain't easy to come by. <laughs> I uh, I think I should be sponsored by Tim I think you Tim deserve Hortons, one, yeah. right? If anybody deserves to have a Tim Horton sponsorship, that would be me, I would well, the, think. The problem is then they're going to go bankrupt. <laughs> Grant's not buying <laughs> Tim Hortons anymore. They're going bankrupt for sure. Oh, overhit that a little too. Yeah, that's a byproduct of playing pretty quick. It is. Uh, he's got to go up and down now. It's not the end of the world. That's slick cloth. He yes. might turn himself into that same shot we've saw twice now. Super hard to gauge the speed, but I think he's got it figured out. Oh, he's perfect. It's real good. He's sitting good. Back to one he's rack. He's sitting good. So maybe I'll run and use the washroom quick. By all means, sir. 
And as I mentioned uh, prior to, there is uh, a little bit of information on the Canada Open again, August 16th to 20th. Uh, 128 men's, 64 ladies. And uh, if you go onto the um, CSI website, playcsipool.com, it'll give you a little bit more information on the Western or the Canadian Western Amateur Championships. Done deal. We appreciate it, Tim. And again, um, just so everybody knows, I will get caught up on sending out tickets and everything else at the end of each day. Just motoring through these. A little bit of a cluster here in the middle, but uh, he'll be able to pick those apart. The, I think it's the 10-4, maybe a wired up combination down to the, down to that bottom pocket, or he may just elect to punch into him right now. Yeah, we got you, David. And once again, I'll do that. Uh, we also have um, tonight after John has done his run, at whatever time that uh, ends up being, we also have uh, something else for you. We're going to do an interview with myself and, uh, and John Schmidt. That'll be done with Melina Mike on Windows Open. So if you have not gone and seen what Melina Mike is all about, really really doing some good things for pool we're going to fully support what Molina Mike is doing and uh, we'll be on his podcast tonight nice little shove over there of the one ball Royce, the Q draw is for exactly the Q that John is using. It is the 626 Q, of course, made by Predator Qs. Only 300 of those Qs made. I'll put that up again here for you real quick as soon as John's done. There it is there. Mr. 626Q can be purchased online on our website, cslipl.com. If you are in Canada, you can also send an e-transfer, qsportslive at gmail.com. $20 gets you in it to win it. Keep in mind it is USD, so about 26,000 Canadian. We will do that draw at the end of day uh, Saturday. And, of course, that comes with the Revo 11.8. It also comes with the Rosewood Q extension. First time that Predator has included an extension with any of their Q designs. Uh, cost per ticket, $20 per ticket, and it is not a raffle. And I'll explain the differences and why we do a sweepstakes. So it's not about the number of tickets sold. That would be a raffle. Raffles are illegal. We have to do it as a sweepstakes. And what that means is we have to pick a draw date, which will be end of day Saturday. And uh, whether we sell enough tickets to cover costs on those or not, we must draw that product and give it away on the draw date. So we kind of take the risk that uh, if it doesn't cover our costs, we got to put the cash out, which is fine. Um, but that is the biggest difference between a draw and a raffle. Um, one of the other requirements of a sweepstakes, the winner must answer a quote-unquote skill testing question. Um, nope, you can buy as many tickets on those as you please because it's not based on number of tickets sold.
Yeah, no worries, Chris. Well, only reason that we know the, that difference, um, we used to do, uh, if you were a, a longtime viewer of Q Sports Live, we used to do a lot of, uh, of raffles. And uh, <clears throat> we got hauled in by the City of Calgary Police Investigative Department. And uh, we were told either stop doing what you're doing and uh, do a sweepstakes or it is, uh, I believe, a $50,000 fine along with some jail time. So it was pretty good motivation for us to uh, not continue doing raffles. And so we contacted a lawyer in Toronto who is the number one lawyer in Canada uh, regarding how we could possibly do it. And that's where we found out about sweepstakes and all the requirements that we have to meet to fulfill that. So we do have all the legal paperwork uh, required to make it a legal sweepstakes and we comply with the rules of what that entails. <laughs> How skillful is this question? Well, it is an uh, interesting little pattern here. I'm going to kind of break from that. Interesting little pattern. What does he use for a breakout ball here? We got Ben back. His coin's on two. Is he on two racks? Uh, yes. Two racks. Sorry, I was uh, falling asleep at the wheel again. Oh, that's all right. It's a good thing you catch that stuff. I got so much going on in my mind right now, I don't know when it, what end is up. Well, there's a lot of uh, directions being pulled in for sure, yeah. right? So what does he use as the breakout ball? The three ball? Yeah, the three, three into the side. The three into the side, that's right. And he's got a good angle here so he can slide yeah. across. He just wants to leave lots of angle on the three. Cue ball is going to go straight into the stack. Oh, Royce, I never win those draws. You're one of the luckiest guys that I've ever seen enter draws. He didn't. He didn't come across, and I like that. He just he stayed on the That's on this side tight, of it. That's a little tight, though. If you want my opinion, now I mean, John shaves the ball better than any man I've seen. I think it, he can it's kinda, shave the shine can, off. Can of we that see ball. the side angle? Yeah, of course we can. Yeah. Oh, I think it's perfect. I think it's absolutely perfect. He just yeah. Crept. From here it looks good, but then you go back to this angle. Yeah, it looks a little. And it looks a little looks steep. A little but I think he's going like straight into the top of the pack here. And he's going to hit this with a little speed. <laughs> Steph says you oh misspelled goodness, always. He missed the pot on the three. Yeah. Oh, I don't think he's going to be thrilled with that. Nope. That's for sure. That's not going to be thrilling. So restart the run. Yep. <laughs> yeah, misspelled always. That's funny. <laughs> Uh, yeah, probably the internet, Eric. Usually it's on your end. It's pretty smooth on our end. Yeah, we don't see any difficulties at all. Sometimes if you just close the app or the program. The browser the, that the, you're using. The window, yeah, yeah, and just restart it, it'll it'll work. Or even just uh, if you're viewing on Facebook, maybe switch over to YouTube. Maybe your YouTube will run smoother. Mm -hmm. Can you use a jump cue? <laughs> <laughs> uh I can't say I've ever seen anybody use a jump cue in straight pool. I'm going to go all out on a limb and say no. Mm -hmm. I think there is no jump cue allowed in straight pool because straight pool is played before jump cues are ever a thing. Mm -hmm. And Buzz is asking on YouTube, what's the reason that they are illegal? Um, they are illegal because there are no raffle licenses. Billiards is not recognized, neither in Canada or the U.S. as a sport. Therefore, you cannot get a raffles license. Um, in Canada, that would have to be recognized by all of the liquor control boards across Canada, uh, which pool is not recognized as a sport. Um, and the same in the, in the U.S. must be recognized by a sport through the Gaming Commission, which it is not. It has simply become an acceptable practice when you go into things like the NEA, ACA, or uh, sorry, ACS, uh, BCA, all the Q raffles that happen. Uh, it's simply become an acceptable practice. Um, but doing it online, you kind of leave yourself a little more open to being uh, investigated. So, and, and we and were uh, we were told already either cease and desist or face fifty thousand dollars plus jail time. So, we contacted a lawyer, spent a bunch of money on trying to figure out how we can do it online and at least allow the opportunity or the chances of people getting in on what is now affectionately known as the viewer advantage sweepstakes. 
I'm not a fan of the bright orange jumpsuits. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Nope. And it's more the crowbars that surround you in that little room that I would not be a fan of. And perhaps, you know, a cellmate named Bubba. Bubba. Probably uh, not my idea of a good time. Uh, yeah. You'd have to hope you draw a cellmate like me. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Raymond, I'm not sure. I think with the triangle, it just takes longer. And, and this was, you know, by John's request after he watched Jason Shaw do it with the the template. He thinks it's quite a bit easier with the template, so he would know best. Well, he plays, uh, he plays a lot of straight pool, so I'm not going to profess that I know everything. I certainly don't. I wish I did. Actually, I wish I didn't know everything. Nobody wants to know at all. <laughs> that doesn't leave any room for growth of opportunity to learn anything. Raymond is funny. I like this guy. <laughs> what if your cellmate had great end patterns? <laughs> Gosh, this guy on, uh, <laughs> on YouTube. Don't worry, guys. We'll get rid of this guy right now. Spam, spam, and more spam. Is that a different spam from before? Yeah, they just create multiple accounts and they keep coming back, but eventually they get tired of having to recreate <laughs> accounts. Yeah, they should get tired. Right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to one out. Perfect angle on the break ball. I think he's going to go into these. I oh, got John Morelados in here to, to take over from Beamer soon. <laughs> <laughs> John said he's got too many rackers now. When, when this one gets tired, he's going to slide in. Yeah, right. Johnny Morelados. He's having a good time. As dead serious as these high run attempts are, John is still out there laughing and having a good time. Of course. Notice if you lock in the resolution uh, instead of auto, then there's no issue no problems since doing that. I'm assuming, Will, you're talking about the camera. We do have the autofocus off. Um, so at this point, I'm not sure why. I think it, there's it's some the other camera, maybe. It, yeah. Yeah, the other camera we were having an issue with. So that's why we're staying on this one. Gotcha. For the most part. Yeah. Once in a while, we'll switch over to that, that alternate angle just to give you guys an idea what kind of what kind of look he has on the break ball but we'll keep it locked here for the most part. The bots have a high YouTube Fargo. <laughs> nice little spin shot he played there. Real nice. Go Jason Shaw, says somebody in the YouTube. <laughs> Is he playing right now in the UK Open? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, that's what we did, little Chris. Hide user from the channel, that's what we do. That's right. Good looking out too, Chris. Yeah, Thanks indeed. Buddy. He's got some knowledge. We're not going to lie, we didn't know that at first <laughs> it took us a couple of tries to figure it out it's which so one will good. get rid of those people forever um tim it is his personal cue he now uh, uses the 626 cue made by predator yeah he's got the wrap on it 12.4 revo with a victory soft tip indeed playing with the town chalk that he dropped in the pocket there you saw the town chalk, he says, is 100% necessary to put together high runs. And it's actually the town pyro that he's using. Yeah, the blue Not pyro. The V10. Yeah. And so when he said that the chalk was very necessary, I thought, well, I got to try this. They've been playing snooker with it too, you know, so yeah. there's definitely something to it. And I've been playing with it for a couple days, and it's the real deal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I watched John play over 10 hours of non-stop hitting balls and there was not one skid. <laughs> Little Chris important. also has a, a YouTube parko. Indeed. Jason blew someone out 9-1 this morning. 
it was Steve, as it was well Stephen as Follin. Stephen Follin, yeah. <laughs> it was our, was our West of, Coast uh, boy. Yeah, out of Vancouver. <laughs> He's a Brit through and through, though, so he I sure see is, why yeah, he played the UK Brit Open. Ag right? Brit against Brit. Yeah. <laughs> And Oi beat some guy 9 nothing. Yeah, <laughs> that doesn't surprise me, those guys. And we got to give a shout-out, of course, to Predator and the Arcos balls that uh, John is playing with. More accurate, more responsive, more consistent. All three claims, I think, are absolute true. <laughs> yeah, he just grabbed the break ball. It's okay, though. They, they figured it out. <laughs> they replaced it where it was. And to be honest, as much as John is shooting at these high runs, I don't think anybody's expecting him to run 600 balls today. Yeah. The first day on the table, I, I think it's going to take him a few days. I do too. So I think maybe by Friday, mm -hmm. he might be putting up some 400s, 500s. Yep. But today... I think today is 200. Right. That would be uh, that would be the goal today. So I don't and think we need to... just keep building on that. I don't think we need to be too... Uh, picky about it being official you know what I mean? yeah not yet not yet i think that'll be for later days when he started running balls this morning i thought he's gonna come out of the gate with like a 400 we gotta make sure we're paying attention yeah right, right? got tree topped here by that uh 15 ball yeah and so and that's another example i think it's just gonna take him a day or two to get used to this cloth you know yeah and, and the way the table's playing i can't as much as i want to expect brilliance right away I don't think we can. I think we gotta we gotta expect some, you know, maybe two hundred ball runs the first day, maybe first two days, and then <laughs> James says he's expecting seven fifty today. Yeah, it, and exactly, could, right? It, and that's the crazy part is it could it happen. could happen, and we do have to be careful, you know, and the racker has to be careful. But I don't think it's gonna be uh, too much of a huge issue. Yeah, like. Raymond says, asterisk, minus 28 on this upcoming 800 ball run. <laughs> right? <laughs> and that is all it would be. It would, it would just be a minus the first two racks. That's it. <laughs> and those, uh, those predator balls are also very good looking. Uh, leave one ball on the bottom rail, open lanes. That it's pretty good advice, uh, if that's what you're saying there. Short stop on pool. That's on YouTube. Best little Chris has done is 79, but now I'm looking more at improving my BPI instead of getting that one lucky run. <laughs> Uh, that's funny. Still nothing wrong with a 79. That's pretty sporty. Nothing to shake the head at. I would agree. Another comment on the YouTube. Mr. 1428. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't quite have the same ring to it, but that would be that awesome. That would be a very, very sporty <laughs> number. Just double them up, he says. Right. 714. Forget about it. Double it up. I can't believe I missed two break balls today, he says. <laughs> <laughs> this is a big number table. You got it. Yeah, and this comment just took the words right out of my mouth, too. It took him a few years of daily 14 and 1 before he broke 100 for the first time. That's me in a nutshell. Right? It was like three straight years of daily straight pool. I thought, can I even do it? <laughs> no doubt. Well, I'll tell you, I, I, I played, uh, I shot 14 and out last night for the first time that I've played straight pool. And now, now I'm, now I'm hungry. So, yeah. As soon as we get done this event, I have a couple of CSL matches that I have to play. I have mm -hmm. to play some online Ghost, and I think I'm only going to play straight pull on the box to get ready for VNA. Mm -hmm. Coin has to go around the table three times for a 7-5-6. Yeah, 
Yeah, we can watch the coin. Yeah, definitely straight pool is fantastic training for eight ball. Absolutely. Super, super good training for eight ball. Somebody says, might as well minus it now since it doesn't seem like he will get it. But just in case. <laughs> I think we know even if he does get over the 714 number, we can minus. We'll minus at the end. Yeah. yeah. At the end of this run. Whatever he runs here. We'll minus at the end. Uh, pocket size here. Mr. Shuff is four and seven eighths in the corners. And the side pockets are about five and a quarter inch. Yeah, so a little bit tighter. Oh, look at that. Look at that. To the heart of the pocket. Um, yeah, a little bit tighter than what Jason Shaw had, but uh, I think it's still capable of uh, giving up some big numbers. Absolutely, yeah. John's, John's pretty sure this table is going to give up some big ones. Brandon Schuff is quite the player. What, what's your high run, Brandon Schuff? You don't have to disclose it to everybody, but I am interested. Pattern recognition, potting, just about every aspect of uh, any of the games, straight pool will teach you. Yeah, I think I think for eight ball especially, because you see where the balls just were? Where there was like four balls in a cluster? Yeah. You see that a ton in eight ball, and it's not about breaking those balls out. It's about it's knowing where they go when yeah. you break them out. Exactly. And so if you play a lot of straight pool, you have to know where those balls are going when you move them. So then when you go over and play some eight ball racks, you can predict where the balls are going nice and easy, and the game becomes a little more simple. There's a drill called the 100 ball drill. You have to be honest with yourself but you put, set all the 15 balls out randomly on the table and run the balls. Yeah, John, John was actually doing a version of that, I believe. Was it yesterday? But you don't put them out randomly. He, he broke them. Yeah, this one is like you put them random, you run all the balls in any order, and then you put them out random again. Oh, interesting. And you just keep shooting till you miss. And so Eric says he ran 237 on a bar table. That's incredible, you know? putting them out there. Brandon Schuff, I know you're not a 14-1 specialist, but 116 is really good. That's sporty. That's really good. Schuff's one of those American players that... I've heard his name before, that's for sure. Yeah, he definitely could have been uh, a Moscone Cup pick a handful of times. Yeah. He's had some fantastic years on the scene, so... Oh, my goodness. This guy's back again. This guy's got he a few he's different got no accounts. <laughs> Well, I'm going to be quick on the draw now. Absolutely. <laughs> so John's on four racks asterisk. <laughs> I wonder if, can we de delete two. those comments as well? I, they do delete. It says message deleted. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I don't, I think only the players who, or the viewers who were there and saw it right when it popped up, they you. could see it and then it's gone instantly, right? <laughs> so it's like, Raymond, of course, he, he saw a quick. <laughs> He's quick on the draw. He's got no Richard picks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hard to play 14 one diamonds with four and a quarter. Yeah, with the deepest dish pockets. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's what John was trying to do yesterday, or, or for the first two days. He was playing on the Predator table, which is a, a four and a quarter pro cut deep shelf still managed to pull out a uh, one two six one twenty six yeah so they say you can still see their name is this it's not even doing anything not doing anything nope you've removed those four about 16 times. yeah but why isn't it <laughs> I put them in timeout too. Doesn't do anything, right? Yeah, we do hide their their account. You can hide their account rather than just comment. Nope, that's yeah. It's, it. it's already yeah, it's hidden. hidden. 
but they're saying they can still see the name, right? That's what he. Yeah, that's what you, they said. You they can, can still see I mean, the name. Yeah. Well, the name's quite not good. It's not, but <laughs> I mean, it's YouTube. There's really not a lot There's that we can do about it. We can just keep blocking them until they get tired of creating accounts. There's got to be a way to delete that too, though. Has what to be. happened here? Uh, he missed a ball up table. He must have, yeah. Yeah, he was shooting up table. He missed a ball, which, let's be honest, is okay. At the end okay. of the day, yeah. <laughs> we wanted to start back at zero anyway. Do you want to take a quick break? I do. Before uh, I got to go. What were you, uh, were you reading my I got to run and get the kid in about 10 minutes. Okay, yeah. I got to go get him from school. So. Yeah, no worries. I've, uh, I, can, I can take it from there. That's right. Can still see the whole message, it says. Oh, my God. Does anybody out there know how to just get rid of that? Do we have any YouTube wizards? How do we just get rid of that silly spam? Because on our end, it just shows message deleted. That's all it says underneath, so I'm not sure. Brandon Schuff says American 14-1. Lost in semis to Conrad, who won it. Yeah. Oh, and you beat Shaw in that tournament. Nice. And you won the round robin bracket with Duel, Rodney, and Archer in it. That's pretty impressive. Unbelievable. And thanks for tuning in, Brandon. You missed. Unbelievable. This guy is human. Can you believe it? <laughs> Now remove from the lexicon. <laughs> That's right. Spam accounts will never get tired. They're bots. Uh, yeah. And you get them on their on your stream every day. Collins, is there any way to like remove them? You have to set up a third party bot that mutes them before they post. Oh, how crafty is that? So you you have to pay someone. <laughs> To mute them before they post. That's incredible. <laughs> yeah, the name includes their message. That's too bad. It says message deleted for viewers, but you should be able to hide the user from the channel. That should remove them from the live chat. Yeah, like I, I hid them. I hid them, but it still shows further up in the chat so i guess as long as you guys just keep just keep commenting and it and it just filters them up through the chat and hopefully you know they get uh they get tired of it after a while uh dave olson we got the predator cloth on the gold crown here and brandon shuff's moderating a business well that's that's a good thing to get into sir I think uh, owning a business is pretty rewarding, or moderating a business, I should say. <laughs> and pool will always be there. I like to say that too, you know. Pool's a very ageless game. I think, you know, John is no spring chicken. I believe he's 49 years old. But he's still playing as good as he ever has. And this game is very much like that. You can still play well, well into your 50s, play very, very high level. And that's true for Snooker as well. Any of you pool junkies out there follow Snooker. Some of the best players are in their late 40s now. <laughs> and still bringing it. Yeah, report them too. I guess that's another way. That's another way. It's filling out some stuff, right? Oh, no. Yeah, here we go. Can I click all these things? Are they all eligible? Good idea, though. Report them too. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Good call. Good call. Another tricky little shot after the break shot. He ended up way down table with not much happening. Restart of run again. No problem. Lots of pool to be played. Mm. 
do you keep tallies of how many he has ran every time he misses? I haven't kept track of every single one, but I am going to keep track of any of the notable high runs. So, like, he ran a 170, he ran a, a 56. I'll, I'll keep track of anything over 50. Fight the machines with the machines. Yeah, assign a moderator. If you stream through OBS Streamlabs, I think they offer a bot service. Cool, a good to know. Thank you, Buzz the Onion. Multiverse, Lil Chris. <laughs> Office Cleaner says, friend ran 118 on me and he was 73. That's, that's awesome. I love hearing that stuff. Pool is such a great game for that. Yeah, the Ray Martin Mike Siegel match. They're both over 65 or over 60. <laughs> and Raymond, yeah, like it, I'm going to tell him that I don't think it's very good either. And I think he would have better luck placing the balls in there. And although it takes a little bit longer, I think he's going to get the balls opening up a little better. <laughs> and Com4 says agreed six times. <laughs> yeah, stand the man, Dave. You got that right. He's still playing just as good as ever. I think he's uh, he's headed up to Edmonton this weekend for the Alberta Open. Alberta Open ten ball happening in Edmonton, Alberta this weekend. Stacked field there. I'm pretty bummed that I gotta miss it. But duty calls, you know, gotta make sure that the bills are paid. Uh, Kial says, what you're doing here, 14 and one is such an underrated game. My high run is 28, but it was on a seven foot table, four and a quarter inch pockets. Can't wait to try it on nine foot, five inch. 28 is still really good. I think anytime you get through the second rack, you're playing real good. And I definitely think you'll have a little more success on the nine foot with bigger pockets. Just because you got a little more room to work. And obviously the size of the pocket makes a big difference. <laughs> I'll tell him, Raymond. <laughs> I'll let him know that he never gets your jump cue again. <laughs> Yeah, John Henderson, pretty strong one pocket player for sure. All right, back to one rack, 14 balls. And almost time for me to jet out of here. I'll be back in about 45 minutes. We're going to leave you with Grant Zap, of course, in very capable hands. Always does a fantastic job. Make sure you guys get in on that. 626Q sweepstakes, which will be running over the course of the next few days. Get your hands on one of the cues that John's playing with. A 626 edition Predator P3 with the Revo shaft. This particular cue that we're giving away is a wrapless 626 P3 and it comes with the 11.8 Revo. Uh, Dave Olson, so far what I've heard about this Predator cloth is that it holds the slide longer so it wears slower, which is exactly what we wanna see in cloth. We wanna see it wear slower, of course. So I'm very interested to see how the table that we have in here wears over time. And of course, we'll keep everybody up to date. John looking good here. He's got a nice break ball. It's the 12 ball, the stripe closest to us that is near the rack. So he's going to get down there and try to get rid of the 11 and the 2. That way he's got lots of room to work around that break ball. 
He's looking real good here to get the second rack on the board in this run. And I think his end game would be the 13 ball would be his out ball. So he could use the seven to get on the 13 in the side. Might be what he's thinking. He'll shoot the two, then the four, then the seven. Up table will lead him to the 13 in the side. Nice and close to the break ball with angle. What do you think, Grant? Does that look good? I would say you're on the buck. That's the way, right? This is the way. That is the way. It's a little soft draw here. He wants to land as close to straight in as he can. Yeah, that was a good shot. A little stun over. But for some reason, he's not in love with it. He's got a lot more angle there than I think at first blush. He's got to use the side rail. Yeah. And he didn't want to have to use the side rail. No, oh, he oh, just pinches pinched it, it over nice. Yeah, beautiful. All right, I got to jump out for about 45 minutes. I'll try and do my best to keep people entertained and the score correct and all the other things. You got this. I can do it. <laughs> I got it. I'm sure they'll tell me if I'm not doing it. Speaking of uh, speaking of the cloth, there it is there, and how it compares. Uh, I think was one of the questions how it compares to Championship Tournament Edition. As far as speed, they're very very comparable. Um, what I have heard on the positive side of the Predator cloth is the wearability. The cloth wears really really well. Martin K bought the gold crown. How long is it LP? It's only here. I guess until this uh, run is over, we may or may not have time to uh, get it arranged to be removed from here uh, prior to leaving to Vegas. Uh, ben and I leave early Tuesday morning to head down to Vegas. But uh, either while we're gone or shortly after we get back, we'll arrange to... Uh, drop that off at Martin's house and then uh, we're going to replace it with another predator table. So we may use the eight ball as the break ball here. Might uh, also nudge that five out if he has to use the eight later in the rack. May actually could, depending on that angle, nudge that five right now, but I would think that would push kind of into where that eight ball is in that vicinity. So oh, I got to bring up my YouTube comments now that Ben is gone. Just realized that uh, I have no way of viewing the YouTube comments. Let me rectify that situation. All right, back on it. Looking good for the run out here, and I'm pretty sure that eight ball is going to be the breakout ball. Yeah, if uh, yourself or anybody else that's in and around the Calgary vicinity, that's where we're playing out of, is the Leather Pocket in Calgary, Alberta. Come on down. So kind of changed his mind up a little bit. Now going to use the 11 ball as the breakout. Nice shot. And once again, for everybody interested, we are doing the viewer advantage sweepstakes. That is for the Mr. 626 Q that you see John playing with. That is his new playing queue. Of course, made by Predator. We'll do that draw end of day Saturday. If you want in it to win it, you can head over to our website, www.cslipl.com. Tickets, 20 bucks. If you happen to reside in Canada, you can also e-transfer that in 
do keep in mind that's 20 US dollars, so about 26 Canadian. And if you want to email it in, qsportslive at gmail.com. Nice little chip into the pack there. I believe he has the four ball or nine. Five ball, five two, potentially the four ball, maybe even the 14 down below, so long as it passes by the 12 ball. So I think draw off this 14, set yourself on the four. That opens up the lane, but he is going to prove me wrong. into the 13. Pretty smooth sailing from here, I would imagine. Nice little kill with inside off that side rail. Set himself on the six. And I believe more or less a hit and stick. Maybe a touch of draw on the 14 ball here. And then over to the side rail, just back out for the one ball as the break ball. Very well done. And of course, we got to give a shout out to Serge Bertrand, the winning stroke out of Quebec. Made it all possible for us to have that predator table on day one and day two. Kind of gave uh, John the opportunity to show what's possible on a four and a quarter inch pocket. Had a high run of one, two, six. Gave us a little bit of a clinic on uh, how to play straight pool. And I'll be honest, I think, uh, I think he's got me hooked on this game. Mr. Damien Pong Panic. Jam up apparel in the house. And indeed, if anybody is looking for the shirt that John is wearing, that is available. Jamupapparel.com. Probably take the 15, maybe nudge. I don't know if he'll nudge because there really wouldn't be a shot available after going to say nudge into that 4-8, but it doesn't leave him, leave him much of an available shot. I believe 9-7 is a wired up combination, should he choose it. Uh, Ken says, John Schmidt, Sky Woodward, Corey Duell, Jason Shaw, 18 holes of golf, who wins? I would, uh, I would have to say Mr. Schmidt, a true scratch golfer.
Corey is pretty decent as well. I have heard, I have never seen um, Sky Golf, but I, I have heard he's a pretty decent golfer. But I would have to, uh, if I had to pick one, my money's going on John Schmidt when it comes to golf. Nice little touch of inside. Be interesting to see if he takes the 10 ball first up to that, uh, well, I guess down to the bottom right hand corner as you look at the table. Goes 14 first, maybe back up on top, yeah. Almost a two ball first here. Well done. 11, hmm. 11, 8. <laughs> Keith says Earl. See if he go, goes two rails around to get the angle on the 11. Two rails around it is. Through five racks. Quick little break and as uh, Damien on the chat, we may as well say a shout out or give a shout out to Jam Up Apparel. Lots of new things on the website, guys. Uh, lots of co-brand Predator Jam Up. That would be lots of new designs available there on the website, jamupapparel.com. And we got to give a shout out to CRM as well. The Predator Billiard Light. We're not playing under that one right now, but uh, the first two days as we played on the Predator table, that was all lit up by the Arena Light. And you'll notice on day one, day two, you don't have that wash on the screen, the same as uh, what you see here. Definitely one of the advantages to having that Predator Arena light, beautiful looking light. A little bit of a cluster here in the middle. Three, seven, eight, 13 and six. Sniping this 10 ball. Came a little bit flat there. A little flat on that angle, have to force a little bit of angle here. Now he'll disturb that pack, draw off this 15. And that does set that five ball in for a nice break ball as well. Johnny Archer is a big golfer as well, from what I've heard. Again, never seen him golf. A 
wide open lanes here. Super smooth on that draw shot, that's for sure. Two thirteen one seven six five. Oh, that's a better pattern. Thirteen six seven one five. Got a little bit too much angle there, I think. Let me change up that last pattern. <laughs> Never seen him golf either, but I've seen the clubs he carries around in the trunk everywhere he goes. An avid golfer. I'm not sure, Colin, uh, if that is still a thing. Uh, not my story to tell, so I'm not sure whether that's uh, still a thing. Comment on YouTube says Johnny Archer still owes Oscar Dominguez a chunk from that match over two years ago as well. Not sure whether that's uh, still the case. But certainly not my uh, not my story to tell. you guys heard that or not but uh, John just said we did an amazing job on the table plays super level uh, Oscar's the owner of the room I run my stream out of just have to give a shout out since it came up indeed we have uh, been at Oscar's room a couple of times and from what I hear uh, he just had that renovated so I'm kind of curious to see what that looks like as it was nice even when we were there prior to the renovations and of course Oscar being a salt of the earth type of guy the same as his wife Desiree very good friends with uh, with Damien at Jam Up Clean looking rack here too. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm curious to see what his room looks like now from Oscar. Hard Times Billiards, Sacramento, California. As I mentioned, it, you know, it was a, a really nice room even when I was there. So I'm uh, very curious to find out what he did to renovate it, what it looks like. One of these days I'll make it down there again. And even to pull this off, uh, to put this together in the time frame that we did, uh, you know, we started talking to John. I believe it was uh, just before the Super Billiards Expo, if my uh, if my memory is correct. If Damien's still listening, maybe he can chime in on it. But I believe we started talking to him just before uh, the Super Billiards Expo and kind of confirmed 
everything that uh, that it was going to happen just before then. So trying to arrange uh, to get these tables in and so on and so forth with uh, supply chain issues being what they are, it was uh, it was it was a challenge, no doubt about it. Oscar put all diamond tables in the back room. Very nice. I, I did hear he's got some predator tables there. Maybe one as well. What's going on, Mr. Rod Ariagata? Uh, right now, it's just Grant on the mic. Ben had to make a, a little run to go grab his son from school. Raymond, uh, does John have a World 14-1 title? He did have it. It was 626. That's why he's known as Mr. 626. That was uh, broken by Jason Shaw now at 714. What a shot. Put the heat on it. What a shot. Wow. What's the highest run so far? Seen 140. So highest run today is uh, 170. That's his highest run. Uh, Tournament-wise, yeah, I, I can't remember which one, but yes, he does. Before that, John was known as Mr. 400 indeed, and he has run, I believe, eight 400s. CSLIPL.com. Try it. You'll like it. I would agree, Patrick. Referring to the CSL IPL Ghost League. Some really, really good training on, uh, on your game. If you're looking to improve your game, that's how I would do it, is through the Q Sports Live Pool League, affectionately known as the CSL IPL. And that is, uh, wow, he's starting to feel it now putting a little heat on those balls so the CSL IPL is playing the ghost it is sanctioned by BCA as well as ACS CCS so again you can uh, get all kinds of information on that just on the website CSLIPL.com You'll also find the uh, the draw that we're doing, the sweepstakes for the Mr. 626 Q that John is using. That is his new Q, of course, made by Predator. Once you're on the website, just click Shop. Tickets are $20 US to get in it to win it. We'll do that draw on Saturday evening at the conclusion of the World Attempt Run. That, of course, will be drawn by Mr. John Schmidt himself. Ghost League uh, sounds scary. No. It's, uh, if John, uh, this is John's thoughts. He says everybody should be playing it. And uh, if he didn't have the commitments that he's got next month, touring around and giving clinics, he would also be playing in it. So you'll probably see him uh, playing in the next session of the CSL IPL. Wanted a little nudge on that six ball. And welcome back, Shirley. And I won't say it's not scary. When you first start it, it, uh, it can get a little intimidating because you've got to live stream your matches to a private player's page. But uh, it is open right now. If you guys want to find out what it's all about, um, you can look for CSL IPL players, all one word. You can search that page 
on Facebook as well. We are accepting anybody and everybody that wants to have a look. It is a private page, so at the conclusion of the session, we will clean that out and it'll go back to being for players only. But uh, if you do want to see what that's all about, just search up that page. Going into the pack here. <laughs> I loved it on the stream yesterday when John told the story of the guy who asked him, uh, but can you play nine ball? Uh, yeah, a little. Yeah, the guy knows how to play a little nine ball. Really, he's uh, he's kind of a all-around player. 14-1. One pocket, nine ball, ten ball. Got to go from the five to the seven here. Interesting. Oh, he's going to use the five ball. I got it. Going to use the five ball, cut that into the side pocket, go into the top of the rack. Oh, very nice. Lands the cue ball in the kitchen or in the, in the rack spot. Not in the kitchen. Uh, what's the highest women's run? I believe that was Jeanette Lee if my memory is correct. And Shirley says, the Ghost League teaches you. Uh, I don't think I changed this. Um, Shirley says, um, Ghost League teaches you to think differently, uh, like looking for the runout patterns. Indeed, there is nowhere to hide. So when you play Ghost, it teaches you the all out aggressive side of the game. So then when you do play live, it will certainly affect the, uh, the performance that you can put up during live play. As Tommy Farrell found out. Goes to uh, BCA Vegas, ends up winning eight ball, and I believe coming in second in the 10 ball. And once again, guys, if you are just tuning in, help us out, hit that share button. Let's see if we can get a few more viewers in. He's up over the 100 mark. Ran a 17 pack of 10 ball at our house last summer, says Justice Goodwin. Wow. <laughs> James says, don't call me Shirley. <laughs> Nice little floater for the uh, 12 ball, I think that is on the rail. Whatever it was, it went to the pocket. Can't tell if the nine squeezes, but he may just come off the rail. No, I think he's got to play the nine ball. Wow. What a shot, has the two ball as a break ball. I think that's 11 on the side rail. Gonna prove me wrong again. I thought he would take the uh, 
the eight ball, then the 10 ball, then the 11 ball. He's got some, he's got some angle there. He's got angle to play with. Nice little touch, two rails in behind the two ball, leaving himself the angle that he needs for the two for the break ball. We're rolling now. We're rolling now. And of course, once again, guys, we do have the viewer advantage sweepstakes up. It is for the Mr. 626Q that you see John playing with. $20 per ticket gets you in to win. You can get those tickets at CSLIPL.com. Just click on the shop button. It'll be the first one that you see under the shop. If you're in Canada, you can certainly e-transfer that in. QSportsLive at gmail.com. Keep in mind it is $20 US dollars, so about $26 Canadian. We will do the draw end of day sun uh, sorry, end of day Saturday. That draw will be done by Mr. John Schmidt himself. And I see our friend is back on YouTube that I'll have to block. This guy's pretty quick at making these accounts. but not as quick as I am about getting rid of them. So you can keep trying. Jennifer Chen, 158. Jeanette Lee at 152 would be the answer to whoever ans uh, asked the question about the ladies' high run. Uh, it was 126 on the Predator. Currently, the high run on this table sitting at 170. Patrick says, uh, is the Mr. 626 in the viewer advantage a brand new unplayed cue? It is. It is the wrapless version with an 11.8 Revo, comes with the extension as well. And uh, if you do win that cue and you want uh, John to sign that, I can certainly make that happen. Little bit of a cluster here that eight, six, ten, seven, fourteen ball. He could snag that right now if he wanted to with the twelve ball. Twelve to that side pocket. Looks like he wants to kinda nudge. He's gonna take the th gonna have to take the three ball next. Does the eight ball go? I guess it must. 10-8 combo is, I believe, wired up, but he didn't like it. Went to the other side. Uh, have we switched the balls out? Not yet, I don't believe. Uh, record right now, Dominic is 714 by Jason Shaw. It was prior 626 by John Schmidt himself. Share where we can pay, please. That's just on our website, cslipl.com, and just click shop when you get on, uh, on when you get onto the website. Just click shop; it'll be the first one that you see there. No restrictions on the number of tickets you can buy. Um, if you're in Canada, you can also e-transfer that. QSportsLive at gmail.com. Just keep in mind it is 20 US.
believe he's trying to go into this 7-10, hopefully kind of off the top side of the 7, which would develop the 7 as a break ball. Goes into the underside. Curious to see what his breakout ball here is going to be. I haven't seen him play this pattern. Is it going to be the three ball? I think that's what he's looking at. Or does he use the 10? 10 seems a little deep to me. Oh, I see what he's doing. Seven ball, take the three to the side pocket and nudge the 12 ball. I think. He just said that might be the best shot I've ever played. What a shot that was. Puts the 12 ball into that break spot. Take this 10 ball. Go underneath the 12 for the 7 into that side pocket. And just roll up. Wow, he is, he is feeling it. Nice little float. Might have to twist this just a touch. And instead goes forward straight through it. Very nice. We're rolling now, guys. The one four zero. Oh. Oh, of course, Rod. I mean, there's as much as there's the physicality behind it. And I mean, John's put in uh, a couple of big days already. Uh, day one, day two on the on the Predator table, uh, which was I mean, that's a challenging table. Four and a quarter inch pockets are no joke trying to play straight pool. But uh, looks like John's got something to say. Let me hold on one second. Hold on one second. There you go. Now you can. This table is not, you know, as big a pockets as the world record was set on and that's fine it's a little smaller but i'll tell you what this table plays better than the one i ran 626 on it's a bummer i only got four days because i've been dogging a little bit but i feel like i got a number in me on this table because it plays really level the rail speeds right the ball, and you put the template what a i don't know maybe i'll get lucky and do something but i just like this table better wow that is saying something guys likes this table better than the 626 table I like it, I like mentally where he's at, but uh, Rod, you're 100% correct. So as I was saying, uh, the physicality behind walking around the table and uh, it's just continual shot after shot after shot, the mental side also has to be a factor. But the fact that he just come over and said, man, I like this table, the way it rolls, it's dead nut level, playing really well, super slidey cloth. Um, I love where he's at mentally. Oh, those didn't split apart too, too well in the middle. The 7492, I believe that's the 14 sitting in there. Got a little bit of a slide there on that uh, on that cue ball. Slid a little closer to that 11 than I think what he wanted. Kind of wanted that angle on the 10, I believe, to go into the back of that pack. <laughs> Hans is saying, no, this is not a hard game. Anybody can do this. I would agree with you, Quentin. That, that is, quite honestly, it's a very thankless job. The same as refing. Um, been a ref for 16 or 17 years. 
Um, and it really is, you know, it, it is a thankless job. So hats off to, uh, to Kevin for stepping up and saying, hey, I got gotcha. you. But a huge thank you to, uh, to Kevin. Brandon says he's got access to the table. Shaw broke the record on. Love to play on it, no doubt. Because it had, uh, as John alluded to, it had bigger pockets than what this one does. Thought he had a month to break the 714. That's kind of originally how we were planning on it. We were supposed to have at least two and a half weeks, uh, maybe two at the short end. Uh, for John, but uh, again, the uh, the logistical issues in getting these tables in the building was uh, was tough. That was a challenge. I actually didn't think we were going to be able to to get the the predator table here in time, but um, we were able to to finally get it done, get them in. Um, we took our time on on getting them level. They are sitting on carpet, as you can see, and uh, we really wanted those to sink into the carpet nicely. Wow, what a nice force shot there. Got maybe a little bit too far though. Had to force the uh, force the angle. But needless to say, we did get it done. And uh, you know, he uh, put on two days yesterday on the Predator table. Today he is on obviously the gold crown. What a shot. <laughs> That was a good shot, no doubt. Uh, yes, John has played on the uh, on the Moscone Cup. Played with uh, Johnny Archer, Earl Strickland, Corey Duell. Uh, who was the fifth? Was it was it Rod Morris? Rodney Morris. Fourteen ball, I believe that is, for the break ball. Uh, email for the Q Mason Q Sports Live at gmail.com. Yeah, I can certainly post it on the comments. I'll tell you, we're heating up. We're heating up. Sorry for my lack of commenting here, guys. Just typing out this email. He actually said to uh, so the comment on uh, on Facebook that shot shot in the last rack is now the second best shot he's ever hit. He just said, nope, that's the best. Best shot he's ever hit right there. <laughs> Dave, 
Dave says, really, when you think about it, this is an easy game. All you have to do is not miss at least 714 times in a row. Yep, that's it. Nothing to it but to do it, as they say. But truly, this is uh, this is a really, really difficult game. I mean, if it was easy, you'd see everybody doing it, everybody having the runs. But, um, you know, the kind of skill that, that John's putting on, uh, you know, the top players, top pro players, on, uh, you know, in the world, they can get up to about the 300. There's maybe five or six of those guys that could get beyond that, like John, Jason, um, you know, top six in the world are gonna hit that five, six, 700 range. And what Jason did was just, it was truly unbelievable. <laughs> His best shots keep getting bester. You got it. This game is very hard. Yeah, and Quentin, you nailed it, right? Getting that break ball, not only in the right spot, but getting yourself into position to break them well. I mean, the level of skill is just crazy. And I see our YouTube friend is back once again. He's quick, but I'm quicker. Is that the infamous silicone-soaked rag? Well, I can verify that's just a cloth. Nothing on it. Well, they would, Colin. <laughs> if it was easy, everybody would have them. But it ain't easy. This game is uh, incredibly difficult. It's just when, when you're watching these guys make these runs, they make it look so easy. It, I mean, even myself, right? I'm sitting here and I've watched John over the last two and a half days and I'm inspired. I want to try this, right? And I don't, I don't play as well as he does. I'm not even close. A one six eight. We're getting up to a new high run. <laughs> this guy needs a girlfriend. He's married, Chris. Any idea of Dennis or Colo's high run? I would suspect Dennis is going to be one of those guys that gets into the 300s, 3 400s. Uh, we had a mic'd up skip uh, for the first couple of days. What happened there? Sorry, Skip, uh, we did have him mic'd up for the first couple of days, and uh, while he's on his world run attempts, um, he said he doesn't mind miking up for the first little bit, um, but if he got into a higher run like he's at now, then he'd take it off, and I just didn't want to break his rhythm just to remove a mic, and so we decided, you know what, we, uh, we'll just leave the mic off for now and, uh, you know, see what we can, uh, what we can put up on the board. Wow, this guy's relentless on YouTube.
but I'm more relentless. You can keep trying. I don't know if that's a bot or somebody posting all that stuff, but you can keep trying. My my block button works for days. He sure is relentless on YouTube, though. Also with the chatbots, you can set your channel that people have to subscribe to comment. Well, there's a good idea. That might work. <laughs> you guys heard that? Did he just say, I hit that like I've got Tourette's? Wow, I can't believe y'all heard that. We haven't seen we haven't seen John's high gear. Oh, I agree. I think uh, I think we're going to see it in the next couple of days, if not today. All right, he's hitting them well today. And once again, guys, if you are just tuning in, this is day one of John's attempt at the world record for straight pool. We are playing at the Leather Pocket in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. He's playing on a gold crown table, put uh, two days in on the Predator table. Predator table having four and one quarter inch pockets we knew that uh, he probably wasn't going to get close at threatening the record at four and a quarter inch pockets. So um, he put on a couple of days worth of uh, worth of insight into what it's like to play straight pool. And of course, we got to give big shouts out not only to John but uh, everybody that had uh, a hand in making this happen. Um, the pool table a doctor that is Lou Cyril. Cyril? Not sure how to pronounce it. He did tell me, but I forgot how. Uh, the winning stroke. They were the ones that supplied the predator, predator table. And then Martin Kayali. And of course, the pool room itself, the leather pocket. Jeff Wanless helping set tables up, building the predator table. Never mind just helping set it up. Yeah, you got to respect it, John. Uh, John Allen making a comment uh, on Facebook. I like his grit. Going back after his record, indeed, right? It uh, it can't be easy, that's for sure. You break a uh, a 65 year record, and I think you know there's uh, there's a lot out there that say, oh yeah, it only took Jason three years to beat it. Um, my comment back is uh, John broke a 65 year record, and. Uh, I don't know that Jason would have made the run at it had he not done it. Kind of brought uh, straight pull back at the forefront. So, you know, you got to give a lot of credit to him. Nice shot there. Posted a link on Facebook on how to block YouTube bots. Perfect. Thanks, Mark. Maybe you can send that to me. One, eight, two, new high run. 
and looking good. A little bit of complications with that 6-13 uh, 8 ball. I think that's 13 ball. Nope, 15 ball. Pete Robertson, my man, tuning back in Adelaide, Australia. How are you, sir? Great to have you back on the stream. And once again, guys, if you are just tuning in, help us out. Hit that share button. John making a a run at the record. Gets a little bit unlucky here. He's treetopped. A little bit unlucky for that cue ball to kind of stick right where the six is. Gets a little bit treetopped. I don't think he's got a choice but to try to take the one. The problem with the one is it brings in that side pocket. He does have the two. Thin it. Thin it to win it. <laughs> His best shot just got bested again. And we're always doing well, Pete. Good to have you back on. It's been a minute since I've seen you on. Well, for those that don't know, John did string, and I don't know if Felicity is uh, is in watching, um, but he did put together a string where if you took out one scratch, it wasn't a miss shot. So he put, to, uh, put a run together, scratched in his next run if he wouldn't have scratched there those two runs equal over a thousand balls so he pocketed a thousand balls without missing so it's definitely possible just got to avoid that scratch a one nine six now we're getting somewhere guys help us out hit that share button Things are starting to heat up. No, I agree with you, Clark. Really, that's uh, that was kind of a John Schmidt taking on that, that challenge of beating a 65-year-old record. And I'll tell you what. You got to give him credit and kudos for doing that because it, uh, in my opinion, kind of uh, put straight pull back on, on the map. And uh, that's what I think Jason was going after. So a 65 year record and yes, no, no qualms about it. No, no issues. Shaw then broke it again uh, three years later. Kudos to him. What he did was phenomenal, almost inhuman, but you can't take away the fact that John uh, John broke a 65-year record. 65 years. What other sport has a record that holds for 65 years? Unbelievable. Not many, right? Not many. I don't know if there is. Because most sports evolve. Players get better. Equipment gets stronger, right? Mm -hmm. What happened here? Is he, he's got the oh, six. He's, he's the okay. Six, he's actually. okay. Tell me he's got the six. Tell me he's got the six. Oh, no, does he not have it? If he doesn't have the six, he doesn't have the four. I'm, like, looking almost down the barrel of it. Oh, my God, he got a bad oh. roll there. No way. He's on, like, 198. He's, like, two balls away from 200. Oh, that's a terrible roll. Oh, you never know. He might be able to find something here. He, he's not going to quit on it, that's for sure. Oh, it got stuck in the donuts. You live and, you live live and, and die. die. Where's Raymond? Is he still in the YouTube? <laughs> he is. He's rolling over right now. He, yeah, he, he sure can't is. believe it. He sure is. That's, that's so unlucky right there. Does he have the four? Come on, tell me he can make this. He's got to go rail first. Tell me he can make it. Oh, God. A 198. 198, yeah. He made the break he, ball and one other ball, right? He tickled it. He tickled that 200. 
Uh, what's there? 199. What's there? 3? 199. 6. 9, 12. I'm trying to see how many balls are missing. I think it's 199. I think he made the break ball and a ball with the break ball. Two. So 199, I think. 3, 6, 9. How many balls are missing there? 12. Two? No, he just put he put three in. Okay, yeah, 199 then. That's disgusting as that is. 199. Yeah, that was uglier than my first marriage right there. But seriously, though, this table, I'm encouraged. That was a good out. so great yeah. that I think I could run 66. Yeah. It plays better than the Rebco I did on. The Rebco had, like, these big leather liners and little skinny rails, like a home table. Oh, yeah, do it. Let's see it. You see what happened? I got hooked there. Yeah. I'm, like, frozen in the donuts. In the donuts, yeah. But he can do it. He yeah, ran a he one can, nine man. nine. Yep. He can he can run. Well, he no, he man. just said he believes now. Yeah, he just the said. The belief is there. That is so key. He just said he's like, I think I can run. Like this is like better than what I ran the six two six on. For him to say that That's huge. I think we're gonna see some massive, massive numbers. It's Martin K. Ellie out there right now, the owner of this table. He's right? gotta be just he's licking his chops, pink. thinking, "Oh my God, he's got it. He can do it." <laughs> he said that was uglier than my first marriage. He sure did. <laughs> he's got so many of those one-liners. I, you know, if you don't know John, um, I've gotten to know him really, really well. And uh, obviously, Damien knows him even better than I do. But, I mean, he is as funny and witty as they come. The guy is, <laughs> he's, he's super hilarious. Well... Back to the start, but let's see what yeah, he can do back again. Back to the beginning. I'm going to uh, jump off here for just a quick couple of minutes. Absolutely. And I'll be right back. <laughs> Uglier than his first marriage. DiMaggio's 56 game hit streak, 1941. That's an old record for sure. There's only a handful of those records that are that old in any sport or game. Pretty incredible what John's done in this game. Anytime you can beat a 65 year record, you're doing something right. <laughs> yeah, and what Ron says on the YouTube there, hit the like button. And Martin Kelly is out there, I knew it. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, him and Jerry McWhorter, they're pretty funny too. <laughs> As a tag team with Ben Francis, you can take him in the witty department. <laughs> uh, he just said, he's like, it's got 300 written all over it, this table. And what that means is if he strings a couple of 300s together, we're going to see something special in these next four days. Make sure you guys are sharing that stream lots clicking that like button and comment along a big shout out to beamer three hours in three hours 20 minutes in beamer up there racking for him kevin beamer beavis thankless job that racking he's doing a, he's doing a great job of it We got a, a few fans in the house watching, but if anybody's in the area, feel free to come down, check out Leather Pocket. Great food, cold drinks, good friends. We got some hockey on tonight, some specials for the Flames game. How can we reward Kevin? Right, Patrick? We'll make sure we do something for Kevin. I'm sure John is all over it too, you know. You always got to... You gotta buy the guy dinner or something, right? Yeah, it's a free live training video, Jason. You're right. You're welcome, and thank you for tuning in and everyone else. <laughs> Let's 
Let's go. I think he's he's gonna put up some big numbers. It's not gonna happen all at once, you know. He might miss a ball here and there, but he's got four days to do this. I think he can put up some big numbers here. It's gonna be about making these kind of shots here and there too. He has to come with it. It's not always gonna be super easy, you know. He can come with it with the best of them. And then he was in dead punch the last couple of days. He's hitting the ball straight as ever. Like, look at that shot. Just fires it. So where's his break ball here? Is it one of the balls on the end rail? Yeah, interview tonight as well. If anybody wants to tune into that. Be on dogging it with Molina Mike and Joey Ryan, I believe. That should be fun time. Anytime you get John on the mic, he's pretty funny. Just uh, the open lanes for the next shots. Yeah, you're right, Jason. He does just he just nudges balls around so good. He's so calculated. There's the one a good break ball here. It's hard to tell at first how close it was, but looking at the table itself, outside of the camera, it looks not bad. Not least of his worries now, he's pretty straight on this ball. This is where, watch this little shot. What a shot that is. How'd he hit that one, folks? To create that angle is unreal. Unreal. <laughs> uh, Scott, good question. How many hours did it take for the 626? I think about three. I, th I think it might be a little over three, something like that. Three hours, 45, somewhere in that range. Let's say three to four hours. And Pete. Robertson, what's up, buddy? He wants to know how many hours per day John will play. He's he's thinking around noon to six every day, Mountain Standard Time. Yeah, everybody wants to see that shot again. He landed, you know, when you land straight in, Grant, like near the end rail, and you jack up like this and create the angle. He did it. <laughs> he did wow. it. The third last ball. And he, and he created a whole bunch of angle. Unreal. And now he's still shooting when we thought maybe the run might be over because he landed pretty straight. Well, that's how you keep it going. Yeah, and he bumped the break ball a little to a more <laughs> adva advantageous spot. Of yeah. course he did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Patrick wants to see the Q-tip position in a graphic with that shot again too, but... <laughs> It's like hit straight down on the ball. <laughs> 90 degree Q angle. I was just telling them about the interview too, so. Good timing on that. Good timing. I got it right. It will be on dogging it, right? It will be. Okay, perfect. Yes. Those guys keep me guessing all the time. Like, will it be on Windows Open mm -hmm. or will it be on Pool Player Podcast? They just want you to follow all of them, right? That's right. <laughs> Maybe we could adopt that. Sometimes it'll be on Q Sports Live. Sometimes it'll be on. I've already got something it. else. Yep, <laughs> I already know it. Keep them guessing. Look at this guy moving balls around to perfection. Five balls in a prime break ball spot. He'd love to clear the side rail there, but he landed pretty straight in on this too. So he's gonna have to. Take a little distance on the nine next through that little gap. Yeah, David's asking how big the pockets are. Corner pockets are just over five inches. Just oh, sorry, under. just under. Just under five inches, and the side pockets are just over five inches. So a little bit smaller than what uh, what Jason had, but I don't know if you guys can hear when John says he loves this table. It's playing so good. He actually came over and said uh, that he likes this table better than uh, the one that he ran the 626 on. He's ready for some big oh, numbers. Yeah, he is. Yes, he is. What's he got here, though? 
Combo. He's got him uh, maybe the seven ball bank. Yeah. Mm, the bankage. This guy banks with the best of them. Slides it in. Yeah. He sure does. That's a good shot. A little sloppy, he says, but that's okay. Yeah, most he ran today, 199. And got so unlucky. Mm -hmm. Cue ball got froze between two balls, and he got dogged by the donut. Yeah, yeah, he got jammed in there. Looking good here. He sure is. Pretty much back to where he's at now. This will be for 42. So he's getting getting back. Did, does he have angle? I don't think he really does. Let's see if we can see whether he has angle. Oh. It's a little bit flat. But he's pretty good at this he, kind of he stuff. Can, yeah, he can create some angle, though. He's pretty good at kind of chipping a little corner out, too, and knowing exactly where the balls go. For sure. Playing shape, right? For sure. And real quick, guys, if you haven't done so, make sure you get on it, dogging it. Joey Ryan, Molina Mike, that will be where that interview goes on tonight. That'll be myself and John Schmidt. Is it with Joey and Mike? Uh, I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not sure. Hey, you're welcome, David. Oh, yeah. Look oh, at that. yeah. No problem. Just hammers that ball. He turns no angle into a ton of angle. <laughs> and... And plays a bunch of balls into the open. Like, he got a ton of movement oh, out of that did rack. He ever. From zero angle. Right? Hats off to uh, to Kevin there. Good on the rack. Absolutely. And Raymond might be second-guessing himself now. <laughs> Maybe the donuts are working. Well, I mean, I, you know, you live by the sword, you die by the sword, right? Mm -hmm. And got a little unfortunate that... Uh, it got stuck in that donut, but, you know, that's what helps spread those balls apart when you're uh, when you're on the break that's right I wonder what Efren's high run is I don't think this is a game that Efren's played very much of he's definitely played it a little bit but I would have to guess it's in the 200s certainly his focus was on other games in the peak of his career he was well, I'll making tell you. a lot of money that boy when we were in New York, uh, Ira Lee took me around, showed me the carom room. Mm -hmm. And uh, when there's big tournaments that go on in New York, in that carom room, when they're not playing on the regular tables, every one of them, Shane, Efren, Jay, all those guys, all go to the carom tables. Mm -hmm. And uh, Efren's made that his second home when he goes there to he New was York. He was playing in a big tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, he he made final four or something last weekend, I think, mm -hmm. only like a few days ago. Mm -hmm. Final four, final eight, something like that. And and it was like the talk of the tournament, you know, because yeah. it was like Efren's, Efren's here, <laughs> Efren's here. But he played really good, you know, and yeah. he's not even supposed to beat those guys. They're, they're way better. But he can figure it out, you know. It shows he's such a genius mind of the game. Yeah, the Karam Cafe, you nailed it, Raymond. What, what's he got here? He's got the nine ball as the break Take ball. Take the one ball for the six. Yeah, I think he's he's got to shoot the six after because he's got to deal with the oh, four. Come eight. all the way down for, oh, is it the 15 okay. ball? Yeah, and then go into the back of the pack there. Try and nudge that eight ball maybe. Yeah, he's definitely going into them now. So the six is his break ball? I think so. He's shaking his head like what, what Well, he doesn't there? like shooting over top. I mean, the eight ball's a shot, but he's, you know, kind of hampered a little bit by uh, by the four ball. He could cut the four. He's close enough to the ball. And he's shooting it lefty. Of course he's shooting it lefty. Yeah, that would be easy, and he held the cue ball nicely. Like, like a hanger. Unreal. I mean, he was close to the ball, so sometimes it's easier to see the angle. Like, see the edge of the ball. Pretty good. 
That is just not something in my repertoire is to uh, switch hit like that. Oh, there you go. Yeah, third at the at the Sea Games in Karim is what Efren got there. Mm -hmm. Nice. <laughs> Good luck, Patrick Neal. <laughs> he ran 888, but I guess he was <laughs> Yeah, we're saving it for later. That's right. <laughs> he wasn't satisfied because it wasn't a thousand. <laughs> That's a great shot right there. Nice. Four racks, 56. Back on track, 25% of the way there to the 200 mark, which is definitely what he's got his eye on today now. Yeah, Steph says exactly where I was going. The arena billiard light, you certainly appreciate what it does, especially on the production side, even on the playing side. When you're down underneath that uh, arena light, you don't get the shadows like, uh, like you see here and the washout like you see here. That arena light is amazing. We will have availability on those. We may look at doing a pre-sale. So if you are interested in getting one of the arena lights, the Predator arena lights, send us a message either on our Facebook page or you can send an email to sales at qsportslive.com. So here you go, Raymond. They hand racked them in the donuts because they had to the break ball so close you couldn't fit the triangle in so let's well, see if let's this see. works better see if it makes a difference nope. oh they got some decent movement there that's okay he did but they kind of split and came back in together yeah he'll be thrilled with this though he got plenty plenty enough movement oh yeah know? there's uh there's things to be done here two ball break into the pack again yeah, and he's got some 11 insurance as an balls insurance over the side, too, as well. Five, yeah. yeah. So he'll just chip these away. He'll probably shoot the three right now. Gets the extension, yeah. So he's going to shoot the three and, and nudge into those balls again, and that should be it. So it's it's fun to watch straight pool because it's like 10 balls tied up. He plays two breakouts, and now everything goes. Right? Ooh, that's Those went to a funny spot, but they sure did. Workable. Yeah, he's, he's got the seven into the side, the five into the corner, eleven ball. He's got options. Oh yeah. He can he can come back around and nudge those balls again, no problem. <laughs> Someone needs to invent a tip cam. Well, and I think as we uh, as we kind of progress through this, um, now that we have that predator table with the arena light at our location mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna see if I can get one of the spines that mm -hmm. run on top and we'll have the top-down view all the time that's right that'll be nice that'll be real nice extra views are always good he's got the five here he's not in he's love with got that the shot. ten ball too he might be able to power through that oh he does have the gap. yeah and just uh, just kind of crash into that 12 9 like he's looking does he even need to crash in? Maybe there's a little room underneath there. Just nudge it a little bit. Yeah, good shot. Good yeah. shot. Good control there. I love how he's moving balls, but when he moves them, he knows exactly where they're going mm -hmm. and what ball he's on after. It's not like... I'll tell you what, his, his tangent line knowledge mm -hmm. and how to cheat that one way or the other mm -hmm. is off the charts. That's good. right. That's right. And he's like in dead stroke after the last two days of playing on the tight pockets. Mm -hmm. This looks like shooting fish in a barrel, you know? Right. I'm telling you, if I was, if I was to try to play this game under these conditions, I don't care. Put, even put me on the gold crown. I'm telling you, I'd miss more than Shaquille O'Neal at the free throw line. <laughs> let me tell you. Well, it's super slick out there right now. It is so slick. Yeah, I and would lose the cue ball a lot. I'm telling you, you just don't get to gain an appreciation of really how difficult the game is because right. he makes it look so easy. I would be losing the cue ball every third shot. Yeah. You know, it's really hard to keep it under control. But he makes it look so easy. Yeah, he's right? like one, two strokes, and he and figures it out. Yeah, right? like, I mean... 
He's shooting these things faster than Jackie Chan in a fight scene. Yeah, he's hitting them real good. Five racks is 70. He's rolling again. Here we go. Got another noteworthy run going here. Right? I think we'll post anytime he gets over 200 balls. Oh, I agree. We'll post on Q Sports Live. Tune in. 200 ball plus run. Let's go. Yeah, Beamer's doing a great job out oh, there. He's, he's doing really, awesome. He's really checking. And, and he originally said, well, I got a couple hours. And he's been at it for three and a half hours now. And he's doing great. Look how the balls are spreading. That's exactly what you want to yeah, see. That's what you want to see for sure. Yeah, he's potting them balls quick. And I'll tell you, when he starts really getting into his groove, I mean, it's it's almost like he runs around the table, right? So he's really running a marathon while playing pool. That's mm -hmm. that's what's really going on. That's right. There's a lot of stamina involved in these runs your legs have to be very strong your core has to be very strong well from what john was telling me this morning they've actually put a measuring device and i can't remember who he said but the average pool player walks one mile an hour one mile an hour one mile for every hour that you play pool that's pretty good right and so when he's putting in five, six hours straight, he's walking five or six miles yeah. while playing pool. A day. Yeah. Every day. Every day. That's crazy. That's a lot of mileage. A lot of miles on those boots he got on. Yeah, definitely super tough. I actually thought of a new aspect too when Ben just came over, but also when I came back in. Like, so you're just in this pool room, you know? Yeah. And there's, like, stuff going on. Guy walks in the door, dingling, uh, bell mm -hmm. goes off. Waitress is serving somebody over there. Well, there was one already. I, that... I come back over, right? <laughs> and I'm thinking, I know John said he's unsharkable, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm probably going to catch his eye more being yes. that he knows, oh, okay, Ben's come back to sit and do commentary. Yep. Like, just that one little thought. Yes can totally ruin mm -hmm. a gigantic run. Absolutely. And I was like terrified trying to walk back over here. <laughs> trying to run quick in between racks, right? Well, I try to wait until he's not looking that direction That's before right. I walk in. But um, there was one shot that he played today already where it was down just like that. And just before he pulls the trigger, somebody over here breaks. And it was a concussion break. Yeah. Right? And yeah. I was like, oh, no. Yeah, I can't believe, like, you have to have laser beam focus in order to overcome that stuff. That is not easily done. So there's a ton of aspects that go into mm -hmm. trying to put these kind of numbers up. Like, yeah. it's not just out there potting balls. Just trying to stay focused for that long is a monumental task. Oh, it's unreal. And our ghost players would really know. Of course. Because they've, they've been there, the table. right? And if you've tried to play your Ghost League match in a pool hall, it's a little tough, mm -hmm. right? Yep. You got somebody over there, like you said, breaking like King Kong, and you're down on a ball, and it's like there's no turning back, right? I, I agree. So I think that's another part of the reason where you do have to play this very quick. Yeah. This kind of high run style well, straight pool. It's something that he was quick. talking about, right? Is yeah. the fact that when he's playing straight pool, you have to be quick, mm -hmm. right? Which is why you want somebody racking for you. You don't want, you know, oil and stuff from your hands to get on the balls. That's mm -hmm. why he's wearing the gloves. But, um, you know, it, there's so many little tiny things mm -hmm. that going, go into making a high run in straight pool even remotely possible. That's right. So many factors, so yeah. many factors. Even just right down to the chalk, which I thought was the craziest thing. Down to the chalk, yeah. Because it's like, you can clean the cue ball, but how often are you gonna clean all the object balls and you just can't risk having a skid at any point oh, during these runs? How terrible would that right? be, hey? You'll throw your chalk across the room if that mm -hmm. happens. So the town chalk is very, very 
necessary mm -hmm. for these high runs. Yeah. Uh, the arena lights, how are they shipped? In a convenient little box. They are. They come in uh, kind of a longer box, about nine, nine feet. No, I don't think it was quite that long. Well, I think it has to be because they're a nine, nine foot light. Well, they're two pieces though, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, it was only right. about uh, right. five foot. Yeah, about five foot. Yeah, about a five yeah. foot by yeah. uh, one foot cubed. Yeah. Five foot long by one high, one wide. Yeah. It's about like that. Um, I will say this though, if you're putting it together by yourself, be very careful. Um, the edges of where you have to put those lights together are extremely sharp, mm. as I came to find you out. You guys found out. Yeah, um, yeah I, <laughs> I cut myself real well. Yeah. Somebody had to learn it. <laughs> but now all our viewers don't now, have to learn. Now you don't have to learn the hard way. Grant learned it the I hard learned way it, for them. I learned it for y'all. I took one for the team there. Yeah, and Roy, you nailed it. This is a extremely good practice game for any player. I could make a gigantic list of reasons why this game is just so good for focus. Yeah. What a practice routine for all standard of players. That's kind of what I was just saying, yeah. right? Yeah, 100%. His cue ball control is just ridiculous. Right, and even on those power draw shots, mm -hmm. it, like, he's, he's just sick. He's inhuman. Buttery. And I mean, you can tell mentally he is so in this right now. You know what I mean? Yeah, you can definitely tell he's feeling it a little, you know? Yeah. And I think he's actually getting excited about this run. Yeah, because as soon as he came over and was talking to me about the table on the side, I was like, oh, he's hyped for this too, you know? He's ready to go. And this is only day one of four. Right? He's got four days at this. You see how that he takes like... a little tight. Yeah, but extra angle is okay. Oh, look at how, look at how steep. All he has to do is pot it though. And he knows that. And it's a big pocket. And, and we did talk about the shot. Like, he can overcut it a little even. I'll tell you what. These are the shots I struggle with. Back cut to the blind pocket. 98, too. He's on seven oh, racks. Yeah, 98. No doubt. So that, that's a factor because you want the 100, you know? And all you got to do is make this break shot, and you got it because you're going to get another shot after if you make this break shot. Mm -hmm. No way you're getting stuck or anything like that. Yeah. James is asking, are they easy to assemble? Are they LED? I didn't see them on your website. Don't have them on the website yet. I'm still waiting on uh, on what our pricing is going to be, but we will have them. Um, and yes, they're they're not terrible to to really put together. Oh, what a shot! Right, like what I said, you, you just have to be careful of those corners where they 45'd off the aluminum. It's the aluminum housing that all of the LEDs sit in. Those corners where they cut the corners out, they're sharp. Maybe, maybe that's something because you have the ear of of the manufacturer I a do, little bit too. Yeah, I do. It's so maybe something you can get them to look at too, to show them your finger and say, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> a space? <laughs> I got you, brother. There you go. I think put a space <laughs> at the front of it too, at the front and of the H. Kick it over. Yeah, and it'll kick it over, maybe even two spaces. Oh, yeah, there we go. Ah, there we go. That, there you go. You're, you're right up Grant's alley right Oh, yeah, you're totally, you're in my head. I'm surprised he didn't notice that. <laughs> I did, but I thought you did it for a specific reason, and I was no. just biting my tongue. And, just to fit it in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just to fit it in. I forgot you could put a space at the front, too, to, to shove it over a little. Uh, what shaft and tip does he use, Scott? He uses the Mr. 626Q made by Predator, 12.4 Revo. Victory Soft. Victory Soft, yep. As well as we mentioned before, he says the town chalk is very necessary for this. Yep. For these high runs. 
And Clark actually brings up a good point here. Six hours straight in Calgary is like eight to nine below sea level because we are very high altitude mm -hmm. here. So, yeah. There, well, there's people who come and train here just because of the high altitude. Mm -hmm. It's a good, good place to train. Yeah. And it, I mean, a good point as well, Wayne, when you're that accurate with that kind of control at that kind of pace, it's just, it's unreal. It really is. Yeah, and all the things that need to go through your head on some of these shots. Oh, yeah. It's pretty amazing that he can calculate them all that quick. Yeah. <laughs> that shows you how much he's played, mm -hmm. right? Well, and that, that touch that he has on the cue ball. So this is what I'm noticing in, in straight pool is it's those short little chop strokes, which for me, having the shape that I have is just going to annihilate me. But to be able to play them with as accurate of control as mm -hmm. what he hits that ball mm -hmm. with, I mean, it's Unreal. just next level stuff. So, I mean, you've got to love and appreciate what John's doing here. And I've said it a couple of times. I haven't said it enough. If you appreciate what it is he's doing, we have started a GoFundMe page for John. Mm -hmm. um, and if you appreciate him, you know, doing what he's doing, we're not taking a cut. That all goes to John and uh you know show him some love on that uh on that page on his gofundme nice report that guy get him yeah i was almost quick enough now everybody just needs to comment on the youtube and shuffle that one up right. the top and there then go. away we go right there we go <laughs> nice out there eight racks one one hundred and twelve let's go now we're moving he made a really good break shot last time too super super thin mm -hmm. so this one walk in the park yep this is a great cool q shot. says i like this view this is a nice view it is in but some I think, ways. I think because, I mean, on the break shot, I love this view. Yeah, for sure. Once he breaks, then I like the other other view because it's kind of more clustered towards the, the yeah. left-hand side of the table anyway. I, I totally agree. Like, in straight pool, a good view would almost be, like, cut it off at the break at the, line. Yeah. We don't even need to see the, right? the other corners, right? Yeah. How often do you shoot them? You could just pan over there once every 10 racks. <laughs> All right change he used my move he what he changed his glove but he called it something nice. else <laughs> but i like that move right your hand gets like you know a little clammy and sweaty and just have a spare glove yeah right Perfect. commentators what are your high runs mine is, i just played my first game yesterday so my high run is 14 and let me tell you on this super slick table 14 is pretty good for your very first very ever first yeah. attempt was yesterday. And ben you, is and Ben's, just Ben's had, got a good number. He had a little funny break ball and a little funny last yeah. like ending. Yeah. But my high runs a hundred and six. Only recently it was eighty six for a long time. I was stuck at eighty six. Yeah, you got uh, over a hundred now. One hundred and six on the nine yeah. foot. I don't really count the seven foot one, but it's one hundred and forty nine. If anybody wants to know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who showed John how to play way back? Ah, uh, gosh. Uh, he mentioned that on day one. We had a question from one of the viewers while he was mic'd up. Yeah, not who showed him, but yeah, it was who was his... Uh, inspiration. Inspiration, yeah. And Damien says his uh, high run's 98. I'm assuming that is on a diamond four and a quarter Yeah, the, probably his home table, yeah. yeah. Which is super super tough that's where my 106 is and it took me forever yeah. <laughs> and i guarantee i play way more than damien because <laughs> he's running a, a that tougher was it. business that's it thanks glenn bobby hunter bobby hunter yeah these guys they listen dave harding he's a, he's a listener Add a small, quiet motor to move it up and down the table. He gets some accident. Yeah, move, like like a football game. It's yeah, on a little right. zip line. Yeah, a little, <laughs> little zip line here and there. But I think with with how we have the 
the function and capability of the program that we have allows us to more or less give you that same effect. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to do it while he's shooting. I can kind of give you an example of that um, once he's done shooting, but uh, we kind of have that capability built in where we could do it. Nice little nudge there. Mm -hmm. Very good shot. But uh, I'm just excited to get that top-down view. I think it's I think it's a great view of uh, of billiards and and pool in general. Absolutely. Uh, Mitch Map Attack, great stream, guys. Free lessons. Thanks for this. You're more than welcome. Again, right? Ben and I feel the same way. I mean, you know, we can put up all the cameras that we want and have all the quality that we want. Um, you know, do great on the commentary side, but without you guys tuning in, it really doesn't mean a whole lot. 100%. I like James' question on uh, YouTube there. He's saying what we're all thinking. Oh, yeah, there's definitely going to be a rematch. I talked to Damien about that already. All right. There, uh, and and Damien, I hope you don't mind, but I'm going to kind of put it out there um, that uh, Damien asked us if we would be willing to go down as Q Sports Live to Spokane mm. and, uh, and stream that. Oh, well, we're due for a trip, you know, right? too. Like just hang well, out for a bit, maybe. No, wait a too, minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's roll. Let's let's roll that back up a little bit. It's gonna be a while. You <laughs> are definitely due for a trip. No, well, you I, had you had a vacation too, I guess. Yeah, I, I forgot about New York. <laughs> I I am tripped out. Yeah, I have been uh, a lot of different watch places him, already. Watch this him year. nudge this twelve. Watch him nudge the twelve to a perfect break position. Watch the control. Oh yeah, no doubt. Look at the control. He just nudges it to perfect. a perfect spot. That's how you run a lot of balls, folks. David said, is, uh, also, Bobby uh, is a former straight pool world champ. Uh, mm -hmm. Makes an awesome cue. Yeah. yeah. Somewhere near Chicago he is. Bobby Hunter. Got to go. Cue ball. Yeah, he's there. It's yeah. all right. It's a little flat, I think. One, two, Let's six, have a look. nine racks. Let's have a look. It looks Isn't that bad. so true, Mark? Hey. Yeah, he makes a hundred look so easy. Yeah. If you guys weren't tuned in earlier when he ran the one seventy, he like made a mistake and he was so upset, you know. And we were laughing because it's like, can you imagine? You run over a hundred balls and you're upset, right? <laughs> I think part of that's the cloth. So I got to give the uh, give the shout out to uh, Predator for the Arcadia cloth. Um, I'll tell you what, it's it's playing fantastic. The table's playing great. This, even though it is a gold crown, it is the Predator Arcadia cloth that is uh, on this. In fact, right above that rack, you can see the Predator logo. God, this guy's quick. But we're quicker. Yeah, seems to be like they just double it up, you know. Oh, I'm going to put him in a timeout as well. And, and report him. Triple threat. Gives you all kinds of options there. There's smorgasbord of stuff that shouldn't be allowed on there. Right. Oh, and the way around it. A third-party app that catches it before they post it. Sweet. Yeah, but I'm thinking, are you kidding me? It came down to now you got to pay somebody, right, to monitor this. <laughs> Doesn't that seem like some kind of scam, you know? Right. Although there was another suggestion that if we made everybody subscribe before you can comment, it's part of the setup of the page. Oh, okay. That may also get rid of it. Oh, we're like, that's where we're really talking anyway, because you should only have... You should only be able to comment if you subscribe to the that's page. That's right. Yep. Ooh, that's something to look into for sure. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Uh, what happens if the cue ball ends up in the area of the rack for the break from previous game? You get ball in hand. <clears throat> you actually did it on purpose once. Yep, you know, and we should see it a handful of times. Brian wants to know if he still rides motorcycles. I think John still does, yeah. Look at this comment. James says, my high run was 23, but unwitnessed, 
unwitnessed unless everyone trusts my cat. Oh, everybody trusts the cat. <laughs> Gotta trust it. <laughs> oh, we're still sitting on the uh, on the front view here. Let's switch this over. Yeah, and I I really think this is a much better view. Oh, I do. We too. get to see where the break after, balls are a little yeah, better. After the break, I like this view. I'm surprised he moved the six that far. But I guess he was really wanting to be on this stripe on yeah. this rail here. Well, and I mean, if we're going to talk about subscribing, then, I mean, we may as well say what we should say. If you haven't done so already, make sure you've subscribed to both of our channels on both YouTube as well as Facebook. Uh, make sure if you're on YouTube, you click the little bell so you're notified. And if you're on, uh, on Facebook, hit like and follow. And then turn the notifications on. That way you're notified each and every time we go live. We'll be uh, heading off to Vegas come Tuesday. Mm -hmm. and we'll be bringing you all the action while in Vegas. Not only from pool, but we'll do the uh, the suds and chip party. We'll do the banquet. All kinds of fun things. Yeah, starting next Thursday. It's sneaking up pretty quick. John looking good here, real nice break ball. That 11 is in a prime spot. The two on that side of the table, I think, will be his key ball, as they like to call it. <laughs> I'm a CSL IPL player, does that count? Yeah, you're in it to win it, Brian. <laughs> Bobby's got a big wing. Yeah, he's taking in lots of players for sure. Nice. So he's going to get a little farther away than I think yeah, he's got that what he wanted, but yeah, uh, this will work. Yeah, that little touch of inside just drags him up a little closer. Ten racks, folks. Ten 140. racks. Got to love it. He be rolling again. God, he gets over 100 so quick. Right? Super easy. It's like Half an hour. Uh, Ten racks, half an hour. Glenn, you took the words right out of my mouth. It is a free pool stream protocol. Always like and share whenever you tune in. A hundred percent. On top of that, if again, guys, you're you're appreciative of what John is doing, the fact that you can come in, watch this for free. We're not charging anybody for it. Um, we have started a GoFundMe page for him, uh, help him cover his expenses while he's here. Go give him a little bit of love on that. And just search for John Schmidt. Oh, no. Oh, I hit it super weird. That's not. Let's go to this other angle. Does he have the 7-1 combo? He looked oh, at it and he man. didn't look impressed. He didn't look impressed by it. Oh, yeah, he's not thrilled. That was, I thought he hit it a little funny. Yeah. Like, not enough siding to slide off it. Maybe oh he just hit it way man. too square. Like he's trying to figure out which he's way to throw to hit the, the ball. He's trying to hit the spin, yeah. Oh, I'm going to switch over real quick. Yeah, hopefully this one will throw in, but he doesn't seem... Man, this is tough. Tough action right here. Yeah, that autofocus. Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, it's a, it's not on but for some reason keeps auto-focusing anyway. Some reason it's, yeah, it's not turning off. Yeah. So that's why we're we're leaving it on the side view for most of it, but for this shot, I think we, we almost need this view. I agree. Oh, nice, nice. It went straight in. He just knew the seven was pushing to a weird spot, and now he's gonna have a tough shot, but but I think this is well, not so he's bad. Got the, he's got the eight ball here. Yeah, I think this is not so bad with the way he's potting. Yeah, this. I don't think this is terrible. Is does, he going? What, does he have the seven too? I, or does he have the I combo down there? I, I think he's looking at the combo 15 deuce. Well, he, he's elevating like. He did call the deuce. Okay. Oh, my oh, goodness. Wow. Oh and my goodness. And just drills it. And look at this. Now he's going to play a 15-10 combo. Then he's going to play a 7-14 combo. <laughs> Unbelievable. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> James says, I love it. Even the pros use their hands to figure out which way the gears work. The cogwheel. <laughs> like Blake says, the, the cogwheel cog motion. Yeah. yeah. 
this way? Uh, this way, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's yeah, it that's is the but webcam. We've, we've unselected autofocus, the whole works. Yeah. Three in a row combos. Yeah, look, here's another one. This is uh, not three in a row, but four out of the last five shots. Might have to, uh, oh no, he's got to. He's got to find a different way. He's got. Uh, yeah, he doesn't want to shoot the nine. You he know, he doesn't. That's that's a really good break ball. And I think this four goes lots of room. He's been so oh, it squeezes it in. He's been deceived by that quite a bit. I've noticed. Mm -hmm. You should be able to turn the autofocus off. Yeah, we did that. Yeah, that's why we're sticking on this camera for most of it too. This is a much better view anyway for this game. Oh, he's found a way through this unbelievable, you know, when he when he looked like he was in big time trouble. <laughs> he managed to find his way through. You have to save it, yep. <laughs> we've, we've done all of that. Good looking out, Steph. Right? <laughs> we've turned it off, we've saved it. Wow, we've there's done everything short of smacking it with a hammer. Yeah, there's a good chance. That it has to be done maybe before the stream starts. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Always ask the boss first. <laughs> uh, sorry, just tuning in. How many hundred plus runs are we at? This is the third one of the day. Third of the day already, yeah. And, and the fourth out of three days. And he did start first two days on four and a quarter inch pockets on the brand new Predator table, so he... Oh, he had two runs there, so that's actually uh, five total. But, yeah, he spent the first two days on the four and a quarter inch pockets, which is way, way tougher than this. Mm -hmm. So you'll see today his high runs 199. And he, he got so unlucky on that 199. He run. really did. He really did. What do you do here, Ben? You take the eight and just kind of float for the 13? I think he's right to be looking at the six. I think he's correct here. It, it looks tougher on the camera than it is because the pocket is big. Oh, right? that was a nice little bump over for the eight to land there. Well, now he can shoot the 13 and the eight. Mm -hmm. And the eight's such a nice key ball. Yeah, when Jason broke the record, it was big pockets. Just bigger a, than these just ones. Just a little bit bigger than these, for sure. Mm -hmm. But John also said when he... Wow, what a closeout on that rack. When he originally broke Moscone's record, it was on a table that wasn't even quite as good as this. He likes this one a little better, he said. Yeah. How many balls is the record? Becca, that is held by Jason Shaw. 714 balls in a row. Yeah, disable autofocus. Click on the advanced setting. Yep. All <laughs> we stuff. did that. Yep. We did that. We Good did. looking out, though. <laughs> we did it. Yeah. Time to clean the balls. Yeah. Good point. Good point. I would think so. Maybe I can yell at them. Oh, let's let's wait till the next rack. Yeah. They're almost racked in now. Yeah. Because we do have two clean sets just sitting right there waiting. So, yes, you can mark and clean the cue ball occasionally, but you do need like a referee to do it. Yep. Did he miss the ball? He missed the ball. He missed the ball. Oh, uh, yeah. One, five, four. One, five, four. Grant and I were just speechless because he was perfect on that ball, you know? Yeah. He was perfect there. I was really expecting like a 200, maybe a 300 there. Mm -hmm. Is it changing the brightness automatically? I've, I've unchecked all of those. So it's not supposed to be doing anything. Yeah. No big deal, though. We're not using it much, so. Uh, hopefully... I mean, he's got three runs today over 150. 
right? <laughs> Which I know if anybody out there is listening and watching straight pool, I don't care who they are. They're pretty happy today with three runs over 150. Yeah. Yeah, pocket size means a lot. We've, oh, we've been over that does. for yeah. sure. We The four and a quarter inch Predator table that he played on at the start. I mean, he wasn't really even going to threaten the world record with uh, with those pockets, right? And that's exactly how the Predator table plays and is meant to play. It's meant to play a little bit tougher. Yeah. Right? This is why it gets used in all the Predator Pro Series. It is a phenomenally built table. Um, we do have those for sale as well, guys. So if you do want to get your hands on a Predator table, um, you now know we can get our hands on those on the nine foots right now. Um, but I mean, you know, you look at uh, look at Jason's record. We're not taking away from what he did. What he did was unbelievable. 714 balls without a miss. That's that's crazy. Yeah, but his pockets. The facts are the facts are the facts. We're not dogging on anybody. No, the facts are his table had bigger pockets than what this one does. And I don't think anybody was saying dogging it. It was just kind of the try to figure out what the standard is, you know, for straight pool. But it is, uh, it is indeed like a. It's five inch corners, and the sides can be up to five and five eighths. Which is, which is huge. <laughs> we all know that. We're all pool players. We all know that's that's some buckets. All right, there's an, another rack on the board. This guy runs racks like it's going out of style. You mm -hmm. got It's hard to keep up with it, you know. Yeah. I don't think anybody's dogging on anybody, Glenn. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what I was just saying too. Yeah. yeah. Nobody's dogging nobody. No. The fact is even the even the the gold crown that John's playing on now, they have buckets. They're big buckets. Right? Compared that to you know, the predator table, the diamond table, they're they're buckets. Them some big pockets. Uh yeah, Johnny, yeah. You're gonna have to uh you're going to have to look that one up. You're going to have to use that one, Johnny Hendrick, in your high runs, bud. I've had to use it before, too. You get ball in hand behind the head string, not ball in hand. Ball in hand is something different. That would be nice, you know? Mm -hmm. But you get it behind the head string. So sometimes you sac you know, sacrifice a little bit of longer shot just to make sure you have the right angle. Yep. Someone said the Predator had a chance to have their tables made by Diamond, but they went a different direction. That is a true statement, Eric, and I'm, uh, I'm kind of glad they did, right? If, if, if it was me at the helm of Predator, I would have done the same thing, right? Because then it's not a Predator table. It's just another Diamond table. Yeah, it's, it's manufactured by Diamond, right? Like these tables are manufactured by Sam, so it's just another Sam table more or less, right? But I think I think you're right that they went a good direction. Those I tables agree. from Spain are are built like bricks, you know. They are, and as John alluded to, if there was a a meteor going to hit this planet, I'm hiding underneath that table that's built like a German tank. And Jacob, yeah, the the first rack counts, even though he missed the first shot, there were still 15 balls up. Yep. So he can just continue shooting with 15 balls up. It's all about just running multiple racks. So. The first rack is not as important as long as there's 15 balls up there. Mm -hmm. How is Kevin holding up racking? Must be getting tired too. Uh, at least Kevin gets to sit in between the racks. So, I mean, he doesn't have to mm -hmm. stand up and kind of run around the table. So he's only only up every time that uh, he's needed. But certainly a thankless job. He's still a Kevin young man doing. too. I'm sure he could last a little while longer. <laughs> pocket width sits the cut and shelf those are also contributing factors but pocket size is going to be the biggest contributing factor so yes but yeah that like he's saying they're they're more for rotation in one pocket yeah than I straight agree. than straight I agree 100 percent. Yeah. but still yeah. pocket size is the single biggest contributing factor yes it's also the cut of the pocket yes it's also the depth of the shelf yeah but you could have 
deep shell or shallow shelf, great cut pockets at four and a quarter, they're still not going to play the same as no. opening these up to up to five. No, and if you make this shelf super, super deep, it's going to play really tough no matter how oh, big yeah. the pocket, oh. too. It's going to be tough. Right? Deep shelves are just impossible to play on. Oh, when Eric was going to school, they had 22 nine-foot Kim Steele tables made by Sam Billiards. They're great tables. They're built like an absolute brick. Yeah. So I, I'm not surprised at all that Predator went to them to get the tables built because for sure they do fantastic stuff. And Jason's table was uh, also a gold crown. Yeah, and it's funny, Jeff says, you know, the difference between four and seven eighths and five and an eighth is a big difference. Of course. It's massive in this game. Anybody who who plays a little bit of pool at a high level, they know it's a game of mm -hmm. millimeters, fractions of an inch, you know? My high run on the gold crown, Johnny, zero. I have not hit a ball on this table yet. <laughs> But I'm really looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. I think maybe when we get back from Vegas, oh, right? Sure. Yeah. Because you guys are going to arrange to have it moved then. So I might have a day or two <laughs> to like squeak in a few quick high runs. Why would he try on a tight table? Uh, it wasn't necessarily that he wanted to uh, try to outrun it on a, on a tighter table. It was really two things. We wanted to show how well that Predator table does play um, given proper conditions. And I know everybody brings up Vegas and there's a lot of things that happen in Vegas that general public doesn't know about the floating floor the carpet so on and so forth that were all contributing factors into what everybody saw so we wanted to show how well those predator table plays and i think john did that i think john showed exactly how well those tables play he even said himself the table plays phenomenally well and uh you know with with straight pool not being as popular as eight ball or any of the you know rotation games nine ball ten ball um, we wanted to kind of put on uh, a live clinic where john could show and showcase his own skill uh, and really show how good straight pools play so that was day one day two and mic'd up what a treat and mic'd up what yeah. an so he could kind of go through and and run you through what's going on in in his own head on why he's shooting the shots that he, that he did um, and that was the intended purpose. So now that day one and day two are done, uh, he does want to give the crack at, uh, at going after that world title again. So this is why we're now on the gold crown. Absolutely. So is he playing the three in the side? He's playing the three in the side. This is a really little weird end pattern that's going to work out totally perfect. Like, just kind of a little bit unconventional, but yep. look how natural the cue ball's going yeah. to a perfect position for the break ball. Well, and I think, Damien, you're 100% correct, because how many times have we seen, uh, even over the last two and a half days with John, where he misses and he, he just gets right back in the saddle? Well, and he mentioned that, and it's unbelievable to hear it from him, even though I know he's thinking it. Mm-hmm. But it was so nice, like, how calmly he came over and said, when you're doing this, you really got to shake off those those misses quick. Yeah. You know, and you can't get angry because then you're going to be shooting balls later on and be worried about missing it and getting angry again. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Arcos two balls. Yeah, that's why I put it up there. Somebody uh, on uh, YouTube is asking, yeah, which Jay balls are they? They are the Arcos two. Yeah, certain certain gold crowns do have ball return. That, that's correct. Yep. You can order them with it. Yeah, to play like this, you got to be like a relief pitcher. Yeah. No conscious. No memory. Yeah, it takes unbelievable mental fortitude mm -hmm. to put this together. Uh, James says, I've been playing tournaments uh, where the tables are on a floating floor. I've never noticed it. When I'm playing, you might be able to feel it, but the table seems to play fine. 
uh, which would be a true statement with exception to the fact that the Predator table is a 1,400 pound table. It's yeah, built it's like a German tank. So it's a little heavier. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, oh, great shot. Oh, beautiful. Oh, and that shot. ties up again. He's he might be able to force that seven in, though. He's kind of got that look like, are you, <laughs> yeah, are kidding, you kidding me? me? <laughs> Out of the frying pan into the fire, something along those. Right. <laughs> if I miss after 50, uh, I want to jump out the window. Yeah. You and me <laughs> both, although I've never shot over 50. Yeah, that's My what first run was yesterday, and it was a 14. That's what Grant and I were saying. I'd be doing laps around the room if I ran a 170 right out of the gate. Right. Yeah. I'd be high-fiving everybody who can catch me, you know. <laughs> yeah, I would I would agree, Jay. I mean, John. John's just a great guy, as I've got to know him uh, since we met. Um, I mean, funny, witty, all around, just an approachable, really, really good guy. Yeah, just super genuinely nice, too, is what I've really found. Is, yeah. yeah. Because over the first couple of days, it's like, yeah, this guy's hilarious, you know, and, oh, and it's fun to hang so out witty. with. And, yeah. But then he said a couple of things over the last few days, you know, that has just been like, yeah, it's genuinely, he's got he's big a big heart too. Yeah, you know? just a genuine good guy. Yeah. Yeah. It was nice to have him mic'd up yesterday and the day before. Oh, was great. And to get a little insight to who he is. I think sports needs more of that, but especially pool. I think the players need to be made into personalities. I agree. Well, and, I mean, and that's, that'll, that'll that's help part elevate of, the sport. Yeah, it's part of what uh, what we try to do with Jam Up. I think Damien and I, um, you know, we think a lot the same. Where when we bring on sponsored players, it's not necessarily for us to, you know, just use them and promote them and not do anything in return. We mm -hmm. we try to help them work on their brand. Right. Because at the end of the day, once the pool's all done and you've played your last tournament, it's your brand that will carry you mm -hmm. past that. That's and right. Allison Fisher is a prime example of that, right? Mm -hmm. Where her name, it's it's just synonymous. Now, it helps that you're the most winningest female on the face of the planet. Of but, course. But, you know, she's got a brand, the yeah. AF brand, yeah. right, will carry her past her playing days. And yeah, that's, of you know, it's something we try to, to instill is the business side of pool yeah. into, into pro players. And, and we talked about this, too, and I think Albin's done really well with that. Mm -hmm. Right, Albin Elshin has done really well. Oh yeah, Albin and Jasmine. Yeah, and just to create their own brand, you know, I I think that's really important and something a lot of pool promoters can help players do is become better professionals in yeah. some ways too. Yeah. So just kind of show them the way, you know. Yep. John on a nice little clean run again here mm -hmm. six ball in prime position cue ball coming up a little short of perfect but i think that's just fine there what happened uh he got out again did he I thought he got Gosh, out again. I'd love to hear that. Didn't he? Did he get out? Like, where's his break ball? Where's the break ball? Oh, well, <laughs> maybe John moved it. I didn't even see oh, what happened. No. I didn't even see what happened. Oh no. Uh, does it he, would be the on YouTube, YouTube will rewind? That's cool. Grant's got the video. We got the 
frozen frame. Kevin put the rock over and swept it in the rack. Oh, and no big deal. If the rocker grabs the break ball and moves it, then it's actually still a legitimate run. If John moves it, then the run is over. If John moves the cue ball or the object ball, the run is over. If the racker moves it, we can replace it, and we have the video feed to replace it. All ball fouls, yeah. <laughs> and exactly, Patrick. It, it, it's not a huge deal. It's not, like I mentioned before, this is day one of four of his high run attempts. So we're not expecting 400 plus ball runs today. We're kind of expecting maybe a 200 ball run, maybe a 300 ball run. But I think we're going to see the really high runs later on in the week. At which point, yeah, we might have to be very careful. But of course, Kevin's been out there doing it for four hours, a little over four hours now. And he's been doing a fantastic job doing it. And it's a thankless job, you know. And let me just count this score, too, because we're on four racks now, correct? John's coin says four, so we're on 56. But really, no harm, no foul, I mean. Yeah, still still legitimate run. Some might question it. Haters are always going to hate, you know. Haters are going to hate. The cue ball didn't move. The object ball may have moved by a millimeter or less than that because... To be honest, I looked and, and it looked dead exactly where it was once we wound back the camera. So possibly one thing moving forward as well is I do want to set up another angle tomorrow. Uh, an angle where we can record from. So I'm actually going to try to Maybe put my phone in a certain spot that can record. I'm going to have to run a plug and whatnot, but I think I can figure it out. And we'll see if we can get just an extra angle, just in case we need to take an extra look from a different side. <laughs> right, Stephanie? I was absolutely terrified. When John asked me to do it, I thought, no, I'll do it if I have to, but I don't really want to, you know. Beamer is doing an absolute fantastic job over there. Absolutely fantastic. Not an easy job. Yeah, and like like Glenn says, there's no not really any written rules for this high run format, you know. It's kind of... There's like unwritten rules that are like, yeah, all ball fouls and stuff like that. But for sure, those guys were cleaning balls at, at Legends during those runs without even really marking them. He was marking it with his hand. He'd put his hand down, you know, a little cup motion between your thumb and your finger and, and just leave his hand there and clean the ball and then put it back. I think I saw that a couple times. I could be wrong. I think they definitely used a ball marker a couple of times. Just letting him know he can switch out the balls as well if he likes. Because he's on five racks now. So he has ran a lot of racks today. He said they're still playing great. And and I I really think they are. They still like Grant's back now. Even looking at the table outside of the screen, Grant, the, those balls look pretty clean still. Oh, yeah. I think they stay really they, clean they for really a really do. long time. And yep. obviously it helps he's using that town Well, check. listen, if, if John thought they were at all dirty, he's got another set. Ready, That's right. to, ready to go. Yeah, so. and and I and so I mentioned it to him, and he just said, uh, "Yeah, if I get on another big high run, then he's gonna swap them out." So, mm -hmm. me personally, I'd like to swap them right now. Maybe I I wouldn't want them too clean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, thanks to the guys in the booth too. You don't realize how hard 
that being on the mic for that long can be keep up the great work thank you jay yeah, thank appreciate you, jay. that for sure it is a thankless job sometimes it, and it, it is very tough it is it's uh it's not as easy as what people think it is or what it used to be yes it used to be oh, all right let's sit and i could sit for like eight hours oh, and not yeah, even really no notice doubt. now no it's kind of like i don't enjoy sitting <laughs> that much anymore i'd almost rather be walking around yeah. you know but we love what we do for sure and i really love what i do this week <laughs> yeah and this is a real treat for me for i can really i can only speak for myself here but i mean i've, I've put in a ton of time as i know ben has as well um i still love it i've just got other things that i need to uh take care of most of the time of course so you know for me it's uh I still love it. Um, do, do I love the hours? No. But, I mean, listen, if the worst thing I have in the world uh, is to have to sit and commentate on pool for eight hours a day, uh, life's, uh, life's not terrible. Life's pretty good. Yeah. That's right. And I always say, and especially this week, it's like if you told me six years ago that I'd be sitting here doing commentary at Leather Pocket watching John Schmidt try to big, break the straight pool record, yeah. Do you hear any of that? No. No. I was okay. reading a comment. <laughs> if uh, <laughs> if you told me six years ago that we'd be sitting here at Leather Pocket watching mm -hmm. John Schmidt try to beat the straight pool high run record, a hundred percent, I'd be blown right? away. You right? know, like uh, unbelievable. Well, and, and just some of the things that we've got coming right with the Canada Open. It's going to be the first time that Predator puts on an event. It'll be on billiards TV. <laughs> But we will also be streaming mm -hmm. at the same time. So it's the first time they're allowing a streamer to come in and, and kind of stream a, 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 I guess, a professional or, or their professional our event. professional side of, uh, yeah. of, uh, of what we do. Yeah. I'm certainly not comparing ourselves to the production that they've put on. They've got all the big fancy cameras and so on and so forth. But uh, they are a full production company. We are simply a streaming company. That's right. Um, and so for what we do... Um, you know, had you told me even honestly, even eight months ago, right? Maybe nine months ago to say that we partner with Predator and put on this big event in Canada. And, you know, that's the Predator Pro Series yeah, and pretty crazy partner stuff. with them and jam up apparel. I mean, come on mm -hmm. now. You're talking the things that dreams are made of. Absolutely. And I'll tell you, I got to and I, I know I'm going to sound so biased here, but in getting to meet the owner of Predator Krim and his team, Jessica's, JP, um, Philippe, uh, um, Gino, all the guys at Predator, they're just phenomenal people. And I don't think it gets said enough, nor do people realize the amount that Predator puts back into the game. 90% of the profit of Predator goes back into growing this game. That's somebody I want to partner with. So I don't think it, it gets said enough, told enough, put out there enough. Um, you know, yes, they, you know, took it upon themselves to, to try to create a, a you know, and, and bring in and usher in the new era of tables. I love it. I love the fact that they did it. I've been in construction 30 plus years and I know quality when I see it. That table is built <laughs> like a German tank. Absolutely. The thing is phenomenal. I'm so excited to put some time in on it. We're super lucky to have it. Uh, like Patrick Neal here. Too nice, sir. Too nice. I like that. He says ESPN announcers had help from producers, directors, makeup people, spotters, cameramen. Yeah, we don't. Concubines. We, we don't have all that. <laughs> Sandwich catering. <laughs> Predator Q is watching says thanks for all the kind the words. Most. I'm not sure who's uh, who's comp or commenting from Predator, but uh, you know, you guys deserve it. I mean, let's let's be honest, let's be real about it. Oh, he, did he touch it again? I think he moved it again, Grant. I think he moved it again. He did. Yeah, he touched it again. Let's see if you can 
catch the. I think they got he it where got it, it is. got it pretty close to where it is. Yeah. I think, I think it's time to swap out with maybe Johnny Morelados. Definitely. Uh, Do you want to check so the so they can see if it's legitimate? Yep. He's not sure if that's where it is. Yep. We'll get uh, we'll get the replay going and we'll make sure it's in the right spot. No harm, no foul. He's he's just cleaning the ball. <laughs> Just cleaning the ball. That's yeah, tough. It's wanna... a, not like something he does every day, you know? <laughs> Here, I got you. But luckily we got... Uh... Oh, yeah, he's got it right there. Nailed it. John would know better than anyone, too, of course, right? Because John was over there looking at the oh, angle, yeah. so he knows exactly where well, it was, if right? If you look at... at the pause that I have where he had it. Yeah, it was, was identical. Yeah. <laughs> Beamer's getting a little tired maybe. Four, very four well and a half hours be. in, it's not an easy job. It's very true. Like Steph said last time, Steph was terrified when John asked her to do it. She was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy, ah, it's Jeremy, the art director at Predator Q's commenting. <laughs> And it's rumored that Carl Boyce has two hairdressers. <laughs> <laughs> Go Kim Newsome. Kim yeah. was just promoted, I believe, at, uh, at Predator, if my uh, facts are correct. It is, Becca. It's 100%. I mean, you, you rack a ball for 30 years one way, <laughs> which is gathering them all in, and then you get thrown into the gauntlet racking for for John Schmidt and I'll tell you what. <laughs> That's right. Your your visceral reaction tends to uh, take over. And at least we have the, the replay capability, right? So we can back it up and That's right. And take a look. I can open it up on here too and we get a little bit of a bigger view. The only problem is I got to turn the volume off. Yes. <laughs> They'll get a double replay of our... That's something, right? Scratchy, deep voices. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear that twice. <laughs> no, I think, Jim, it's, uh, it's just natural. Natural tendency. For s people who don't play straight pool. We don't play tournaments. We don't have a straight pool league. Yeah. For somebody who lives in New York, they're probably going, are you kidding me? Because that's all they do is play straight pool, right? We don't play any straight pool, so it it would be pretty easy for me to do that too. Oh, uh, Even yeah. being a straight pool player, I'd probably move it like a of handful course. of times well, throughout it's, the day. It's, you know, it's your your conditioned ways, right? That's in it. It's tough to break that cycle. That's right. We're not going to get a, get get mad at him no he's, he's volunteered a fantastic job he's uh he's done well very very good very thankless job but we thank him is very true nice shot five ball being the break ball i would think and yeah mike you're absolutely correct like john john was just joking up about it oh for sure there's no way he was upset about that ball being moved at any at any time first thing he said he's like it's okay we're not on a high run you know like, we're not on 400 balls but if you did right. it then i might be a little upset right <laughs> <laughs> and he's still joking about it nice little slide up there and still just gets out no problem <laughs> yeah and he says don't touch that ball <laughs> don't you touch that ball <laughs> i you, like that break ball he says <laughs> did you hear what he just said don't you touch donald trump yeah that's a the orange ball, the Donald Trump ball. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we still love him, he says. We love him anyway. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, too good. And he even said, too, he said, I, 
I thought it might happen the first day, you know, because it's of not course. like you guys play a lot of straight Listen, pool. they're human, man. I mean, come on. But he's dialed. Look at this. It's another oh, yeah, run over 100. He's got eight racks here. He's playing real good. You can count on, like, one hand how many balls he's missed today in four and a half hours, so that's pretty good. He's not happy because he doesn't have a hanger, but he's got a pretty easy little combo here. He never misses this combo. I think what he's got to be sure of is that he's getting shape on something. Uh, so for our predator, Jeremy, listening, uh, I'm not sure if uh, Jeremy's going to know. That might be a question more for the sales end, but uh, on YouTube, we've got a question. Uh, when are we getting more BK rush jump break cues with the sport rack or sport wrap? Black and blue, not red. I can't see the art director knowing, but you never know, right? You never know. You never uh, know. I've heard that uh, it's still going to be a little bit midsummer before mm -hmm. uh, before we see any of those. And thanks for watching from Medicine Hat. Indeed. You know, this is something that we have not asked the entire time that we've uh, been live. For everybody tuning in on both YouTube and uh, and Facebook, where is everybody tuning in from? Mm -hmm. And your couch does not count. And Laura, you're absolutely right. He's got to stay focused racking also. <laughs> After four and a half hours, not easy, right? right? It's hard. Uh, the most important skill in 14 and 1 seems to be reading the table. Oh, Followed absolutely. closely yeah. by creating a break ball position when none exists naturally. Yeah, you're picking up on this, Patrick. I bet you you could run 100 balls one day if you keep watching this man play yeah. straight pool. It seems right. like it'd be easy because his patterns are great. Uh, who said it's not uh, too critical? You're 100% correct. Glenn. Um, and it's the same in life. The more you find out about what you don't know, the more you realize how truly, how much you truly don't know. Underrated game but for the sure. Thing, the thing is, um, the thing in life with that, the problem is this. You still, you don't know what it is you don't know. That's right. right? That's, now we're getting into philosophy. I know. I know. And <laughs> this it, is a this funny is right comment. Up my alley. Shaw just asked what the score of a soccer game was, and I let him know that John's on 698. <laughs> 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 Get him. Right? 126, that's nine racks. 126. Yeah, and Roy, I think you touched on something nice there. Texas it's not in a, the house. Sorry, go ahead. Ben. It's not a bad thing what happened with him moving the break ball. It kind of like get a little laugh. It loosens things up yeah, a course. little. Like it, it that was course. good, I think. Yeah. Bahamas <laughs> in the house, Ontario. Where else have we got? Uh, let me go back up. Philadelphia in the house, Richmond, Jersey Shore, New Brunsfeld. Or, oops, sorry, New Bronzeville, South Dakota, Alabama, Missouri, Thief River Falls, Montana, oh, nice Barry, Ontario, shot. Boise, Alabama, Gulf Coast, Kentucky's in the house, Grand Prairie for Carlos, <laughs> Chicago. It's a good look here because he pretty much already has a break ball. I think the five is like in a prime position let's see if he's got a 200 for us today he's through nine racks <laughs> Dwayne Harding the dark side of the moon that's got to be quite the view Winnipeg in the house oh nice little shot there does he have to move those balls or can he pick them off? Does the three go oh, off table? I think he's he just to He's going to have to pick those off at some point. Yeah, I don't think he needs to move them though. Like he, most players I think go. would go into those clusters. Whew. It goes, he's looked at it a couple times, but it might be a little too tight for him. I'm looking right down the barrel. That goes all day. It's 
So let's see if he decides to send the cue ball into that cluster. It looks like he's going to and just nudge them a little. Yeah. Take the 13 maybe, or he's going to yeah. draw for the 5. 13 no. and nudge, nudge them. Yeah. And, and he's got the 8 as uh, the insurance ball. Does have the 10 ball here as well. He can maybe, uh, no, nah, I think that maybe pushes that 5 does, too much. Does he even have the 8? And that's why he's shooting this 10. I think that that's exactly what happened there. I don't think he had the 8. Now he's yeah. going to have to use a 7 for the break ball or possibly the 3 underneath the rack. But we haven't seen him use it too much. I definitely know that's not the preferred break shot. Underneath is one you only kind of use when you have to, I think. Yeah, I'm not a, enough of a, uh, a straight pool aficionado yet. Well, and so, and so here's the thing, Grant. When you use the ball underneath, the break ball, it kind of wants to push all the balls up this way. Right. And you don't want to. You want to yeah. push them down this way so you yep. have more options for a break ball, right? I got you. And, the, and then the obvious, like, if the cue ball's glancing off the bottom of the stack, it's hard to get it up to middle table. Mm -hmm. And you want the cue ball kind of middle table after the break shot so you have lots of options. So then does he go and use the 11 as the break shot? No, I think Thin that... Then cut the 11 and go into the pack? I think it's kind of too low. And then, and then when you come off the side rail, it's hard to control the spin off of the rack. So when the cue ball hits the rack, you want it to be able to spin a certain way off of it mm -hmm. so you don't get stuck right in it. We saw that happen a couple times. He got stuck right in it, you know? Last time it was on a, it was on a shot when he was on 199, and he just spun the cue ball in there, and he got stuck. So he's going to use the three here, but this lays nice. This lays real nice. He'll have the cue ball off the rail, and he'll have a nice little angle here. So then it will be interesting to see on this whether he kind of blasts into those mm -hmm. or if he just kind of chips into them, maybe a mid-stroke. Mid I think, yeah, it's going to be a middle one, but, but I think it's going to be fairly firm too. Like, like it won't be on the softer side of the medium stroke. It'll be on the harder side because he wants to make sure he gets a cue ball through. Mm -hmm. You don't want to get stuck and you don't want to be like, Picking one ball off and then going into the corner of the back into the stack kind of thing. Yep. Back into that corner of the stack. So I think we'll probably see him spin it pretty heavy. Like lots of draw, lots of lots of um, left spin possibly to try to chip it off there. Mm -hmm. Ten racks again though. He's putting on a putting on a century show today. All this guy does oh, is no run doubt. hundreds. And it only takes him about half an hour to run 100. Pretty good pool we're being treated to here. Mike Perry John is taking a run and getting the record back this week. I think he's saying yeah, he tagged two, Mike Perry. Yeah, Mike Perry John is taking a run. Ah, it doesn't show us the tags anymore. It doesn't get ripped off from that <laughs> stupid meta book right just kidding i love you meta book <laughs> <laughs> touche sir touche does he go into the pack here yeah just i was gonna say just softly no he hammers into it i guess we'll shoot the eight, <laughs> shoot, the right? eight. shoot the obvious one who wouldn't shoot the eight here this is uh, kind of the the prime time of evening, I'd say, for a big high run. I so agree. Because now there's, I mean, there's not a huge crowd, but there's about eight people sitting over there watching, like, and they're they're pretty close over there. And well, so they're I think we'll start to see our viewership look. go up as people get off of work. That's right. And as soon as he gets over 200. Oh, for sure. It's going to double. It's, it's going to happen. I'm telling you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> Yeah, I think right now is the time. I think it's the prime time. He's been hitting balls for four hours, 45 minutes, plus his warm-up time. Yep. Watch, Which is about a 45-minute Watch warm -up this little time. shot. He's going to nudge the 13 into, into, the, break into the break ball. But see how the control 
Like it, for me, when I shoot that ball, the 13 ends up near the rail. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, wouldn't it, though? Oh, like, it looked sure. like it was going to hit it kind of full and yeah, push it near the rail. Those are the shots I was talking about earlier. Man, he's and so good he's at that. so, so good at it. Man, he's so good at that. Oh, he came Oops. up a little short, but he's okay. He's, he's still got this 10 ball. He originally thought he hit that so bad that he didn't have the 10, and then he was going to be in a little trouble, but he's okay. We're going to lose our a tablet. I see that. Tablet. Yeah. I do have my phone charger there, so I can plug it in. I'll let it is this for YouTube? The... Oh, well, you got YouTube on over there. Yeah, I, I think you didn't see the comments in there, but I can put Facebook on over here, then we can read the comments on there. Or you can put Facebook on there. Either which. Six of one. Might be better on there. Facebook yeah. or YouTube? Yeah, put Facebook on there. Well, I can bring my, my laptop up here Because you too. can see the YouTube. You can see the comments, right? Yep. On the right? Kind yeah. of. I'd have to lean in a little bit, but that's okay. Yeah, we can move this closer too. Did this come far Gotta enough? Gotta go. Yeah, it's good. Oh, yeah, it's he's good. good. He got there. He's good. All right, I'm going to put this one back up here again. The viewer advantage sweepstakes back in action. This is for the 626Q that John is using. It is uh, obviously made by Predator. And we are doing a draw for this exact Q. It is the wrapless version, comes with an 11.8 Revo shaft as well as the extension. If you want in to win, a couple of ways you can do that. Just jump over to our website, cslipl.com. It's already over. Oh, okay. The <laughs> score. The score. Oh, the score. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll get to that. Yeah, so I was just um, going to take the mouse and do it. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, so a couple of ways to get in to win. Uh, cslipl.com. Once you get there, click on the shop button. It'll be the first one that uh, you see popped up there. Tickets are 20 US dollars each. If you happen to live in Canada, you can email transfer QSportsLive at gmail.com. Keep in mind, it is US dollars, so about 26 Canadian. And uh, we will get caught up on doing tickets in the evening of each day. That will be drawn on Saturday. And that will be drawn by the man himself, Mr. John Schmidt. And a beautiful hitting cue. There's only 300 of those made. I hit some balls with that cue. Amazing feel. Yeah, really nice feel. I don't know what they did. I don't know if it's the rosewood or what. But I love the way his cue hits. Eleven racks, one five four. Yeah, I don't know why I marked one five six. Good call. <laughs> Sometimes mathing is hard. Good call. Especially trying to do everything that we're doing yeah. all at the same time, right? Like Patrick said, we don't have the ESPN crew, you know, the right? <laughs> all the extras. We run the whole show. Yeah, we control everything. The camera, the view, the the graphics that you put up, the commentary, watching all the comments on Facebook and YouTube. Mm -hmm. Set up, tear down, Set all up, that fun down. stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and trying to babysit the YouTube's been one today. Yeah. <laughs> Making sure the bots are out. <laughs> oh, this is another good look. The two ball looks good. He'd like to be on the one right now, but I don't know if it's possible. So you the might 12 have to get one the six will be the out of there. Yeah. yeah, six, then the 12 one will be okay. Yeah, great math. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, Brian, we're doing a great job, eh? <laughs> His shot selection is certainly unreal. Oh, Patrick, that's awesome. Just purchased two viewer advantage tickets. Please be sure to give one of those to Kevin Beamer. Very nicely done, Patrick. That is pretty awesome. Another rack on the board. God, that one was quick. I think I can do this one. One, six, eight. Six, eight. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if he's got a 200 in him. Come on, Johnny. Oh, I'm sure. What I'm about sure. just switch the balls? Can we do that? Rather than 
He knows what he's doing. He knows, yeah. He knows I what know he's when, doing. when he wants them switched, he's got a set there. Yeah. He knows what he's doing. Yeah. And this way he racks them himself. <laughs> <laughs> Too funny. I love it that John's making a joke out of that. <laughs> Dave Harding's got a good joke. Take take two balls off of my high run because right. of, of what I did. Because <laughs> I counted wrong. Take two balls off my high run. Wow. That's a great break. And he was yelling at that 10 ball. He's yeah, like, no, nope, Stay nope. out of the way. Because <laughs> it looked like it was going to go right down in there. Yeah, did he ever smash that, though, hey? Didn't he? He got those wide open. I think he's feeling really good. I mean, this guy's played, I know the time The time clock says he's been playing for four hours and 51 minutes. How good were we to start right at noon? Hey, it's 4.51, been playing for four hours and 51 minutes. We're pretty good. How how good pretty was good. that? You were Johnny on the spot today. I was. I had, still had the headset in my hand, and you're like, we're going. <laughs> <laughs> it's live. Yeah. So add on there the half hour, 45 minutes prior to for him to smack a couple of balls around. How cool is that too? Raymond Linares, he's at the gym running on the treadmill watching John run balls like killing two birds, right? right? That's how you train for pool. That's how, that's <laughs> how you do it right there. That's how it's done. If only I could run on the treadmill while playing pool. Now we're talking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know how he's not eating anything. I mean, the guy barely takes a sip Just of a drink. Some water, yeah. Look at this. When will there be a match between John Schmidt and Jason Shaw? 14 and 1, race to 1,000. Patrick says, it's happening right now. That's it. <laughs> and it is. It's the race to 1,000. It's true. So I was saying when you, when you were gone, and I don't know if Felicity, uh, Felicity is still in watching, but... Um, he put together two runs, okay, and at the, at, the, at the back end of the one run, he scratched, so it wasn't mm -hmm. a missed shot. His next run, if you add those together mm -hmm. and take out the scratch shot, thousand was plus. over 1,000. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he has that capacity to put 1,000 balls in a pocket. 1,000 without missing a shot. Without missing. I think he That's just, ridiculous. I think he just notched the five to his break ball. I thought or earlier in the rack he was going to nudge a different ball. Squoze that one in the pocket. He knows. Like, you, you never overcut that ball, right? Yeah. You never overcut that ball. You always hit that ball thick. He's mm -hmm. not aiming to do anything but hit it thick. So it's a good shot, even though it wiggled in there. Oh, on the same table at the same time. Yeah, that's what Joe meant. Right, right, right. <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? Race to a thousand. Schmitty versus Shaw. Fourteen one race to a thousand. That would be good times. I know who I'm betting on. <laughs> I don't know who to bet on. I mean you can't can't take away anything from what Jason's done. Uh oh. But when a, a game of fourteen and one. And a 14-1 well, high run attempt is two different things, right? Well, I don't know. I, uh, to, be, to be fair, right, I wouldn't know who to bet on in that case, right? And I can't take anything away from either player, whether it's Jason or John. That would just be a heck of a good match. Yeah, oh. I think at that point it'd be more about the moves too, right? Like the, there's, yeah, the there's some serious strategy would, yeah. to 14-1. Uh, to yeah. Where I give John just the smallest of edges on the strategy only because of the length of time he's been playing. The experience. Well, yeah, but here's Absolutely. the thing is, right. is people say, oh, Jason hasn't played a lot of 14-1. Yeah, he has. Oh, he's Derby played City, a ton. 11 a ton. years of 14-1. He's played a lot of straight pool. Yeah, he played the American 14-1 a handful of times. Yeah. He played the world 14-1. He's a, a very experienced 14-1 player. For sure. And let's be honest, you can't take away what it is he did his accomplishment of a 714 is just as unreal unbelievable as anything else that's been accomplished but you know can't take that away from him and you can't take it away from from john for wanting to get back on the saddle and uh, absolutely and try his uh 
rerun at the record. Uh, Michael Hoffman, his high run on the Predator over the first two days was 126. Yeah, that That's Predator table. Real That's, tough. Uh, it, it is tough. It's meant to be tough. And Drew, this is not the high run so far. He had a 199 today before he got jammed in between some balls. Yeah, he got Super really unlucky. unlucky. Got stuck in the got stuck in the donut. Yeah, look at the speed on that break shot. No doubt. Does he have one of these balls inside the I think he's got the three ball here. Yeah, this is tough though, reaching. Yeah, he's and reaching if well, it's he, hard to see he the switch angle. hits, right? He can switch hit it if if he prefers, right? Uh, he can always shoot the one up table. It's actually not that bad looking at the table view. It's not yeah, terrible. it's not terrible. He's a little hampered by that 12 ball. He shoots maybe a three. little bit. He's got the extension out. He's shooting the three. The good thing about this three ball is it's going to open up everything. But he can't be in love with it because reaching that far and trying to see the potting angle is not easy. Yeah, so he, yeah, he doesn't like it either way. Right? Right. Even with the extension shooting right handed. Well, on left, he feels like a bit risky when he's on this many balls you know yeah i think you just I, I think you take your shot that you were saying and you float that one ball in yeah i mean you just float the one nobody loves that shot either though yeah, you I know think he's reaching oh he's going back to the three so i like the extension rather than the lefty choice for sure you can see that better than you can see the lefty angle he's not sure what he wants to do here though which is never a good sign right no He's looking for a longer extension, possibly. I don't think he needs two extensions in order to shoot this. I'm always thinking about the rest. Oof. To me, that would be the last of all the options. Oh, my goodness. I think he just Here wants he to see how this feels. Right? I don't think he's shooting it. Look, he's going to shoot it like a, like a regular shot. See this? Look how his arm is down. <laughs> he didn't shoot that like a rest shot. But you know what? Okay, so I know he didn't like that, but now the result is he's clear on the Way one. better. Way right. better, yeah. yeah. Well, and he can shoot the seven here, too. I think he shoots the seven or the two in the side. Two in the side's not bad. But did you see how he shot that with the yeah. bridge? Yeah, he just like a like regular. Yeah. But he, he had the extension <laughs> on the Instead of like this. Yeah. That was... That was not a Canadian thing to do. <laughs> we might have to show him how to use the rest. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just post on the page. As soon as he gets to 200, I'll post that he's on 200. If he gets to three, I'll post on the page that he's at three. Yeah, that's oh, right. Nice little nudge there. Sitting good on the 12 ball. Yeah, very good. Very good. Yeah, and the audience is starting to build up a little bit here at the pool hall. They know what they're watching, too. Of course. A couple of straight pool fanatics sitting over there watching this. They're loving it. As am I. I oh, am it's great. eating this up, man. I can't believe this guy is running like 100 balls wow. in half an hour like it's nothing. And he doesn't stop. Yeah, five straight hours again of just straight pool, no wash and break, no nothing. Mm, yeah, that's what did it. How yep. many balls are up there? Three, five, ten, eleven four. balls there. Four. So four more. Yeah. One eight six. One eighty six to end that run. One eighty-six. <laughs> I would have never thought he would miss that ball. That's very no, shocking. No, me neither. But he's right. He was cueing kind of funny. Yeah. So then when you push it with a little siding, yeah. But he's still never supposed to miss. No, not that one. All right. He's saying one more good try. One more good try today. All right. I'm going to leave you for a second. Yeah, no All worries. Right. Use the washroom. Yeah. Tough. Tough miss there. And you're right, I don't think he's uh he's supposed to miss that shot. Even even if he shoots it left handed, right? His his make percentage shooting left handed is uh is pretty high. But, you know, like like they're talking about it uh at the table right now, um, you know, with 
the two balls that unfortunately that Kevin grabbed off the table and respotted. At least there's no chance of uh, of that coming back to haunt anybody. So I mean, there's got to find a positive, I guess, in all situations. That would be the positive there. So I actually think uh, we'll see maybe the same thing that uh, we saw the last time he kind of put up a decent run um, where, you know, his mind's still attached to that last run. So I would suspect this run's probably not going to be as big. Um, and as much as he says this might be the last run at it, I think we'll see another one out of him, especially if he misses under 100. Yeah, and you can still, I mean, he's still talking about it. He's still saying, dang, how did I miss that? Shouldn't have missed it. <laughs> Brandon says, I'm bad luck, I guess. Every time I tune in, he misses on a high run. Okay, well, Brandon, one piece of advice. He stopped doing that. <laughs> but I really don't think it has anything to do with you tuning in. Just just tune in and stay tuned in. That's that's the best way. Well, we'll keep the stream going. Listen, Ben and I this is this is no strange position for Jen, uh, for Ben and I to be in. We've uh we've done our fair share of uh of streaming and you know, we're only running five hours right now. We have certainly done uh, a lot higher numbers than that. 12, 14, 16 hours. Now you're talking, right? Now the voice starts to, starts to go a little bit. But for where we're at right now, this is no problem. So long as, uh, so long as John wants to keep playing... We're going to keep the stream going. He just called that as a cross side, so banking it to the corner, or to the side pocket, I should say. Just like that, great shot. Maintain position and break angle. Oh, let me tell you, Brandon, uh, <laughs> when you start to get into those 14, 16 hours, uh, that's where things get interesting on the stream. You start to kind of lose your mind a little bit. Uh, we had one of those, um, God, that must be five or six years ago now. It was up in Red Deer. Uh, it was affectionately known as the Nookie Cookie stream. And uh, we were just loopy as loopy gets. But that's, I mean, that's so far back into the archives. I wouldn't want to try to find that one. It's back there. Anybody that's uh, been a Q Sports Live viewer for, for that long, you'll certainly remember that stream. Streaming out of a liquor room, though. That's interesting. Yeah, Clark, you'd remember that stream. That was uh, that was a stream for the ages, let me tell you. Looking pretty good here. Needs to hold this angle. Or the 13 ball, I would think. I think the 14 is going to be the breakout ball or the break ball. Kind of like to see him take this 13. Yeah, should be good from here. Does have the option to play the combo as well. 
It is a little bit of a back cut, which puts him at the wrong angle. I believe that's the 12 ball. We'll put him a little bit deep on that. Sitting not terrible here. On and through rack number two. Oh, yeah, no doubt. God, I remember that stream. I don't know if Ben was with us at <laughs> yeah, that point. Yeah, I remember Were that you? stream too. Yeah. You remember that one, uh, the wasn't, cookie? I wasn't doing the commentary, I think. I might have been doing the commentary, but I was close by. God, these guys are quick on YouTube. Not as quick as I am, though. Uh -huh. Yeah, so much spam. So much YouTube spam. Right? Like, come on. <laughs> you know what else is quick is John running racks. He's already through two quick through racks two again. In a heartbeat. And he's looking good to run another one. Balls opened up nice here. They opened up real nice. They did. Oh, I guess I can minimize that screen. <laughs> we got lots of screens today. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> screens everywhere. Um, yeah, avoid the jukebox. That's a little tough sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I think the, the music is getting back up there a little bit loud, but that's all right. We've all fought that battle before, mm -hmm. you know. We know all about the music battle. Yeah, he was this fast during the 626 run. Michael, that's actually something he's mentioned about running even over 400 balls. He says he doesn't think it's very possible at a slow pace. Uh, and that's that's just speaking to the stamina that you need. So when you mm -hmm. uh, when you look at a 626, 714 run, I mean, y'all saw Jason's hand when he was done, right? Blisters everywhere. And uh, it's just a testament to how, how physically demanding it is. Mm -hmm. and, and also mentally demanding, you know? So I think the speed of play helps with the, the mental stamina too. Mm -hmm. So he's not thinking too much. I think the glove helps a lot too, of course, right? So with the blisters... So then he's like, he's, he's getting a couple on these fingers, but he's not getting the blisters as much, you know? Yeah. The glove is going to help his hand a little bit, at least, right? I would think it would help the palm of your hands, but, I mean, the, the fingers, fingertips The were, fingers uh, not too much. He's pretty good at tucking one in. Who, John? Yeah, John. He's yeah. kind of always got one finger tucked mm -hmm. in. But, yeah, it's definitely going to help. Like I the, thought you were still talking on Shaw's. I was like, no, his are blistered. Oh, yeah, no. Shaw's were. <laughs> Shaw's hands were a mess. Yeah. Oh, nice little shot there. Uh, the seven might Very be a little nice. high, so maybe the eight ball is the break ball. Yeah, I think the eight, he's been looking at that for a while, and, and I think he developed the other balls real nice. Ten's actually not bad either, but he'll shoot that now, I think. Oh, maybe he likes the ten better. Okay. Shoot the eight. So eight, one, seven, ten. One thing I have noticed from John, and something that I'm definitely going to use in my play, <coughs> is he doesn't really panic about the break ball. Yeah. Where I'm like very particular about the break ball. Yeah. Like no, I need to use this ball. And I often end runs trying to avoid making that. Avoid shooting that ball. Mm -hmm. You know, where like I'll take on some stupid shot. Yeah. That I know I won't work. I don't know work, that right? he necessarily chooses his break ball until kind of the end of the rack. Of, of course he's trying to find it early because then you can work around it. Right? Yeah. The earlier, it's like a game of eight ball. You know, you try to find the pattern early. But then it's not always so easy to hold that pattern. So you have to adapt yeah. good and you have to change gears fast. And I've really learned a lot just from, from watching him play. Obviously, I've watched him play a lot. It's just now I've got to watch it up close. Yeah, in person. <laughs> up close and personal. Yeah, all pro pool players yeah, have my respect you too. You got it, Michael. We were We were seeing that on day one. So day one, if you go back and watch the day one stream, he was playing on the Predator table um, with, uh-oh, uh, 
Oh, he's all right. Hopefully he's not married to the backside of that 11. Came out over the side, he's okay. Um, so day one of his stream, he was playing on the Predator table, and uh, he was just a machine. Mm -hmm. Six hours straight, not mm -hmm. a sip of water, not nothing. Yeah, absolute pool playing machine, and most of these pro players are. Yeah. And it takes a lot. This is not an easy sport to play. Yeah, well, I don't know. I know that, that Jason's run uh, ended at like 5 in the morning or something, so I don't know what time it, it started, but... I mean, God, to play through the entire night like that? It was quick, too. They said he ran the first 20 racks in an hour. Holy. Which makes sense because John has ran 10 racks in half an hour. Yep. Like four times today. So yeah. <laughs> It's crazy. So it's the same kind of pace, right? Yeah. And, and that tells you that in order to run a lot of balls, you need to play at a similar pace, I think. hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure players can can have you know extreme mental stamina and and do it at a slower pace but i just think it's way harder yeah i agree way more mentally draining so he's gonna nudge these balls out look at that little shot where he just draws off crafty he was trying to hold the three over there just so it didn't tie up and i think it's okay i think he can lay up underneath it or he can just nudge it again I'll tell you what, he's getting in a groove here. Yeah, see, he's just going to nudge it again. And that's where you really see him getting in a groove. Is he's yeah. like, I'm just going to move this ball. It's okay. I'm on another ball. And develop it over the side pocket. It's crazy. It's crazy. So now here's... He's all the way up. Yeah, here's the thing that I really notice about John playing this game. Is if something doesn't work out and he nudges a ball into a bad spot or what have you, he is so quick to remap mm -hmm. on how to deal with that. No panic. No, right? he, just, he remaps That's it, and it's almost instant. It's crazy. Yeah, it's very quick. But I, I totally love the no panic, too. Like, yeah. it's just, okay, it's just a different job, you know? But but it's easy. This is pool. This is what he's best at. So yeah. just go to work, right? That's it. Look he's at him. And he's, he's seen down. every possible shot and every possible situation known yeah. to man, right? Yeah. And he's overcame them all, so it's, yeah, yeah, you just do your business, right? But look how quick he's playing oh, there. Oh, it's like, crazy. Oh, and, and I see what they've done now, too, is it, John will call out the break ball to him. So that that's what they've figured out. So, so I think maybe Beamer was even, I know his eyesight isn't the best. Maybe he was having trouble seeing what ball it was, too. I think he was so, just. So he just called out 14 just so that he so Beamer would know it's the 14 ball. I think That's it's the more the, the, just using that more as a mental hack because I'm, I'm sure that Kevin just went off basic instinct. When he walked up to the table, he's just racking balls. That's it. Yeah, right? so the so mental hack when, is like... Yeah, John just mentions 14, 14 ball and he knows, okay, don't touch the 14. Yeah, don't touch that ball. Yeah. <laughs> right? That's, right? That's, yeah. that's great. Yeah, that's good. That's good. And again, shout out to Kevin Beamer Beavis volunteering to rack today he's been doing it for a little over five hours now and it's a thankless job and, he, and he's doing really great at it and john is loving it you know john really appreciates it for sure yeah so watch out play this with lots of top spin and going right through the side of it a real nice shot look at this one ball dresses up S yep and he this was showing me sitting pretty man. Yeah, he was showing me the pattern of that ball, and it does dress up over that corner. And when mm -hmm. when he's got it real dialed in, that one ball's gonna dress up over there a lot. And I don't mean the one ball in general. I just mean a ball. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here's what I find ball. even more impressive. Okay, now according to him, he's not on on a very high run. I'd be ecstatic right now. Of course, but of course. so he's got a crowd of people and, and as you saw him talking kind of towards the camera, he's got a crowd of people around there that have, have gathered mm -hmm. and while he's running this and while he's playing and attempting this, this record, he's also carrying conversations with all the crowd. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and people think like that when he ran that 626, oh, he was just dead focused and he didn't talk to anybody. No, that's not who he is. Mm hmm. Right? Not at all. He probably couldn't run many balls if he just sat there quietly. And, yeah. You know, he needs to let his personality shine too. So, 
somebody did mention earlier, it's going to be tough for him, you know, while he's talking to people on the side. Yeah, no, I it don't won't. Think so. <laughs> no, it won't be yeah, tough at all. That's because his it element. Re- re- well, and it relieves the pressure that you're putting on yourself. 100%. You know what I mean? If you get left alone and you're inside your own head. 100%. And, you know? Sometimes that can that can work against you. It's like how we play team pool together. That's it. Yeah. We're just laughing at each other. We're yeah. cracking jokes. And right. Nobody has time to sit there with their thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> right. You're thinking about like something that happened yesterday or, yeah. you know, in between shots when yeah. you don't need to be thinking. And John will be thinking when he needs to be thinking. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, now, I'll tell you this. So I kind of thought that after he missed on that run that we would see very similar to what we saw the first time he went a little deep Mm -hmm. where he missed right away because he's still thinking about the miss yeah right and i thought we'd see that here but we didn't he just got back and went to work you know what he told me something very profound yesterday Uh it came way short now he's gonna be using the side rail told me something pretty have a look pretty profound yesterday he said he was pretty tired and he wanted to rest up well because he wanted to put on a show today. Yeah. God, yeah, this auto focus on this camera is driving me crazy. It's one thing to be out here trying to beat the record. Okay, of course he wants to beat the record. Yeah. But it's another thing to be out here putting on a show. He knows there's people watching. It's on a stream. He loves what we do. So he's he's helping us too, right? hmm But it's a lot of putting on a show, and, and he takes great pride in that. Oh, I, it, he's in his element mm-hmm. right without a doubt and and so you know he wants it he's not out there trying to dog it when he misses a ball he takes it very personally mm-hmm. right i think he's on five racks now Seven. oh yes yeah, sorry my bad all i fell good. asleep listening all good saw john run 199 on a seven foot diamond in lincoln city and he was talking the whole time <laughs> that sounds like john 199 on a diamond seven foot pretty sporty oh nice shot he hit it thin enough with spin that the cue ball carried through and hit the pack i thought he didn't have the angle to hit the pack wow i thought he was going to be like sending the cue ball into the side rail and back into the pack oh he's steering them in now (laughs) he's steering them (laughs) so if he shoots a two it'll open it up but he might not be ready to open it up And now Raymond's doing deadlift while, he, while John <laughs> runs another 100. <laughs> Shaw saying he is going to break the new record. Yeah, of course. I love that it created that little competition. It's going to fire them both up. And oh, it's going to sure. renew the game, the love of 14-1. and one. Well, listen, I, you know what? I never really gave 14-1 much, much credence or, you know, much of anything mm-hmm. when I first heard. And, you know, I've seen you play... God, every time I walk in the pool Forever, while you're here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I really didn't understand it. I didn't get the draw or the appeal to mm-hmm. it. Um, I certainly understand it now. Yeah, it's, and it's similar. I can't wait to try. And it's similar to other games, you know? And I've always told you, watch Snooker. Mm-hmm. You know? But it's hard, like, until you watch it for a little bit and, like, really learn the rules and give it, like, that extra chance. Yeah. Until then, it's tough to to understand the value of it too right and yeah. there's huge value in straight oh, i so agree massive value in playing this game but you'll love it you'll be on like a run oh, I'm like gonna, you said I'm, I'm dying man you get five racks and you're on 70 and you're gonna be sweating and you could be nervous nobody's in the room <laughs> nobody <laughs> cares I hate life <laughs> except you but you're nervous <laughs> you're shaking but that's what you play pool for yeah 100 percent. Right? and it's hard to recreate but that in practice yeah and that's what i love about how do you get it. that in practice yeah 100 percent. i'm telling you i i think now that i get it now i understand why you say we need to do this in the csl ipl oh it's and i'm yeah. we're gonna find good a way value. we're it's going good to value. find a way let me tell you 100 percent. 100 percent. i think and these guys are helping it they're helping renew everybody's love to play this game too oh wow right? see that inside on that ball yeah you can sure check that up lots even on a slick cloth eh? right could you imagine how much junk he put on that ball yeah load to that correct up. it with yeah. with the slide on this new cloth oh yeah good question four hours and three minutes for the 626 that's pretty quick <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's crazy <laughs> nice little draw there 
Yeah, and Mason, even something I, like, when I started playing straight pool and I started thinking about these high runs, then I would, like, go play nine ball. Like, let's say I'm playing the nine ball ghost. I'm always thinking about a high run. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, how many racks in a row did I run? Mm -hmm. Now it's a high run of yeah, how many uh, racks. Well, and, and so maybe it's like kind of renewed other my... things, too, you know? Renewed my vigor to, to even still play the game mm -hmm. because, honestly, I mean really uh, whoopty you know another run out another ero another mm -hmm. first attempt another this another that been there done that yeah it's all you the know same I mean? stuff yeah. yeah so this gives just gives me something new to attach attach to it well i'll tell you what until john came to town i had the high runs in calgary so you can always shoot for that right mm -hmm. you can my two high runs are 106 and 86 yeah on these tables so you can shoot for those right <laughs> realistic uh is he gonna try to mass eight this ball i don't know what he's planning doesn't to do he just here. shoot the side pocket doesn't he just shoot the side pocket i would think this over kind of go two rails he can take a lot of angle on the on the 15 or not much angle well can you just follow up the four ball put a little bit of left hand spin and come two rails out to get yourself that angle i don't even know if he or has is he gonna that just super draw it again i think he was so straight in how good this. is this Look at shot? this. Gal. Pretty good, that guy. I just threw up in my mouth a little. Yeah, you just, like, God. it's really easy to let that ball fly off the third rail, and right? all of a sudden you end up, like, way down Never mind that. Down up Never here, mind you know? to go three rails like that on slidey cloth and understand how that ball tracks. That was good times. God, come on. <laughs> You're making my brain explode. That's a good question on the Facebook. What happens if the break ball is too close to where the balls get racked and you can't rack the balls? The well, you can rack them by hand. He's got donuts yeah. on them, just like he's showing now. Like he's doing now. Or if it's so close that it doesn't work, then it goes in the rack. And it goes at the top of the rack. And you got to find a shot out of there. And it's call shot, so it's tough. But we did see him pull oh, off the yeah. uh, clip it bank the corner bank gross yeah we did count that rack yeah yeah he's at six okay and if the cue ball ends up in the where the balls would be racked then the, you get ball in hand behind the head string the precision is so surgical and and you know the thing is like i said to understand how that cloth slides like that take all of that into account off three rails i mean come on yeah, it's like, to us on the camera, you don't see how slippery this oh, cloth is. It's impossible it's, to see it, right? Yeah. But it's brand new, and it's real slick, and it's tough to judge some of these positional shots, and he's done so well. Just landed I find on a dime. It just, I just find that insane. Just insane. Yeah, we are. I'm just going to smack this thing in there drag that cue ball around three slippery rails <laughs> and i'll just end up perfect like somebody mentioned there waiting for the balls to be racked like this would drive me crazy and that's part of the reason like uh people were asking why why are they using the triangle with the template because john wants it to be quick yeah so that is part of like putting together high runs it needs to be a little bit quick but because this break ball is so close they want these hand placed in there and john wants to make sure they're tight he's on a good run here run of 84. yeah he does have a lot of experience he on does this cloth, and yeah. he does prefer the slippery cloth mm -hmm. yeah it helps the ball slide in the pocket so i see why he likes it yeah well, this is a little tricky he might have to snag the 14 and Try to go into that pack again. Yeah, does he like, does he maybe shoot the nine first and try to get closer? I don't know. Oh, he just called the six. What? Yeah, he found a wired ball. This is good. This is what you want to do in straight pool sometimes. Wow. You want to look for a dead ball? That'll help you just open everything, but he's good at finding it, right? <laughs> God. One thing it'll help you learn too in straight pool is like exactly that when balls are frozen and how to manipulate throwing them certain ways like there's going to be times when you just have no shot right <laughs> so you're going to have to like 
play some weird combo where it throws and then it banks. Yeah. And, and it's like, but you have to figure it out, right? Oh, look where he nudged the 11. What a shot. What a shot that is. He nudges the 11 to a perfect spot. Uh, yes, Blake, mm -hmm. you are correct. Yeah, what pool players refer to as slippery is when the cloth is real new and the balls kind of slide rather than grab. So when you put lots of spin coming off a rail, it doesn't really grab on the rail as much as slide off of it. And the same with the bed of the cloth. Looking good here. Yeah, this should be Oatsville for sure. I would think, yeah, he's going to shoot the 9 to clear the hole. Does need to, need to clear a lane for the 10 ball, but he also wants to get the 14 off that other side rail, so he's going on to that right now. Good pattern here. He's got a couple of break ball options, actually. He, he could, does. He yeah, could he use the 12 use the one. or the 1, yeah. I think the 12 is a touch far, but... Yeah, just a little far away, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't like it that far away either. So I think the 11 is good. It's close to the... Close to where the balls will be racked. Surely, straight pool, we can explain. Absolutely, you can shoot any ball at any time. Good question why it's called 14 and 1 too. So straight pool is sometimes referred to as 14 and 1. You can shoot any ball at any time. Each ball is worth one point or one ball as we refer to it. And once you've potted 14 balls, as you'll see John here, he's going to leave one ball left on the table and try to shape the cue ball in a way where when he re-racks the other 14 balls... He'll pot the one remaining ball and send the cue ball into the other 14, break them out, and continue shooting. That's where you get the 14-1. 14 made, one left on the table. Yeah, and sometimes called 14-1 continuous. Yeah. And I, and I think 14-1 continuous is a good way to explain it because it makes sense where it's a continuous game. Technically, you could shoot forever. You could. <laughs> if you never missed, if you were an absolute right? dead nut robot. Like, if he just never missed, we could be here until the end of our lives. Right? <laughs> could you imagine the stream value on that? God, I'd go from well, we'd, almost 50 to never leaving the stream. Yeah, we'd never Vini, get to. probably not, wouldn't like that. <laughs> we'd never get to do anything else. Right? But. Canada <laughs> Open's now done. Like, mm -hmm. we'd just be sitting here filming John on straight pool. <laughs> I will be right back. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Blake wants to know, is there any difference between Tournament 860 and New Predator Cloth? I do really like the reaction of shape on Dan's table. Um... Sorry, guys. Just uh, getting a refill on the drink. So... Blake, yeah, I'm a huge fan of this Predator cloth. I really, really like it. And so one of the things I've been told about it also from a, a room owner is that it wears very slow. So it'll hold this slide for quite a while and it'll wear quite slow, which is exactly what you want to see in pool cloth, slow wearing. So John on another smooth hunter ball run here. Looking good. Putting the balls in the heart of the pocket. Uh, Raymond says he set a new nine ball break and high run against the Ghost last year before the open of 15 racks and then some little kid sharked him <laughs> in the arcade room. 15 is super strong, pal. Uh, yeah, no, Matthew, that's funny that you heard Jason has a video with a thousand wing for John when 714 gets beat. That was a joke, sir. Jason, he's all about the jokes, man. He's all about the jokes. And your nine ball high run, 135, yeah, that's correct, sir. <laughs> a 
Yeah, as soon as we said 14-1, it makes a little more sense, right? I think that's that's a, almost a better way to put it. it. It is pretty well known as straight pool, but, but I do think 14-1 is a better name. It describes the game better. Kind of like 8-ball, 9-ball, 10-ball, you know? Pretty self-explanatory, those games. <laughs> So he's going to shoot this a little lefty. Stop shot this 10 ball because he wants a little angle on this 5 so he can slide across for the 13. Next is key ball. Didn't like that. Didn't like that. I'm not sure why. He wanted more angle or less angle. Well, he felt like he was going to be reaching more, but I think this is okay. Spin it off two rails. Out to middle table, Ooh, a little short. Maybe that's why he wasn't happy. Still pretty smooth, 112 ball run. And this is his fifth time today running over 100. Let's see if he's got a 200 in him. I know he wants it. I know he really wants it. And he knows the table will give it up. He knows this table is going to give up some 200 ball runs, maybe some 300 ball runs. Maybe, just maybe, if he strings them together without the something funny happening in the middle, we might just see him break the record. I really would love to see him do it. It would be so cool for him to do it here at Leather Pocket. If you guys are in the area, definitely come check it out. Lots of places for everybody to sit around the table if you want to watch it live. Smooths in the break ball, and he's got, looks like a pretty good layout here. Not totally ideal, but he'll pick these apart. Uh, yeah, the Predator seems way more slippery, according to Brian. Yeah, it it is slick. It's real slick. I like that. I like that. That way it'll hold its shape longer and, and stay cleaner longer is a big thing too with slippery cloth. It stays clean long. Look at the shot he played there. Just chipped them all out perfectly. Looks like a three might be his break ball. That's in a real good spot. He'll be eyeing that up. It comes out to a bit of a funny spot here. What does he have? Oh, he's, he's got the 15. He's straight in on it. Little stop shot, no problem. Splits the uprights of the pocket. Yeah, you could see how he just, after the break shot, he didn't have a super open table but he did have a nice opening shot with position on another ball and he went into the stack and he opened them all up in one nice shot. So now he's got a real good look at putting the ninth rack in a row on the board. I think his end game would probably involve the five ball I think he'll work to the seven on the other side rail and then maybe go up table to the 14. Or he likes the seven to the five as his end game. Well, he needs this to slow down a bit. He wanted a little angle on the 14, so he's okay. Grant's back. I am indeed. Yeah, and you make a great point there on the YouTube shortstop on pool says with this many runs over 100 in the first day, the math suggests a run over 500 is likely within the first week. I think he's got definitely some huge numbers coming up in these oh, next I would agree. three days. This is only day one of four on the gold crown. Oh yeah, straight, straight pool, surely thought. Straight eight, parties. straight eight rules they were called. That was no fun. Nobody liked that. Well, again, it's going back to the uh, to the uh, old adage of you don't know what you don't know. That's right. 
That's right. Because I didn't know any better back in those days. And yeah. uh, when I was playing bar rule pool, as it's also known. This is the only good uh, thing. Yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. This is the only way to it play was, pool, uh, right? That was the way to play back in those days. Yeah. I remember playing a few tournaments, and it was never enjoyable. <laughs> They were always getting mad at me for making their balls. I'm like, well, course, you guys so. wanted to play these rules, right? so I'm going to take that's advantage. It. No, that's dirty pool. No, dirty I, I have better rules that don't involve you being allowed to do this. Right. right? <laughs> but straight eight rules, if anybody's oh. curious, you can Oops, just shoot their ball me. in and they don't get ball in hand. <laughs> it's so true. The cue, the cue ball is never picked up unless sewered, right? That's it. So, yeah, I could just shoot their balls uh, in. You don't need to connect <laughs> with the rail after. There's all kinds yeah, of things yeah. that you can do in that case. Goofy rules, real goofy. John with another nice break shot opens up the balls beautifully. Well, and I'm a, I'm a fan of trivia. <clears throat> and so I've asked this, or I've kind of put this out on, on Q Sports Live before, where um, the billiards industry um, was the influencer that created the plastics industry, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. And that all came from turning tusks. And that has a very limited uh, market on turning tusks. There's only so many of those available. So I can't remember the guy's name, but it was at the turn of the century. And uh, he put a challenge out, offered up $10,000 at that point. A lot of time. money. That's huge money back in those days. A million bucks. For somebody to come up with an alternative for a billiard ball. Mm -hmm. And that was the birthplace of the plastics industry. Mm -hmm. Full credit given to the billiards industry for that. So now my question is, because I don't know the answer to this, is who was the creator of straight pool? We could Google it, but somebody we else could. is going to quick. We could <laughs> Google it, but I'm not sure. Is Google accurate? Is it correct? We'll have to ask John. I well, I'm going to, uh, I want to find out the answer. Uh, Adam, good question wants to know how this the first break shot of this challenge starts does he just smash a full rack or does he take one object ball into the rack like after he's done a rack so yeah the the latter part of that he gets ball in hand on the cue ball and the object ball yep and then he pots that ball and runs into the other 14 balls that are racked and that's how it starts correct would this run be more difficult or easier on a bar size table Probably easier, I would think. Yeah, and I was curious to ask John too because I've heard this before. I've heard this question. Mm -hmm. And it has been posed before and a little bit controversial. And John just shook his head at me. He was like, it's not even close to comparable. <laughs> <laughs> and and he said right away, he's like, what's your high run on the nine foot? What's your high run on the seven? And I was like, yeah, it's higher on the seven foot. He's like, there you go. There you go. That <laughs> and answers I've, that. And I've played way more on the nine foot. Yeah. Way, way more. Yeah. You know, it's funny. When I got up this morning, I was near bed. Mm -hmm. I've been in more pain. I mean, really. With that Berg, mitochondria, whatever, yeah, whatever, yeah. I feel different than the last five days. I'm jacked with energy. I feel like I can play. I'm not gonna. But I feel like I can play till midnight if somebody made me. Well, just, just run keep like running eight, racks. Just run 800 I've, balls. I've stolen one here. This is... This <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's a good <laughs> sign, though, too. Oh, it's huge. You got through those first two that's racks, it. right? So now he's through them. And let's see an 800 ball run here. How cr how crazy would that be? He's got four days here. Yeah. Breaks a record on the first day. Right? <laughs> that would be nuts. So they ask John, what are you going to do for the next three days? He <laughs> says, sit in a hot tub. Right? <laughs> we'd, we'd have to beg him to play after that you know <laughs> well i can tell you he's a he's a very big fan of the uh of the vitamins that i have at the house mm -hmm. cliff thorburn back in the day yeah that's a real treat he was here recently as well Yeah, his rhythm's great right now. Oh, yeah. This is going to be a good one. I think somebody guessed a number, too. It was like 3-2-3 three, three or something like that. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Kim Kennedy says 3-2-3 three, three on this one. <laughs> nice. I'm calling 8-2-3. Let's go. 
forget about that three two three. Let's triple that up. Gotta get by that. He's okay here, I think. He's got. Oh my. Oh. Uh, that four is steep. He's got the eight. He just doesn't like shooting it right now, you know? No, he doesn't like shooting it. It's a much easier shot when you're on the first rack than yeah. when you're on the 11th rack. But yeah. But you know what? He's been hitting good. Mm -hmm. I suspect that's going into the heart. Oh, yeah. He smoothed it in. I don't even think it touched the side rail. Real nice. James thinks 410. <laughs> I like it. Google says Jerome Keogh invented straight pool. There you go, Grant. Awesome. Also known as 14 and 1 continuous. In 19 and 10. 1910, and then it became the official tournament game of pool in 1912. Very nice. Thank you. Good. Good knowledge. I like it. I like those trivia questions. <laughs> Regarding ball creation, somebody else Googled. He, he never just, he can't trust Google. <laughs> A Jewish chemist created the Decorat ball. Who really knows? But they seem pretty adamant that Jerome Keel came up with straight pool. That's I'll, I'll thing. find the, uh, the video clip that explains that whole thing. With the plastics, thing, yeah. The whole plastics mm -hmm. industry. But it was uh, it was birthed by uh, by billiards. Oh, look at that! Raymond says if you're a good rotation player and you spend an afternoon with John coaching your shot selection, you'll run a hundred that day. I 100% believe that too. Yep. Because I spent like an hour playing one pocket with him, and I'm sure my one pocket went up quite a bit. Oh, look at this! Got to go bounce, a little bit. Big bounce. Yeah, he's there. He's there. 11 racks, 154. See, I counted it right this time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think players can feel when a big run's coming. Shaw oh, was done. This, They'll then. decide to go back that evening. Look at this steepness on this shot. Oh, he's okay. He's Oof. okay. Big pocket, right? Yeah, I just say it because I... Uh, these are these are the worst shots. You're going to get better at them, too, for sure, these blind shots. But, yeah, like Glenn is saying, the players can feel when a big run is coming, you know? So, like, Shaw flew back. Right? Yeah, he he was done, and he yeah. came back so he could feel it, right? And John can feel it right now, I think. He, he mentioned in this table he is playing better than the one he ran 6-2-6 six, six on. And you can see it. Balls are opening up nice. He's getting good break shots. Got really good control of the cue ball. Yeah, I think he's got it. <laughs> Brian says good mathing. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we do know of Skittle Pool too. Yeah, there's another interesting variation of the game. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So what's he got here for I break think ball? He's gonna he's sit in and take that four eight. He's gotta move some stuff. I think that, yeah, I think the two eight isn't too bad. Yeah, the combo pretty mm -hmm. easy. Just to get it done and out of the way. And I'm curious to see what he'll use to break the stack. If it's maybe the six, the solid that's on the bottom, the green one. I would think so. I think that's where he's looking at now. Yeah, that's exactly where he just looked. I'll tell you what. I yeah. gotta scratch my eyes a bit to get. And he nudged the two to a beautiful spot here where when he does play the breakout, he's kind of guaranteed to be on the two. So when he played that combo, he got the two out kind of closer to the hole, and it's really going to help him later, I believe. Oh, and he hit this ball perfect. Just landed absolutely perfect on the six. And you'll see now he's like, he played it because he was sure he was on the two, and I don't uh -oh. know if he is. Did he get hampered by that 15 ball? Yeah, I don't know if he's on the two. Yeah, you can tell by his body language. But the 11 1 thrilled. combo to the side pocket looks like it's on. Too tight. Yeah. I think he's still got this. He's just not thrilled about shooting over a ball. Oh, he was he was okay. Oh, and Ooh. that slowed down just in time, too, where I think yeah. he's got this ball on the side not too bad, and he can develop the 11 1 a little bit. He's got a nice break ball, this stripe. 
you know, on the top of our screen, in the middle of those four balls, that's a perfect break ball, so he definitely doesn't want to move that. But like I said before, he doesn't seem to panic about the break ball. No. It's kind of like... I think he's going to use the four ball. Yeah, he's going to move the five, and I think that's the 13. That's maybe next to it, or the 15, that other stripe. He's got to move those. Yeah. Because I don't think the five goes without moving them. I think he's got to maybe take this 11 and draw to get angle on the... Oh. 10 ball to you see move. what he's looking here this is go I, underneath i love that he looked at that because that was right as i thought about that it was almost identical timing i was just thinking i was just going to say what if he goes underneath and shoots it up table spend a week with john and you think like john <laughs> this is great that's perfect i'm going to be a way better pool player because of john being here for three weeks guarantee so true that's why i said i'm picking a Calgary player to win that Edmonton tournament this weekend. Somebody Which, somebody else can have the whole field, and I don't care that Brady Golan's there, and there's somebody from Quebec, and <laughs> the Alberta Open, right? Yeah. I, I don't care. I'm taking a Calgary player. They can have Which the Calgary rest of the field. Are you picking? I just get any Calgary player. Any one of them? Yeah. I like it. And they get the rest of the field. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's pretty big. That's a big that's spot, a bold, right? That's I'm a giving up a big spot. Statement right there. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, with guys like Brady Golan and Martin Tagle in there, you know? Yeah, that was a nice but, uh, little draw shot right there. But I am not going to be shocked at all if Joe Spence wins that tournament. Oh, well, he was kind of in my the forefront of uh, my cerebellum. Yeah, and, and part of it, I think, is due to spending some time with John as well. Mm-hmm. Because Joe was like a dead punch before, oh my gosh, and yeah. now you add in a little like help from a mm -hmm. really top guy, and man, I'm really interested to see what he can do this weekend. Oh, me too. But he's well, also got Vienier. Especially with the uh, with the fact that Joe just was out on the road and mm -hmm. into that pro tournament, so I mean he's uh, he's got some experience under his belt. Yeah, some really good experience. Yeah. And now he's got a little more experience playing with John. It's like, I wish oh I didn't draw him my. in my quarter of the bracket. Yeah. In VNEA, in both tournaments. Well, I guess that's not terrible. <laughs> but, and also, John thankfully, I'm playing like on a team with him. <laughs> John doesn't like that at all. Uh, so we're on 12 racks. This is funny. Even Russ Zorn, he's thinking what we're all thinking. Sheesh, doesn't John ever have to pee? Right? <laughs> And so uh, I don't know if that is still posted there on the bottom of the comments where we've put up a GoFundMe page for John. Yeah, it's still posted. Um, if you guys appreciate what it is he's attempting to do and the fact that, you know, he's he's playing on this stream, putting in some good efforts, make sure you give that uh, GoFundMe page a little love. Real good shot there. How can yeah. I not show some love for that shot? Right. John's incredible, but can he play bumper pool? <laughs> and Ozzy said, did someone mention a Skittle game? <laughs> Too funny. Oh, yeah, Thomas, there's been uh, quite a few suggestions for exactly that to happen. So, Thomas on, uh, on YouTube saying uh, i have trouble finding someone who plays 14-1 never mind someone who even knows the game it's refreshing to see an exhibition like this maybe have a john v jason match say to a thousand just an idea but certainly uh been lots of those suggestions uh yeah love it the course of the last couple of days love it russ says he's gonna call him the camel <laughs> right John the Camel Schmidt. This guy can hold a lot of water. <laughs> Guy's amazing. Yeah, his his pool stamina is like through a, the roof. Like a nine hundred Fargo. Right? <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you, this guy should be playing like maybe these races to 120 or play a race of two hundred games nine ball. He might like just mop the floor with these young kids because his stamina is crazy. God, does he ever twist that ball so well? 
Just play Watch it. Watch this shot to twist underneath here. Yeah, he got under there real nice. Just to miss the five, you know, yeah. like that. Because if he clips the five, he's dead oh meat. Oh, my gosh. So he's got the 11 as a nice break ball. I don't think he needs to move anything here. He's probably going to try to run these without moving anything. Or he moves everything. The six fives wired up, so... Well, and he also just developed another break ball. So yeah. Maybe he just wanted a I think secondary he's, uh, option. Two, one, five, six, six, twelve. Use the eleven. Mm. Yeah, yeah, the six-five combo. I do like that because I think it holds a six right there. You know, he doesn't like it. He nope. hates moving balls that much that he's like, oh, wow. I'll just play I'll just, short side. I'll just play perfect shape to uh, take window. care of that six right now, right? <laughs> Just come across, hit Unreal. the perfect window. Just another day at the office. Adam says he must have been a trucker in a past life. <laughs> <laughs> go that long without using the washroom, right? I find it just amazing. And the fact, like, he doesn't eat nothing. I have not walked around the table for a million miles today, and I'm hungry. Yeah, me I too. Me too. Me too. We're just sitting here talking. Right. And I'm burning energy. Right. And I'm getting I hungry. How, I don't know how he's doing <laughs> it. I uh, like this. Glenn says 14 ones gaining a lot of momentum, probably because of these high run streams. Yep. He said he was in a pool hall recently where a couple guys are trying to play it and neither could run three balls. <laughs> he said when the kids start playing, it's a good sign. Yep. I love that. Very well said. And we've touched on it a few times. I think these guys are really helping to revive the game, you know? Well, and so so is it just simply the difference as far as stamina goes is that just the difference between I'll, I'll say regular players and pro players and what they've acclimated themselves to because I'm sure like Jason does this Fetter does this Filler does this mm. all of those guys are capable of doing these long runs uh, maybe not so are. much Maybe not, not so much in straight pool, but yeah. I'm talking stamina overall. So one thing John did mention, I should touch on this too, is as much as he practices, he did say that a lot of times his sessions are nothing like this, not even close. He says he'll practice like at home for mm -hmm. like 15 minutes. Take a little break, practice for another 15 minutes. Another little break, 15 minutes, and he'll do it about five or six times throughout the day. And that's about it. So he only goes ballistic like this for these crazy high run attempts. I, d I just find so it amazing. So I don't know if he, if he would have this kind of drive during like, you know, an average event or something, right? Yeah. He might be wanting to take a break and, you know, sure, not practice this much, but he's showing us that he can if he wants to. He's got stamina for days. Yeah, it, it's 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 crazy. But do all of those guys have it? This is this is my question. Is if you take any of those guys, and we all know Shaw can, right? To stay focused for as long as what he had to in order to uh, to pull off a seven seven one four. I'm sure Shane's got that same. Oh yeah. Stamina ability. Shane is one of Orcolo and and Orcolo is another one. Right? Yeah, you named a couple of and, the guys that are practice Gomez, freaks too. Right? Gomez like, is a entertainer more. He is. But can he keep this pace up for as long as Dennis what this will is? sit in the corner and not talk to anyone and hit balls more yep. than you've ever seen in your life. Yeah. Dennis is one of those like and Shane is like that too. I saw him practice his break for like six hours straight yeah never hit a ball yep. and only broke oh my god my back would like break what the heck is that pieces. you know he didn't yeah. even go anywhere all yep. he did was hit the break and i was blown away i'm like is this what it takes to be a pro i don't know right. if i want to do this <laughs> so but it and john's admitted too it's not all about that it's sometimes it's just about very focused with the time that you do have right Blake says, uh, Filler does 200 warm-up, 14-1 every day. Eminem, yeah, Josh. Josh practices a lot. <laughs> yeah, just going through the motions is big, too. I like that. It's a good way to put it. But a lot, and I, I like that you touched on that. A lot of these guys that are, like, at 
not the top level, the elite level. Yeah. They are like honestly I'm, I'm you telling got, freaks of nature, man. They're yeah. And elite. it's the same as, as as the way I look at it in the industry, right? You got great players and you got iconic players. That's right. That's exactly right. And and we're watching one of the icons for sure. This guy is gonna go down as one of the greatest players we've ever seen. And not just play this game. Yeah. He plays people, them all. Yeah, and people make the mistake of thinking that John isn't a good rotation player. Well, like he says, pack a lunch. Right. Because <laughs> he's, I mean, he's a U.S. The, Open 9-ball champion. So, and the problem is, is I'm, and I'm sure, I'm sure Shaw did the same, where they just make it look so mm -hmm. easy. Right? Oh. Like, I feel like I could get up and run yeah. 100, no problem. Yeah. Well, right? and somebody talked about that the other day. You can get in stroke by watching these guys. Yeah. Right? It's crazy. You watch them and then you go pick up a cue and mm -hmm. you do play better. You do because you're seeing the table a different way. You're seeing the shots a different way. Yep. And you're feeling confident because he showed you to feel confident. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's funny how you get in stroke by. You get in stroke by watching okay someone. Here. He just really wanted to have the end game be the 15. I still think he could. He, I think he can pinch the six, maintain that angle. Yeah, and that's what he's going to do. He just didn't want to have to, right? Yeah. He but showed, it tells you, he showed it tells us a you little right bit there how much he wants it. Not only how oh, much okay. he wants it, but how even at this time, we're, we're almost six hours in, and... He still cares that much to be that precise. I love it. He really wants right? the it's, 200, oh, and I crazy. think he's got it. Because he's perfect on the break shot. Perfect. It's a real good break shot. <laughs> yeah, it's so easy to miss the pot after you do that. Right? You know? Holy cow. Oh, I'm totally pumped to try too, Blake. Let me tell you. I've got I've got the pool itch right now, mm -hmm. like I haven't had in a long time. Yeah, me too. I think I'm gonna go play after for a little bit. I have to, but I'm pretty hungry too. So look that, at how that's quick I am on these guys. Get them, hide them, report them. <laughs> Done. Gone. See you later right yeah he wants 200 plus yeah that's what's driving him for sure i could tell you could tell he's like he really wanted it and let's see how much he's got in him yes good break oh, yeah. shot he's, he's got he's it. in he's got it he's got it three sure. more three more balls for the 200 plus that six i think goes through the window through the 15 through the 13. If he wants to yeah, take it, he could take the duck five. Yeah, and it wasn't quite a scratch break shot. He had plenty of room. <laughs> he stunned followed that one real far. Now he's got to shoot the three first, I think. He can't really risk shooting another ball it's too far away. Mm -hmm. The two ball goes to a half a pocket, but it's just too far away. As he gets closer to it, he can shoot that ball, though. What's he got here? Yeah, see, now he's got the two. No problem to a half a pocket here. Slide it in off the side rail, and that's the 200 plus. Yep. So let's give a little post and we'll give a little boost here. Let everybody know. We did say we'd let everybody know. When he got 200 plus. Well, I think if he gets through this rack. We will see a pretty decent run. He's over the 200 mark. If he can get through this rack, I think we're going to see a big number. He, yeah, he's, he's getting through it. He's getting through it. Look at this. He's shooting the eyes off the balls, man. He's in dead punch. He's in dead punch, this boy. I think he's coming out for the six ball, maybe. 
I think, yeah, the 10 is okay right now. I think that clears more lanes, right? He likes to talk yeah. about clearing lanes. Yeah, draw it into the 1. I think this the is six. a big ball to clear lanes. Look at that shot develops the 1. Secondary break ball if he needs it. Oh, I right? don't, Option. I'm not in love with the 12. I kind of like the 6 ball better. Yeah, let's see what he chooses here. Big, big choices now. Everything's got to be very if, calculated. If he's got to get down that close to look at that 12 ball, man. That's got to be tight. But of course, just another day at the office. No problem, he says. No problem. He must have that 7 ball. Nope. Got to go up on top for the 15. Now, do you use the eight or the one ball? I like the one as the break ball. Yeah, I think I think the eight's a little yeah. far away. He's kind of shown that he likes the ball that's a little higher up. So yeah, I think he's gonna use the one. It's just a touch higher up. This is where I really learned too, you know, like I have tended to like the ball that's a little lower down, but I kind of like to blast it. Like with draw and stuff, you know? So he's showing me that that's, you know, not always the best way. He is going to use the eight. Yeah, in his previous attempts, he rained two hundreds. Yeah, I think he's got, uh, got a big one going here because he got pretty perfect on this ball. out there real nice really well done. that could have went wrong a few different ways 210 210 beautiful run he's got going here make sure you guys share that stream lots for us oh no doubt let's go let everybody know john's up over 200 right now between youtube and facebook we're sitting with uh 455 on the stream right now. Put that there so you can see the comments there a little easier too. Uh, while, I, while he's doing that, guys, once again, viewer advantage sweepstakes now available. It is for a Mr. 626Q. Those are $20 per ticket, gets you in it to win it. Go on to CSLIPL.com, click on shop. It'll be the first thing that you see there. That, of course, is for the Rapless 626Q with the Revo 12.8 shaft. Comes with the extension. It will be a very highly sought-after Q. There are only 300 made. If you do reside in Canada, of course, you can always e-transfer that in. QSportsLive at gmail.com. Just keep in mind it is in USD, so about 26 Canadian dollars. That draw will be done at conclusion of the event on Saturday and of course we'll have Mr. Schmidt himself pull the winning ticket <laughs> Justin asks what is this and Glenn says it's a dart game <laughs> <laughs> it's a 14 and 1 world record attempt it that is. John Schmidt is making right now if you guys are just tuning in he came to the high side though he came to the high side of that four wanted to bump the bottom of that and push it up yeah, I can see. but he came on the wrong side yeah, he's like got to. He's going over there, wipe down the cue a bit, gather himself. You think he shoots fourteen inside? You? Nope. I think he just takes the duck nine because mm. the four leads him right back to the to the oh, fourteen yeah, okay. anyway. The nine isn't too bad. I actually thought it was a little more off ankle and made it tricky. I think it's not too bad here. Oh. And spears drills it. it. Spears it. It's funny how those shots can be easier when you hit them break speed, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. Try to match Eddie Taylor's 37 straight banks. That's something that might never happen. <laughs> right? 37 straight banks. Come on. <laughs> Curtis Shaw, what's the record? It is 714. 
Great. Called by uh, the one and only Mr. Jason Shaw. Great question, Curtis, and great last name for that question. Right. Very great. <laughs> great all around. Maybe a relative of yours. It very well could be. <laughs> He's in a little trouble here. Ten doesn't go. It's hooked on whatever ball that is. The 11, I think. I think he's oh, no, got the 14. 15. I think he's got the 14. Just Does he really? the 14. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, and he was just double-checking, like, his angle on the one to develop these little cluster here. How do you buy tickets for the queue? Um, you can go a couple of different ways. You can go on, uh, on our website, www.cslipl.com. When you get onto the website, just on the header, you'll see the shop tab. Click on shop and it'll be the first option there. There's no limit on the number of tickets that you can purchase for yourself. I'm really surprised he played the draw shot to go into those balls. I'm not sure why he did that. Left-handed too. Um, that's one way. If you're in Canada, you can also e-transfer. That's QSportsLive at gmail.com. Just keep in mind it is US dollars. Hmm. So a forces break ball. I guess it's not too low. Very workable. And a couple of balls down there near it. Or possibly the, this six ball over the side will be his key ball. It might be the four ball here. Or yeah, it could so be the, the six too. Well, the six will be the key ball. They like to call the key ball the ball before the break ball. Yeah. Did you catch that? No, because I saw that oh, somebody is phoning uh, Yeah, yeah. I didn't uh, see. And that. it's an important call. Mm -hmm. You can step away. Uh, Justin's never heard of this, so he says, if he misses a shot, then what? Docked points, forfeit rack, object is to pot as many balls without missing within how many racks? So 14 and 1 continuous, and for anybody else just tuning in, is a game where each ball has a value of one. And so the object is to leave one ball up on the table like he's done here and place shape on it in a way where when you pot that ball, after you rack the other 14, you pot that ball and send the cue ball into the other 14, breaking them out and continuing the run. Beautiful game. This game is super old. Uh, we actually just did a little trivia on it. I think they said 1908 or 1910 rather, and then uh, made officially the game of pool and billiards for 1912. There's uh, some movies about it. It's like Super famous game. Real famous pool game. Oh, no. Oh, you missed the break shot. You just don't expect to see that happen. You kind of expect him to miss maybe a, a real long shot or something. But it was pretty thin. Yeah. Well, very good run today. Very, very fantastic run. Plenty of high, high scoring games of straight pool for anybody who knows how tough this game is for him to put up the numbers he did today. Absolutely fantastic stuff. So his first big run of the day was 170, followed by the second big run at 199 before he kind of got jammed in between some balls. If you guys were watching, he got super unlucky. Uh, then he had a run of 154, followed by a run of 186, and finished it off with this run of 224. What a treat. I know he's not happy right now, but I'm super happy. This was a fantastic day. What a great day of straight pool couple of photos for the fans <laughs> beamer in there with the with the rack 
big shout out to Kevin Beamer Beavis for for racking for John all day. Real awesome. He did a fantastic job. Six hours straight of racking, not easy to do. And, and he was a trooper all day. Fantastic shooting from John. Thanks everybody for tuning in today. Uh, we'll be back again tomorrow at noon mountain time. That's 12 o'clock mountain standard time. So make sure you guys tune in tomorrow as well as Friday and Saturday. John will be making these world record attempts. If you haven't already, make sure you like and follow our Facebook page. Subscribe on our YouTube channel, Q Sports Live. There will be an interview tonight as well. Make sure you guys tune into Doggin' It on Facebook. Windows Open, Stephanie tells me it'll be on Windows Open with Molina Mike, Joey Ryan. They're going to have John Schmidt on with Grant and Semp. Chatting it up, dogging it up. Make sure you guys tune into that as well. And you'll see there's a link down at the bottom there. There's a GoFundMe that we've created for John just to help him with some of his expenses and stuff. If you guys appreciate everything that he's doing, entertaining us, giving us these high runs, and helping to revive the game of straight pool, then definitely go there. Donate whatever you can. Every little bit counts. Don't feel obligated. All our streams are always free. We'll be back again. First thing tomorrow at noon. We should be starting exactly at noon. So make sure you guys tune in. Set an alarm. You don't want to miss it tomorrow. I think he's going to run at least 400 balls. And we're going to get to watch it for free. Make sure you guys tune in. Thanks again, everyone, for tuning in all day today. We'll see you all tomorrow. Have a good night, everyone.